A man raised his four sisters by scavenging garbage. But after the sisters became billionaires, they personally had him thrown into jail. Yet he was not the least bit unhappy, because he felt there was no use in having high prestige after death. As long as his sisters could live happily, that was enough. Everyone thought he deserved to die. But what everyone did not know was that the reason the man ended up in such dire straits was all in order to raise his sisters. Yet in his sister's eyes, he was simply a despicable, shameless scumbag. A loser trying to seize his parents' inheritance. To expose his crimes to the public, they decided to use state-of-the-art technology to extract and globally broadcast his memories. However, in the process of viewing his memories, Yi Ju was shocked to discover that every time she had encountered danger, it was her brother Yi Chen who had helped her behind the scenes. Even so, she still did not believe the facts before her eyes, insisting that Yi Chen only did those things for himself. He was a loser and could not possibly have helped her. The picture clearly shows that after Yi Chen handed the keys to a man, the man drove away directly. Then Yi Chen turned around and bought a bicycle and rode away. Originally, there were quite a few people who were jealous of Yi Chen, but because of the previous post about Yi Chen being a rich young master, they had restrained themselves. Now, seeing this post, they immediately started various kinds of sarcasm and ridicule. I told you, how could Yi Chen be a wealthy person? Sure enough, just a car washer for others. The reason he was able to drive such a luxury car before was probably because he was washing the car for a real wealthy young master. There are really so many twists in this matter. After several twists and turns, according to common logic, no one would easily believe any party. However, too many people subconsciously thought that Yi Chen, who only wore street stall goods, must be a big pauper. So they easily leaned towards the truth they subconsciously believed. The most obvious manifestation was the disdain in their eyes when they saw Yi Chen. It was as if they were looking at garbage, like trash. However, once they left the school gate, their eyes instantly changed. Or rather, their attention was no longer on Yi Chen. They all seemed to be stunned, looking at a girl standing at the school gate. Yi Chen could still hear their whispers. Wow. Where did this little schoolgirl come from? She's so cute. Wow. And her figure is so sexy too. So hot. Listening to the chaotic and disorderly comments, in fact, when they saw the person in front of them, Yi Chen instantly understood the meaning behind their words. Standing at the gate was a girl in a JK uniform. With a tender face that seemed like it could produce water with a pinch, she seemed custom made for innocence and cuteness. And beneath her beautiful and tender face, her figure was top notch, well endowed and curvaceous, with a slender waist. Under her short skirt were a pair of straight and fair long legs. She was simply the gospel of all leg enthusiasts. Yi Mei could already be considered a top beauty, but the girl in front of her could easily match her. Yi Chen suddenly understood why the men's gazes were so fixed. This girl indeed had the ability to drive countless men crazy for her. However, Yi Chen looked at her several times and always felt a faint sense of familiarity in her appearance, but couldn't recall it. The person standing at the gate was none other than Yi Lan. After taking a leave of absence, she hurried here. However, halfway there, she suddenly realized something even more important. This would be her first time seeing Yi Chen. She couldn't just casually go over. She wanted to leave a good first impression on Yi Chen. She wanted Yi Chen to remember her deeply. That's why Yi Lan quickly went to change her clothes. After much deliberation, she couldn't remember who said it, but a phrase came to mind, men are uniform enthusiasts. So, she chose this JK uniform. After carefully dressing up, she nervously arrived at the school gate, waiting for Yi Chen. Yi Lan's appearance was too obvious, so those who saw her quickly realized that she was waiting for someone. Some bold ones even stepped forward to strike up a conversation. Schoolgirl, are you here to find someone? Do you need me to show you the way? Schoolgirl. If you're looking for someone, just tell me. I'm a jack of all trades. This wasn't the first time Yilan had been approached. So she handled it very skillfully. No need, I can wait for him to come out by myself, thank you. The boy who was rejected felt resentful. Who was this cute and pretty schoolgirl waiting for? Who was lucky enough to make her wait? They felt jealous of the person Yilan was waiting for. Just then, they suddenly saw Yilan's eyes light up. The face that had no expression before now showed an extremely radiant smile. Yi Lan had already seen Yi Chen. The moment she saw Yi Chen, she couldn't help but want to rush up to him. But in the instant she took a step, she quickly stopped herself. She had been thinking about seeing Yi Chen as soon as possible, but she had actually forgotten what to do after seeing him. She didn't know Yi Chen at the moment. She couldn't just rush up and call his name as if they were familiar, could she? As Yi Lan hesitated, Yi Chen was already about to walk away. This wouldn't do. Her purpose in coming here was to see him and get close to him. Without further thought, Yilan rushed straight over. Wait. 
Yi Chen. Ye Chen heard someone calling his name, stopped, and turned to look at her. Did this little beauty know him? Yelan had already run up to him. Because of the intense exercise, her face was flushed. Yelan had a very boyish personality and spoke very straightforwardly. But in front of Yechen, she became completely awkward. She just stared at him blankly, not knowing what to say. This was the second time she had seen Yechen since her rebirth. The Yechen in front of her no longer had the gray hair, emaciated figure, and various traces of hardship from his past life. At this moment, he was full of youthful vigor. Tall and handsome, even the casual clothes he wore looked like they were from a famous brand. So this was the Yechen who no longer had the burden of their four younger sisters. Yelan couldn't help but tear up. In fact, when Yeme said that in this life she wouldn't let the scum parents adopt Yechen, she had refused in her heart. Because she really wanted Yechen to become her brother again. But now, Yelan agreed with her eldest sister's words. Without them, Yechen could live a better life. Yechen just watched as this unfamiliar little beauty suddenly called his name and ran up to him crying. If someone who didn't know the situation saw this, they would probably think he was a scumbag playing with the girl's feelings. Yechen had to speak up, Miss, please don't cry. I don't think I've offended you, have I? When Yelan heard the unfamiliarity in Yechen's words, she inexplicably felt like crying even more. Yechen, in this life, really didn't remember them anymore. Seeing that she was still about to cry, Yechen had to quickly change the subject, do you know me? What do you want me to do? More and more people around noticed the situation. It was getting late to explain. Yelan wasn't stupid either. She also realized that the looks from the people around were not right. She immediately wiped away her tears and said, you saved my sister, I came to thank you. On her way to catch up with Yelan, she quickly searched online for why Yeme was so close to Yechen. Then she found out the whole story on Yeme's school forum. Finally, she understood why Yeme leaned on Yechen's shoulder. After reading the whole process, Yelan had only one thought. Yeme was definitely intentional. What a tactic. Not only did she secretly approach Yechen behind their backs, but she also deliberately stirred up this hero saves the beauty. The purpose was to get closer to Yechen. Yechen, hmm? Your sister? From the moment he saw Yelan, he felt very familiar. Now, looking closely, he suddenly understood. You're Yeme's sister? The only person he had recently saved was Yeme. Yelan nodded vigorously, yes. Yeme wanted to use this incident to get closer to Yechen. Then don't blame her for also taking advantage of this incident to get close to Yechen. Yechen's reaction was very indifferent, oh, no need to thank me. This was just a small matter, and unnecessary. But he didn't think so, and Yelan didn't think so either. She just wanted to use this incident to get closer to Yechen. Glancing at the time, she immediately suggested, to show my gratitude, I want to treat you to a meal. Yechen had a bad stomach in his previous life. So in this life, she must not let Yechen go hungry again. To be honest, it's rare for someone to refuse when a beautiful woman suddenly offers to treat them to a meal. Yechen belonged to the rare category. No need, it's just a small matter, and your sister has already thanked me for it. After saying this, he wanted to turn and leave. But Yelan wouldn't let him go, my sister is my sister. I should also express my sincerity. She suddenly changed her expression. Her mouth slightly drooped, showing a look of grievance. But her eyes were cautious and expectant. Yechen, I just want to treat you to a meal, is that not okay? Of course not. This sentence was not said by Yi Chen, but by Yi Mei, who came from behind. Yi Mei had just finished class and heard her roommate say that a particularly beautiful girl had arrived at the school gate. This girl even stopped Yi Chen. The two seemed to know each other because the beautiful girl was standing in front of Yi Chen and crying. Yi Mei immediately got angry. Which woman came to steal her brother? Yi Mei didn't say a word and ran out. Now many girls are materialistic. They are all scheming and money-minded. Yi Chen drives a Rolls-Royce Phantom, and he will definitely catch the eye of these girls. They are not interested in Yi Chen as a person, but in his money. She cannot allow these people to get close to Yi Chen. Anyone who wants to get close to Yi Chen has to pass through her. So when she ran over, although she didn't see clearly who this girl was, after hearing her words, she immediately retorted without thinking. Afraid they didn't hear clearly, Yi Mei repeated loudly, absolutely not. Yi Lan immediately recognized Yi Mei's voice. She turned around immediately, why not? Yi Mei then saw clearly that the materialistic, scheming, money-minded girl she had imagined was actually her sister, Yi Lan. Lan, what are you doing here? She clearly kept this news from her. Yi Lan, what do you think? If I didn't know, would you have kept it from me forever? Yi Mei felt a hint of guilt in her heart. After finding Yi Chen, she had indeed intentionally kept it from Yi Lan. The reason was simple. She wanted to have more time alone with Yi Chen. 
but she couldn't admit it, but now you know. The two sisters played dumb. Yi Chen, on the side, completely didn't understand. He didn't want to get involved. I have something to do. Before he could finish, Yi Lan interrupted directly, I recently found a great restaurant. Let me take you there. Yi Lan saw that Yi Chen wanted to leave and directly reached out and hugged Yi Chen's arm tightly. She pressed against him tightly. Yi Lan's personality was already inclined towards being straightforward and bold like a boy. So even though she had just met Yi Chen, she could make such an intimate move. Yi Chen only felt a wave of softness and warmth. A girl's soft body, pressed tightly against his own. He could even feel her breathing. Her actions directly made the onlookers gasp, because Yi Lan's posture was too intimate. Before they could recover from their shock, the next thing that shocked them even more appeared. In their eyes, someone who was always calm and never frivolous, like a snow lotus on an iceberg, the distant Yi Mei, actually hooked onto Yi Chen's other hand and hugged him tightly. I haven't had dinner yet, so I'll go with you. When Yi Mei made this move, it was completely out of anger. Her personality was already inclined towards being aloof, otherwise she wouldn't have the title of Iceberg School Flower. So even though she had been in contact with Yi Chen for so long, she still carefully maintained her distance, fearing that Yi Chen would dislike her. But, as soon as Yi Lan arrived, she directly hugged Yi Chen's arm. This absolutely cannot be allowed. So without thinking, Yi Mei directly hugged Yi Chen's other hand. After she finished this move, she realized what she had done. But it was too late. A faint blush appeared on Yi Mei's face, but she was unwilling to let go of his hand. The two sisters hugged Yi Chen, one on each side, creating an incredibly beautiful scene. Yi Chen didn't understand how the situation had turned out like this. And the people around couldn't help but exclaim, what the hell is going on? Yun Mei Goddess actually hugged Yi Chen. Wait, I feel like I've seen that girl somewhere. I remember. I've seen her too. She's Yun Mei Goddess's sister. Yi Lan. No matter who it is. What kind of spell did Yi Chen cast on them? Why are they so clingy to Yi Chen? Damn it. I'm so envious. Tears of jealousy are flowing from my mouth. Not only did they want to know, but Yi Chen, who was dragged to the hotel by them, also wanted to know. Why were these two sisters so clingy to him? Yi Chen, try this. It's super delicious. Yi Chen, this is too greasy, not good for your stomach. Eat more vegetables. They are good for your stomach. But you need a balance of meat and vegetables. Chicken legs are the most nourishing. Have a chicken leg. Since the dishes were served, the two sisters seemed to have lost their minds. They competed to feed Yi Chen. Yi Chen looked at his bowl. It was filled with all kinds of dishes, all fed to him by the two sisters. And if the bowl wasn't full, they probably wouldn't have stopped. Yi Lan saw that Yi Chen hadn't moved. Yi Chen, why aren't you eating? Yi Chen, I am eating. He picked up his chopsticks, thought for a moment, then stopped. But before I eat, I want to say that you don't need to feed me anymore. I have hands, I can feed myself. If they continued to feed him, he would probably end up eating all the dishes on the table. Although there were two beautiful women sitting next to him, and the dishes were fed by the two beautiful women, he really couldn't eat anymore. Yi Chen picked up his chopsticks and was about to pick up the dish in the bowl, but suddenly noticed that two pairs of big eyes were staring at him. The eyes of the two sisters were fixed on his chopsticks. They were happy or sad as his chopsticks moved. Yi Chen probed discreetly a few times. Finally, he understood that whenever his chopsticks landed on a dish fed by one of the sisters, the other person's face would fall. Yi Chen. Indeed, the ancients did not deceive me. It is truly difficult to raise petty people and women. Yi Chen simply gave up the dishes that had already been fed to him and picked up one from a distance, taking a bite when the two sisters weren't paying attention. Both sisters were instantly unhappy. They had been secretly competing to see whose dish Yi Chen would eat first. But Yi Chen didn't eat either of theirs first, instead he fed himself. Yi Chen, who was as clear as a mirror in his heart, looked at them with a puzzled expression. What are you looking at me for? Hurry up and eat. This dish is pretty good. Yi Chen cleverly avoided the first wave, and with the second chopstick, he mixed and ate the dishes fed by both sisters at the same time. The two sisters had no more room to compete and finally settled down to eat. Yi Chen thought they had finally calmed down and could have a good meal. But beauty, indeed, was the most difficult thing to endure. Yi Lan had only eaten a few bites quietly, but couldn't help but speak up, wanting to get closer to Yi Chen. Yi Chen, I heard you're very good at shooting. There were admiring stars in her eyes, direct bullseye every time. So you must be very good at games like CS, right? Yi Chen hadn't expected Yi Lan to know about this. But then he thought, she and Yi Mei were sisters, so it was normal for them to talk about it. It's okay. Yi Lan revealed her purpose, I also like to play these kinds of games. Let's add each other as friends. We can team up when we play games in the future. 
There was no better reason to get closer than this. Yilan couldn't help but praise herself. The beautiful woman had already shown her friend's QR code. If he didn't add her, it would be unacceptable. Yi Chen had to take out his phone and add Yilan as a friend. Seeing all this, where was Yi Mei not moved? She immediately took out her phone, then I'll add one too. Yilan suddenly threw out a line, Big sister, don't you not play games? Yi Mei added Yi Chen as a friend, I can relax occasionally too. Wanting to have Yi Chen's affection all to herself. No way. The eyes of the two sisters collided like lightning and sparks. After finally finishing the meal, Yi Chen hitched a ride back to school with Yi Mei. He had originally planned to take a taxi back by himself. It's a pity that the two sisters were unwilling to say anything. After arriving at school, Ye Mei did not get off the car. She still had some personal grievances with Yelan to resolve. Ye Mei waved to Ye Chen, Ye Chen, see you tomorrow. After saying that, she looked triumphantly at Yelan. Yelan was not attending the same school as them, so they wouldn't see each other tomorrow. Yelan received the implied message from Ye Mei and felt extremely annoyed. No, she also had to come to school. Yelan immediately thought of a follow-up plan. After seeing Yechen walk away, Yeme immediately asked Yelan, how did you know? Yelan replied, if you don't want others to know, don't do it yourself. Big sister, do you still have sisterly love? Why didn't you tell us about finding Yechen again? Yeme deflected the question back, why didn't you tell our youngest sister? Yelan immediately fell silent. After knowing that Yechen had appeared, the first thing she thought of was to keep it from Yezhu. This little girl had often flaunted the photos of her and Yechen in front of her. This time, she was determined to take the lead. She wanted to build a good relationship with Yechen first. In this way, she could keep it a secret for as long as possible. Yechen was unaware of the situation between the two sisters. By now, he had already returned to the dormitory. As soon as he opened the door, he was immediately greeted by the stares of three pairs of eyes. Yechen, you're finally back. I've been waiting for you for so long. Yechen, you little rascal, tell us. Where did the school flower and her sister take you just now? Yechen was speechless, we just had dinner. Just dinner, is that all it was? Didn't anything else happen between you and the two beauties who were hugging you? Yechen could only respond with a speechless expression. If something had really happened, could he have returned so early? Gauza pushed his way through, Yechen, don't listen to their vulgar talk. I have something important to ask you. His expression was extremely serious and solemn, as if he really had something important to ask. Yechen asked, what is it? Gauza spoke earnestly, what time was it when you helped the school flower on the bus? Please tell me in detail, it's very important to me. Just by helping once, he could make the school flower pay attention to him. This deal was definitely worth it. Yechen, he was about to respond when his phone suddenly lit up. It was a message from Yeme. Have you returned to the dormitory? Gauza noticed it immediately and exclaimed in shock, damn. The other two roommates were startled by his outburst. Gauza, why did you suddenly shout? Yeah, you scared me. Gauza widened his eyes. The school flower sent a WeChat message to Yechen. Yechen, you actually have the school flower as a friend. With this statement, the other two roommates immediately crowded around. What? You're friends with the goddess? No way. Is it true? The goddess never adds friends. She directly rejects anyone who tries to add her. I still remember. Shinji begged her for so long, but she never added him. After they finished speaking, they looked back at Yechen with jealousy in their eyes. Jealousy. They were so jealous. It was like an insurmountable barrier of jealousy. How did Yechen manage to have such good luck? Yechen, how did you persuade the school flower to add you as a friend? It's so enviable. Yechen didn't answer the question. After they naturally moved on, Yechen couldn't help but think. It was a good thing they didn't continue to ask. If they found out that it wasn't him who asked Yame to be his friend, but she requested to be his friend, they would probably go even more crazy. Gauza and the others suddenly shifted the conversation to the friend circle. Yechen, since you added the school flower as a friend, quickly check out what she's posting in her friend circle. Yeah, like academic sharing and such. Also, let's see if there are any selfies of the school beauty. These people, saying they want to see academic sharing is fake, they really want to see if there are any selfies. However, in fact, Yi Chen was also curious. So he really opened it. Yi Mei's circle of friends is very clean. There is no privacy setting that can only be seen for three days. But she never posts anything all year round. And what she does share is almost all news and financial information. There is nothing personal at all. It doesn't look like a girl's circle of friends at all, but more like a business person's. After Gao Zhe finished reading, he quietly said, Sure enough, Iceberg Yi, your circle of friends is just as cold. 
The three who thought they could see selfies instantly felt dejected. Yi Chen was about to exit, but suddenly saw a new post at the top. Yi Mei had just posted a new circle of friends. After Yi Chen refreshed, the latest dynamic content of this circle of friends came into view. Red Heart had a very pleasant evening. Red Heart Selfie. JPG, in the selfie, Yi Mei's face was slightly tilted, with a hint of shy smile at the corner of her mouth, melting her cold temperament and exuding extraordinary beauty. However, Yi Chen's attention was on the background and the lower right corner of her photo. The background of this selfie was obviously the private room where they had dinner tonight. And the arm revealed in the lower right corner, wasn't it his arm? When did Yi Mei take this photo? Yi Chen, who had a super good memory, suddenly remembered that Yi Mei did take out her phone halfway through. But he didn't pay attention at the time. He didn't expect that she was actually taking a selfie at that time. Damn, did my eyes deceive me? We were just talking about not having any selfies of Yi, and now suddenly there is one. Gao Zhe, who knows when he came over, became excited after seeing this photo. There really is a selfie of Yi. Let me see, let me see. What does this caption mean? Had a very pleasant evening? Regardless of the caption, Yi is really beautiful. Yi Chen, can you send me this photo? Yi Chen directly closed his phone, don't even think about it. I'm going to take a shower. He shut out everyone's voices outside the bathroom. Then he looked at Yi Mei's circle of friends in deep thought. She didn't have any personal posts before. Why did she suddenly post this today? There was an inexplicable feeling that this post was specifically for him to see. Yi Chen was about to exit, but then saw that Yi Lan had also updated her circle of friends. Red Heart had a very, very pleasant dinner today. Red Heart Selfie. JPG, both the picture and the caption were 99% similar to Yi Mei's. Yi Chen. Shut it down. After angrily parting ways with Yi Mei, Yi Lan went home. She hadn't even settled on the sofa when she saw the circle of friends post from Yi Mei. In an instant, alarm bells rang in her mind. Wow, I really didn't expect this. Yi Mei, you actually moved so fast. Did Ji Chen see it? If he saw Yi Mei's post but not hers, would he think she doesn't like him? Absolutely not. Just thinking about it made Yi Lan feel suffocated. So without thinking, she immediately posted one as well. Then she anxiously waited for Yi Chen's response. In the end, as the sky was getting light, she still hadn't received Yi Chen's like or reply. The only thought in Yi Lan's mind was that she didn't, and neither did Yi Mei. A strange sense of balance. What she didn't know was that, also waiting until dawn with her, was Yi Mei. Could it be that Yi Chen is asleep? That's why he didn't see my circle of friends. Yi Mei, with dark circles under her eyes, was puzzled. It was already bright outside, and she had class today. She could only tidy up and hurry out. Halfway there, Yi Mei saw the person she least wanted to see. Xin Ji. Her expression turned cold. She intended to pass by without looking at him. However, she wanted to ignore him, but Xin Ji insisted on making his presence known. Yun Mei. Xin Ji directly blocked her path. Wherever she went, he blocked her, making it difficult for her to ignore him. Yu Mei had to stop, move aside. Xin Ji was in high spirits, with a hint of arrogance in his tone. Yun Mei, don't look so cold. I have something to tell you. I've booked a table at Huan Chang. I invite you to dinner. Huan Chang is a private hotel in Beijing. Although it is a hotel, it is very difficult to book a table there. Without a strong background, it is impossible to book a table. Xin Ji had to work hard to get a reservation there. Yu Mei had heard of Huan Chang. Those who could dine there were either rich or noble. But so what? I'm not going. She felt annoyed just seeing Xin Ji. How could she possibly have dinner with him? Yu Mei walked past him with a cold face. Xin Ji watched Yu Mei leave, his face turning green. Don't think he doesn't know. Yesterday, Yu Mei had dinner with that poor guy, Yi Chen. She could have dinner with Yi Chen, but not with him. Why? Suddenly, Xin Ji remembered that Yi Chen had shown off in a Rolls Royce Phantom. Could it be that Yun Mei also misunderstood Yi Chen as a rich young man? That's why she was so close to him. No, he must expose Yi Chen's scheme in front of Yu Mei. A flash of light appeared in Xin Ji's eyes. Wait. Xin Ji stopped Yu Mei again, actually, I'm not just inviting you, this time. I intend to invite our whole class to dinner. So Yi Chen will also come. When Xin Ji said this, it was extremely painful. Having a meal at Huan Chang was not cheap at all, let alone treating the whole class. But Qin Ji realized that if he didn't invite Yi Chen, Yu Mei would definitely not go. But if he only invited Yi Chen, it would be less fun even if he exposed Yi Chen's deliberate show off. After weighing the options, Qin Ji gritted his teeth and decided to spend a lot of money this time. He would invite the whole class. When Yi Mei wanted to continue refusing, after hearing that Yi Chen would also go, she immediately stopped. 
You just said, Yi Chen will also go. Xin Shi saw her eyes light up, and he hated it. Yi Chen could make her so happy. He suppressed his anger and nodded, yes, of course. The things at Huan Chang were so expensive. How could Yi Chen, a poor guy, not go? I'm afraid that when he says it in class, Yi Chen will be eager to come and freeload on food and drinks. Yu Mei looked at him suspiciously. She couldn't believe he would invite Yi Chen. But if he invited the whole class, Yi Chen would definitely go. If Yi Chen went, she would definitely not miss this opportunity. She would go with him. In the end, Yu Mei compromised. If Yi Chen goes, then I'll go too. So if Yi Chen doesn't go, she definitely won't go. Xin Ji's eyes lit up. Good, good, good. This was the first time Yu Mei had agreed to his invitation. How could he not be happy? After Yu Mei left, his expression fell. Even though Yu Mei had agreed to his invitation, he couldn't deny that it was because of Yi Chen. Yi Chen, today, I must expose your scheme. When he arrived at the classroom, Qin Ji immediately spoke up, Everyone, please wait. I have something to say. I will treat everyone to dinner at Huan Cheng tonight. If you don't mind, everyone must come. As soon as he finished speaking, it immediately caused a stir among the classmates. Qin Xiao, are you talking about Huan Cheng? That's super hard to book Huan Cheng. Qin Ji nodded proudly and arrogantly, Yes, that's Huan Cheng. Oh my god. It's said to be super hard to book. Without connections, you can't even get a reservation. What's more important is that the food there is so expensive. It is said that even a casual meal for two people costs tens of thousands. Some classmates who didn't know how awesome Huan Chang was, after hearing the explanation, looked at Qin Ji with different eyes. Xin is awesome. Xin is mighty. Xin is grand. After receiving the admiration of everyone, Qin Ji looked at Yi Chen with a somewhat condescending look. Yi Chen, you must come tonight. After all, if it weren't for me, you would never get into a place like this in your lifetime. Yi Chen looked at him with mixed feelings. He would never get into a place like this in his lifetime? If he were to say now that Huan Chang was his territory and the industry under him, Qin Ji would be furious. In the spirit of unity and friendship, he decided not to tell him such a cruel truth. Someone wants to give him money and invite him to dinner. Why would Yi Chen refuse? Qin is right. I will definitely go tonight. At night. Huan Chang. Qin Shi stood at the door, looking proud. This is Huan Chang. I have already reserved a table. You guys go in first. Qin, aren't you coming in? I won't go in for now. I have invited another distinguished guest, and I will wait for her here. Alright, then we'll go in first. After following them in for a while, Yi Mei arrived. She had originally wanted to come with Yi Chen, but something came up suddenly, so she had to come alone. She stopped at the door and didn't go in, looking at Qin Ji suspiciously. Where's Yi Chen? Could this be a deliberate deception? Qin Shi saw what she was thinking. Yi Chen and the classmates have already gone in. They are waiting inside. Yi Mei, you didn't lie to me? Qin Ji, if I lied to you, you could just turn around and leave immediately. Only then did Yi Mei go in. Qin Shi followed behind her, with a cold smile on his face. Yi Chen, today is the day your lies will be exposed. Qin Shi quickly walked to the door, pushed it open, and it was noisy and lively inside. He cleared his throat. Quiet down. Guess who I've brought for you all? Everyone looked at him. Sheen, stop teasing. Who is the important person who has come? There aren't many people who can make Sheen personally wait at the door. Could it be Yi, the school flower? Ha ha ha. When this person spoke, it was completely taken as a joke. Because everyone had already assumed in their hearts that Yi Mei would not come. However, as soon as he finished speaking, Sheen Ji mysteriously smiled. You're right. He stepped aside, and Yi Mei, who was standing behind him, was revealed. Yi Mei was wearing a very simple white shirt on top, but it perfectly outlined her figure. And she was wearing a very short skirt, exposing her well-proportioned long legs. Her temperament and the aura around her were like the ice of the northern glaciers, cold and distant. Just getting close to her made people tremble uncontrollably. And when she appeared, everyone was excited. Ah, it's really Yi, the school flower. The school flower actually came. With the school flower here, I feel like the decoration here has become much more luxurious. They were shocked by Yi Mei's arrival. At this moment, some people started to flatter Qin Ji very tactfully. Wow, Qin has really got face. He can actually invite Yi, the school flower, to come over. Isn't that right? Qin is young and promising, handsome, and so passionate. It's only natural for Yi, the school flower, to be moved. We really have to thank Qin for being able to dine with Yi, the school flower. The continuous flattery made Qin Ji feel extremely pleased. Oh, stop it. It's all thanks to Yi, the school flower's grace. Yi Mei didn't even hear what they were saying. She looked around the room and didn't see Yi Chen. Her expression immediately fell. 
Where's Yi Chen? You lied to me. All the students were stunned. Ha, huh? wasn't Yi Xiao Hua here because of Qin Xiao? Yi Mei felt like she had been deceived. Qin Ji never invited Yi Chen to come over in the first place. Since Yi Chen wasn't here, she didn't need to stay here either. Yi Mei turned around to leave. How could Qin Ji allow her to leave? If Yi Mei left at this moment, it would be a blatant slap in his face. Wait a moment. Qin Ji stopped her in front of him, even if he felt extremely aggrieved at the moment, he dared not show it. He could only force a smile and say, Yi Chen definitely came. Maybe he just went somewhere? Gao Ze was the quickest to react among everyone. He immediately spoke up. Yi Chen did come. He just went out for something a moment ago. Yes, yes, he did go out just now. He should be back soon. Why don't we wait here, Yi Xiao Hua? Everyone said that Yi Chen was here. Yi Mei's doubts lessened a bit. Just then, Yi Chen happened to come back from the restroom. As soon as he walked to the door, he saw a group of people gathered here. Why are you all gathered at the door? Yi Mei saw him and her eyes lit up. Originally, he had a cold demeanor, but now he seemed to have melted like snow and ice. Yi Chen. Yi Mei? What are you doing here too? Yi Chen glanced at her, then at the others, and suddenly understood. Xin Ji invited him to this meal, and the reason behind it was not simple. Yi Mei walked over to him, he said you were here, so I came too. Her words completely stripped Qin Ji of his dignity. At this moment, Qin Ji's expression could no longer be described as just ugly. It was completely livid. He could even feel that the way his classmates looked at him had completely changed from before. I really thought it was Qin Xiao's people who invited me, but I didn't expect it was for Yi Chen. I noticed earlier that Yi Xiao Hua's attitude towards Yi Chen is not ordinary. Although they spoke very quietly, Qin Ji still heard them. He was furious, if you have nothing to say, no one will treat you as dumb. Everyone immediately fell silent. At the dining table, Yi Mei sat directly next to Yi Chen. Qin Ji originally wanted to stay far away from Yi Chen, but in order to get closer to Yi Mei, he had to come over with a grim face. Although the atmosphere was somewhat strange, fortunately there were many people, and with a few people talking, the atmosphere became lively. Qin Xiao, let's order first. Yes, yes, let's order first. A few people handed the menu to Qin Ji, fully showing that he was the protagonist and everything depended on his orders. Qin Ji's expression finally improved a bit. After he finished ordering, he handed the menu to Yi Mei. Yun Mei, take a look and order whatever you want. He spoke in a very domineering manner, just order whatever you like. You don't need to look at the prices. Yi Chen noticed that when he said this, his eyes looked at him with a hint of arrogance. Yi Chen. It seemed that this guy really regarded him as a rival. Yi Mei didn't refuse either, and directly took the menu. She began ordering without any politeness. After ordering, she spoke, the dishes I just ordered are all too spicy, which is not good for the stomach. The dishes I ordered are all good for the stomach. Xin Ji was instantly moved. He originally thought that Yi Mei didn't care about him at all. He didn't expect that women are indeed hypocritical. While saying no, no, she was actually very happy in her heart. He immediately said, yes, good for the stomach, good for the stomach. I didn't expect Yun Mei to care about me so much. She's even worried about my stomach. Yi Mei had no expression on her face, who is caring about you? Yi Chen has a weak stomach and can't eat these things. She looked at Yi Chen, you can't eat such spicy things in the future. And these fried foods too. These are all bad for the stomach. In his past life, Yi Chen died of stomach cancer. She was truly afraid that history would repeat itself in this life. That's why she had to monitor Yi Chen's diet from top to bottom. Xin Ji. Damn it. He had to exert a lot of effort to hold back the urge to curse in public. Yi Chen did notice. Yi Mei is very particular about his diet. It seems like she's afraid he might get a stomach illness. The dishes quickly started to arrive. Yi Mei completely disregarded the presence of others and directly served Yi Chen. You eat this. This is specially for you. And this. It's said to be good for the stomach. She looked so busy. Where was the aloof school beauty they talked about? Everyone was shocked. Suddenly, the food in their mouths didn't taste good, and they were all gossiping. Damn. Is the person serving Yi Chen really the aloof school beauty Yi Mei? Damn. What charm does Yi Chen have to make the school beauty fall for him like this? Damn. Envious tears flowed from the corners of their mouths. They really wanted to switch places with Yi Chen. Xin Ji invited everyone here to eat, not to see how Yi Mei would please Yi Chen. He originally wanted to wait until the wine had been drunk for three rounds before revealing the truth. But now he couldn't wait any longer. He slammed the chopsticks on the table and stood up, unable to hold back any longer. Yan Mei, why are you so good to this scumbag? Do you know? You've been deceived by him. Yi Mei didn't want to pay attention to him at all, 
but when she heard him curse Xi Chen, she couldn't ignore it. Qin Ji, who are you calling trash? Qin Ji, isn't he? Yan Mei, you don't think he's really some rich second generation, do you? It's all fake. That Rolls Royce Phantom isn't his at all. He's a pauper. Yi Chen sat on the side, listening like an outsider. He thought Qin Shi might say something, but he didn't expect the conversation to keep circling back to the car. Yi Mei sneered. She didn't care if the car was real or not. She didn't care if Yi Chen had money. After all, she had already decided that whether he was rich or not, all her industries would be given to Yi Chen. Seeing Qin Ji persisting in this matter, she wanted to hear what nonsense he was spouting. Oh, how do you know? Qin Ji was confident, because I saw it with my own eyes. The day Yi Chen drove the car out, he gave the keys to someone else. Then he went and bought a bicycle himself. Haven't you seen him riding a bicycle to school recently? Yi Mei hadn't been on the forum recently, so she naturally didn't know that this matter had already spread on the forum. She looked even colder, even if that's true, so what? Xin Ji, it proves that from the beginning, he wanted to get close to you through deception. The incident you encountered on the bus. It might have been planned by him. Xin Ji was completely making baseless accusations. He had no evidence at all. But after opening this line of thought, he gradually found it reasonable. It must be like this, it's true. Yan Mei, you've really been deceived by him. He must have targeted you early on and started planning. After you got on that bus, he followed to get close to you. Hearing Qin Ji's words, Yi Mei's face turned red instantly. She didn't want to hear anymore, shut up. Isn't this what she did to Yi Chen? This guy Qin Ji had inadvertently exposed the truth. But Qin Ji completely misunderstood Yi Mei's expression. He thought he had hit the mark. Yi Mei didn't want to accept the truth now. So he became even more excited. Yan Mei. So you know, right. Don't deceive yourself. Yi Chen is so despicable. I now have every reason to suspect that the person who wanted to harass you on the bus might have been planned by Yi Chen. He deliberately created this scene where he could play the hero, then took advantage of your kindness, then rented a Rolls Royce Phantom and pretended to be wealthy. Everything Yi Chen did was all a lie to you. Yi Mei finally couldn't hold back. She stood up directly, her face filled with terror. Qin Ji. Shut up. She could tolerate Qin Ji being like a follower, always clinging to and pursuing her. Although she found it annoying, it was within her tolerance. But Yi Chen was her bottom line. She had sworn in her past life that if she could start over, she would never let anyone bully him. She would never let Yi Chen suffer again. Onlookers at the scene, she's angry, she's angry. But Qin Ji showed no sign of restraint and instead said, Yun Mei, I have evidence. He took out the evidence in his hand. Look, I never lie to you. He thrust the phone in front of Yi Mei, even if she didn't want to look. Yi Mei didn't want to look. But when she caught a glimpse of someone on the screen, she suddenly stopped and looked back. She stared at the phone screen. The person who took the keys from Yi Chen was Lei Xiao. She never expected to see Lei Xiao. Many thoughts raced through her mind. Although she had been reborn, Yi Chen's life trajectory was different from the beginning, but he still met Lei Xiao in the end. Yi Mei couldn't help but feel delighted. Qin Ji had imagined countless times how Yi Mei would react after seeing this evidence. Angry, sad, lost. But Yi Mei's reaction completely surprised him. Yi Mei was smiling. A particularly joyful smile. What's going on? Yi Mei quickly restrained her smile and looked at him expressionlessly. Is this what you wanted to show me? I've seen it. You can put it away now. Xin Shi couldn't understand Yi Mei's attitude. Yan Mei. He lied to you. Aren't you angry? Yi Mei. He didn't lie to me. Why should I be angry? Xin Shi found it hard to believe. He didn't have the money to buy a Rolls Royce Phantom. He only showed off in front of you. But Yi Mei didn't care about this at all, instead she smiled. Once her cold and beautiful face smiled, it was like a glacier melting, and flowers blooming on a cliff. Everything became incredibly brilliant. Confidently, it's just a Rolls Royce Phantom. If this one isn't Ji Chen's, then I'll give him one. In her past life, she was the president of a hundred billion group. In this life, she had already gained an advantage and knew the future direction of history. Although she had wasted some time in the past struggling with those scumbag parents. Fortunately, it didn't delay things too much. A Rolls Royce Phantom, she could definitely afford it. When Yi Mei said this, it was like a huge stone thrown into a calm lake, causing huge ripples. The onlookers who had just wanted to keep quiet were suddenly not calm. Damn, did I hear it wrong just now? Did I actually hear Yi School Flower saying she wants to give Yi Chen a Rolls Royce Phantom? I must have woken up in the wrong way today. I'm probably still dreaming now. What does it mean that if this Rolls Royce Phantom isn't Yi Chen's, Yi School Flower will give him one? Damn. Who's going to wake me up? I must be dreaming. Ah. Ouch. Who the hell just hit me? 
At this moment, Yi Chen's gaze towards Yi Mei also changed. He had read many novels in his past life. Could it be that in this life, he had become the so-called protagonist? His arrogance had attracted countless beautiful women to submit to him. Or did he cast some kind of spell on this school flower beauty, making her so devoted? For a moment, he suddenly didn't want to work hard anymore. He just wanted to shout every day, rich woman, hungry, food. His eyes were really too strange. His presence was so strong that Yemei couldn't ignore it. She turned around and explained in a flustered manner, Yechen, I absolutely didn't mean to embarrass you with what I just said. Without the burden of the four sisters, Yechen's achievements in this lifetime will only rise, not fall. Yemei's belief in this is extremely firm. And Yechen has now met Lei Xiao. The Rolls Royce Phantom is definitely Yechen's. And maybe he didn't care about this car at all, so he directly gave the key to Lei Xiao and rode a bicycle himself. Following this line of reasoning, there is only one result. Yechen's current net worth doesn't care about a Rolls Royce Phantom at all. Everyone. Damn, giving a Rolls Royce Phantom is called embarrassment. Then please don't embarrass them with a sense of righteousness. They don't care about being embarrassed at all. Upon hearing Yemei's words, Shinji lost his composure. Yemei is completely insane. Otherwise, how could she say such things? He felt that if he continued to stay here, he would have a myocardial infarction. So he didn't even want to eat, and just turned and left. However, as soon as he reached the door, he was directly stopped by the waiter. Mr. Chin, you haven't paid the bill yet. Chin, she angrily took out a card. Swipe. Mr. Chin, there's not enough balance in the card. How is that possible? Mr. Chin, you've spent so much here. The waiter said a number, and Chin Ji's face turned pale on the spot. His voice raised, What? How can it be so expensive? Made of gold. Although Chin Ji had already anticipated that this meal would definitely cost him a lot, he never expected it to be to this extent. This price, even he couldn't afford it. The waiter calmly listed the ingredients he had eaten. Considering all of the above, this price is really not expensive. After hearing this, Chin Ji became even more furious. Because all of these were dishes that Yemei ordered for Yechen to eat. Yemei saw Shinji's problem and immediately spoke up. I'll treat for this meal. Shinji not wanting to pay was one thing, but at this point, whether or not to pay was another matter. Any man who wants to save face would never let a woman pay the bill, especially a woman he likes. Yemei, I said I'll pay. Shinji forced a smile, what's the matter if you pay? He took out another card, feeling extremely distressed inside, but still went through with it, swiped this one. The reminder of successful deduction sounded, and Shinji's heart also ached. Money was spent, and he was also upset. Shinji really didn't want to stay here for another second. He was so angry that he didn't even look where he was going. So he bumped into someone directly. The pain and anger in his heart made Shinji unable to hold back anymore, and he directly vented, Ah, damn it, can't you see? Are you blind? Damn. A good dog doesn't block the road, don't you know that? A man's voice sounded above him, who are you talking about? Chin Shi looked up at the person in front of him. A man in his fifties, slightly Mediterranean looking, with his eyes squinted into slits because he was too fat. Without thinking, he directly said, who else could it be? It's you. You don't even know to make way for this young master. He almost fell because of you. As soon as he finished speaking, the surrounding staff all gasped in shock. They looked at Chin Ji as if he were mentally handicapped. This young master Chin is really too brainless. He doesn't even know who the person in front of him is. He actually dared to directly insult him as a dog. The staff didn't want to cause trouble, and quickly stepped forward to try to ease the atmosphere. Young Master Chin, this is Mr. Lu, the CEO. Chin Ji, I don't care who Mr. Lu is. You bumped into me. Don't you apologize to me. He was really infuriated by Yi Chen, completely forgetting that he could eat here. All of them were either rich or noble. So much so that he blurted out such nonsense without thinking. Kid, you've got a big mouth. What's your name? Lu Xian laughed angrily, looking at Qin Ji as if he were looking at a dead man. The waiter was going crazy. He didn't want anyone causing trouble here, after all, it would have a bad influence. He sought help from Yi Mei. Just now he realized it. Only this girl could have an impact on Qin Ji. Yi Mei received the waiter's gaze. She didn't want to get involved. Why should she help Qin Ji, who had always been at odds with Yi Chen? But... Yi Mei thought of her cooperation with the Qin family, so she decided to intervene. She reminded Qin Ji of the person's identity, Qin Ji. He is Mr. Lu from the Far East group. As she is now, and the Qin family, they are both entities that cannot be provoked. Qin Ji was just momentarily foolish. He didn't really not understand the seriousness of the situation. Upon hearing Yi Mei say that the other party was Mr. Lu from the Far East group, 
his face turned extremely pale. WH what? It was actually the Far East group. This was a big shot that even their Qin family couldn't afford to offend. He immediately knelt down. His usual arrogant attitude was nowhere to be seen, Mr. Lu, I was blind and ignorant. I was confused just now and didn't see clearly that it was you. I'm sorry for offending you. Originally, the people in the class were still expecting this person to apologize to Qin Ji. But what they never expected was that even Qin Ji, who could be domineering in their school, had to kneel down and apologize to this person. Just how awesome was this person called Lu Xian? But Lu Xian's gaze fell directly on Yi Mei. His eyes, which were slightly narrowed, exuded a different kind of brilliance. You, little girl, are quite something. But do you think that after bumping into me and cursing at me, apologizing will make everything okay? Xin Ji's face turned pale. Knowing the seriousness of the matter, he was at a loss, Mr. Lu, you are a big man. I was just young and ignorant. Please don't take it to heart. Besides desperately bowing and scraping, he didn't know what else to do. Yi Mei ignored the situation. Her reminder just now was her duty fulfilled. What Lu Xian wanted to do to Qin Ji afterwards had nothing to do with her. She wanted to go into the private room. But while that was what she wanted, it wasn't what Lu Xian wanted. The moment he saw Yi Mei, he felt that she was very spirited. A girl in her teens, at the moment of blooming. Coupled with Yi Mei's slightly cold temperament, it made people want to tear her apart, wanting to see a different kind of charm. Everything about Yi Mei was all in line with Lu Xian's perverted preferences. He looked at the people in the private room, all students. He could completely provoke them. Lu Xian directly stepped in front of Yi Mei, his smile not well intentioned. Little sister, why are you walking so fast? Don't you want me to forgive him? I'm not unreasonable. It's very simple for me to forgive him. His hand casually lifted, wanting to directly touch Yi Mei's shoulder. Little sister, if you accompany me for a meal, I will pretend that this never happened. How about it? Seeing his hand about to touch her shoulder, Yi Mei directly stepped back. Her expression had become completely indifferent. Not good. She wasn't really an ignorant girl. How could she not understand the lecherous look in Lu Xian's eyes? This disgusting man actually had his eyes on her. And he wanted to use Qin Ji's matter to threaten her? Qin Ji, this is your trouble. Don't try to drag me down. Qin Ji hurriedly stepped forward. Mr. Lu, I'll accompany you for a meal. You? You're not worthy. Little sister, it's just a meal. There's no need to be so disrespectful, right? I said I'm not going. Yi Mei's expression remained cold. She knew she couldn't afford to provoke Lu Xian now, but she had no intention of backing down. Besides, this was originally Qin Ji's fault. She was simply a victim of unjust treatment. Lu Xian's expression had softened initially, but upon seeing the obvious disdain in Yi Mei's eyes, his expression turned completely cold. Little girl, don't offer a toast only to drink a forfeit. Yi Mei's expression was equally icy as she retorted, Are you crazy? She regretted speaking up for Qin Ji in the first place. Lu Xian had been repeatedly insulted and his anger had reached its peak. It was no longer about Qin Ji bumping into him, but the anger he felt after being humiliated multiple times. Today, I really want you to accompany me for this meal. He reached out to grab Yi Mei. Yi Mei was taken aback by Lu Xian's audacity. He dared to act so arrogantly in front of so many people, and no one dared to intervene. The waiters had already become accustomed to such scenes. They couldn't afford to offend the Far East group. Lu Xian's hand was getting closer to her, and she suddenly felt afraid. She realized she couldn't resist him now. What should she do? Who could save her? Stop. Just as Lu Xian's hand was about to touch Yi Mei, someone intervened. Yi Chen grabbed Lu Xian's hand, his expression indifferent. Didn't you hear her? She said she's not going. Where did this student come from? Get lost. Lu Xian's words were cut short as he felt a sharp pain in his wrist where Yi Chen had grabbed him. Ah, he contorted in pain, and everyone around gasped in shock. No one expected him to act this way. Qin Ji's heart raced. Yi Chen, are you crazy? Let go, he's the head of the Far East group. If this person had a narrow-minded personality, he might take it out on them. What should they do? Yi Mei felt relieved to see Yi Chen step in, but then she became worried. Yi Chen. Yi Chen sneered, is the Far East group really that impressive? She's not the one who provoked you. Why take it out on her? And, he looked at Qin Ji, Yi Mei got into this trouble because she was trying to help you. What kind of man are you to stand by and do nothing? It was clear to everyone that Qin Ji had brought this trouble upon himself. Yi Mei had only spoken a few words and ended up in trouble. Qin Ji realized this and blushed with shame. He wanted to explain why he had been hesitant earlier, he's the head of the Far East group. So what? Yi Chen impatiently interrupted him. The Far East group? Ha! Yi Chen turned to the silent group of waiters. 
Is this how you treat your guests? You just stand by when a guest is treated like this? Get your manager here. The waiters looked at each other, unsure of what to do, until a man stepped forward. I am the manager here. What's the matter? The nearby waiters quickly explained what had happened. In truth, he had already known. He had witnessed everything that had happened earlier. The reason he hadn't intervened earlier was because of Lucien's high status and the fact that the other side was just a group of students. It was clear who held more weight. But now that things had escalated, he had no choice but to step in. I understand. He pretended to listen and then said, I've got it. It's not a big deal after all. It's just that Mr. Lu wants to invite this child to have a meal. It's not a big deal. Besides, it was your friend who bumped into Mr. Lu first, and instead of making a fuss, Mr. Lu even invited you to dinner. This matter is so trivial, why make it so big? Yi Mei, you. Yi Chen looked at the manager's name tag on his chest and suddenly smiled, are you the new manager? The manager didn't know how he knew, but still nodded, so what? Yi Chen smiled, okay, I understand. No wonder this Mr. Lu dares to be so arrogant here. It turns out he's new. The manager still didn't realize the seriousness of the situation and continued to speak for himself, what do you understand? All right, Mr. Lu has already given you face by inviting you to have a meal with him. Little girl, if you go have a meal with Mr. Lu, this matter will be over, okay? As for what will happen after the meal, it's not within his professional scope. Yi Mei was extremely angry and subconsciously looked to Yi Chen for help. Yi Chen understood and spoke directly, she won't go for a meal, and you, the manager, don't bother. The first sentence was easy to understand. The second sentence made the manager laugh out loud. What do you mean by the manager? Don't bother. Who do you think you are? Young man, don't be so arrogant. Yi Chen didn't continue to waste words, but instead opened his phone's contacts and directly called someone. When the call was answered, he briefly explained the situation. This head manager doesn't need to continue. After speaking, he hung up. The manager, oh, you're quite good at pretending. You even made a call? Ha ha. It's probably a fake number. Yi Chen didn't bother with him. After all, the manager was now like a locust after autumn, unable to jump for long. As for this Mr. Lu, a voice suddenly interrupted his thoughts. Lu Feng, how dare you speak to Mr. Yi like that? The manager was startled, turned around, and widened his eyes, and Mr. Li, Mr. Li, why are you here? The person who came was the general manager of Huan Chang, Li Sun. You're still talking. What have you done? Don't you have any sense in your heart? Li Sun's gaze swept around and landed precisely on Yi Chen, his expression immediately becoming flattering, Mr. Yi, you can rest assured, I will handle this matter properly. Mr. Yi, not only Lu Feng was stunned, but everyone, including Yi Mei, was also stunned. When did Yi Chen become Mr. Yi? Li Sun spoke to Lu Feng, you bumped into a guest, and you haven't apologized to me yet. Lu Feng was still confused, apologize? Apologize to whom? Of course, to Mr. Yi. He pointed in Yi Chen's direction. Lu Feng, but, but they bumped into Mr. Lu from Far East Group. At this point, Lu Feng still mistakenly thought that Li Sun had made a mistake. Li Sun was almost infuriated when he heard this. What is the Far East Group? Mr. Lei just called and was furious. He was so angry that he kicked Lu Feng, apologize to me on your knees. Lu Feng was caught off guard and knelt down still not fully understanding what had happened. Li Sun, seeing that he still didn't speak, was so angry that his blood pressure was about to rise, hurry up and apologize to me. This time, Lu Feng was completely awake. Although he still didn't understand why he had to apologize, his survival instinct quickly made him speak, Mr. Yi, I was wrong, I was not good. I was wrong, you are a big person, please spare me, I really need this job. He completely borrowed Qin Ji's previous plea. Yi Chen ignored him and looked at Li Sun. What is the first rule of Huan Chang's service? Li Sun was sweating profusely, but still quickly replied, Equality. All the guests dining here cannot use their status to bully others. What about those who violate the rules? Immediate dismissal. Li Sun has already understood, Lu Feng. You have violated the rules of our hotel. According to the regulations, you are not allowed to continue working here. After he finished speaking, his gaze was full of pity. This Lu Feng is actually just unlucky. After all, to be serious, the first rule, in reality, not many people can completely abide by it. After all, those who come here are either rich or noble. Where is there really any equality? But he wouldn't say these words. Lu Feng was taken away in a daze. With his mind, he probably would never understand how he managed to directly provoke the biggest boss of Huan Chang, Yi Chen. 
However, this is not the end. Not long after Lu Feng was taken away, Lu Xian's phone rang. His expression became increasingly pale after answering the call. When he hung up the phone, his face was as white as paper. He kept repeating, Whom have I offended? Whom have I offended? In the recent conversation, the other party suddenly reneged on the contract they had just discussed, and bluntly stated that they would no longer do any business with the Far East group. That was a contract he had been seeking for a long time. When he asked for an explanation, the other party only said one sentence. You should think carefully about whom you have offended recently. But who could he have offended? Lu Xian's mind was definitely more useful than Lu Feng's. He immediately thought of the key. If he really had offended someone, it could only be the young man in front of him, who was called Yi Chen by the general manager of Huan Chang. Unfortunately, he realized this too late. The matter had already been settled. Even if he pleaded with Yi Chen to spare him, it would be of no use. Yi Chen. Yi Chen, you can't do this. Li Sun also stopped him from shouting and asked him to calm down. Then he let Yi Chen and the others into the room to continue their meal. He would handle everything else. The development of this matter was truly full of twists and turns. The resulting outcome was beyond everyone's expectations. Everyone felt like they were opening a blind box. Somehow, Yi Mei got involved in it. And then Yi Chen took action. What was even more surprising was that both Yi Mei and Qin Ji were afraid of someone they couldn't afford to offend, Yi Chen. The manager was dismissed. The general manager of the Far East group, Lu, seemed to have gotten into some trouble too. And the general manager of Huan Chang was actually very respectful to Yi Chen. Who exactly was Yi Chen? For a moment, everyone's gaze towards Yi Chen changed instantly. There was admiration, incomprehension, doubt, and shock in their eyes. Gao Zhe was the first to couldn't help but come over and ask, Yi Chen, you've hidden it well. Why do they all call you General Yi? My goodness, what is your real identity? So, is that Rolls Royce Phantom really yours? Did you buy it yourself? Yi Chen. You couldn't be some kind of legendary monk, could you? A group of people bombarded Yi Chen with questions, leaving him unable to react. And Yi Mei's gaze towards him was even more admiring. Yi Chen, you're really amazing. Indeed. She knew it. Yi Chen was the most amazing person in the world. Without the burden of her and her three sisters, Yi Chen would only soar higher and higher. Xin Shi stood in a corner, his face extremely grim and complex. He had never expected that the situation would end up like this. He was the one who had knelt down and begged pitifully. But in the end, he was the one being asked for something by Yi Chen. His face was as swollen as it could possibly be. Before, he was too angry to continue staying here. Now, he felt utterly ashamed. Taking advantage of no one paying attention to him, Qin Shi slipped away. He really had no face to stay here any longer. And Yi Chen was surrounded by the crowd, constantly being questioned. What was his true identity? Yi Chen was truly getting a headache from all the questioning. He had just told the truth directly, well, since you're all so curious, I'll tell you. Actually, Huan Chung Hotel is mine. The whole room fell silent. Cao Zhe was the first to speak, Yi Chen, even if you may have some money, you shouldn't say that. Yeah, Huan Chang's boss is really awesome. How could it be you? Yi Chen, don't mess around. Cao Zhe added, I know. Maybe they got the wrong person when they called for the so-called General Yi? Could it be that they meant Yi School Flower? After all, Yi School Flower is also the general of the Yi group. With these words, everyone felt that it made perfect sense. Yes, it must be like this. Just now, Yi Mei and Yi Chen were standing in the same place, facing the same direction. So there's a high probability that Mr. Li called the wrong person. Or maybe he meant Yi Mei, but they all felt that he was calling Yi Chen. Because no matter what, the likelihood of Yi Mei having a more impressive background and status than Yi Chen was even greater. Yi Chen. He gave Gao Zhe a look that said, if you think so. Everyone suddenly realized. It seemed that everything was just as Gao Zhe had said. Yi Chen was already drunk. He never expected that when he spoke the truth, no one would believe him. And how did Gao Zhe come to this conclusion? The construction of this thought process was truly admirable and impressive. Yi Mei was also puzzled. How did they push the ultimate boss behind the scenes onto her? She wanted to explain that this had nothing to do with her. But when her gaze fell on Yi Chen, she seemed to suddenly understand. In his past life, Yi Chen was just like he is now. No matter what earth-shattering things he did, he would never reveal them. It was probably the same this time. She wanted to help Yi Chen hide. So, she agreed. When the banquet finally ended, Yi Mei specifically waited for a time when no one was paying attention and approached him. With a serious expression on her cold and clean face, she said, Yi Chen, rest assured, I will definitely keep your secret. I won't tell anyone. When Yi Chen heard this, he looked bewildered. Ha, 
What secret did he have? How did he not even know it himself? Although he was puzzled, his expression remained cold and indifferent, as if he was agreeing. Yi Mei suddenly felt a hidden sense of joy in her heart. Her eyes showed a hint of joy and anticipation. Is this secret something only the two of us know? Only the two of them knew? Yi Lan and Yi Zhu, they didn't know at all. After a moment of silence, Yi Chen still didn't understand where Yi Mei's imagination had gone. If even he didn't know what she was imagining, then naturally it was a secret only the two of them knew. So he nodded without hesitation. Yi Mei couldn't help but smile. Her appearance was usually cold and proud, as if she were a cold mountain. But when she smiled, it was like a brilliant flower suddenly blooming in the snow-capped mountains, attracting everyone's attention. That's great. It's really great. She finally had something that only the two of them shared, just like her third sister in her previous life. And this was a secret. Yi Mei's happiness and joy only lasted until the next day. When she arrived at school, she suddenly heard everyone around her discussing. Did you hear? It seems like there's going to be a new transfer student today. No way, there are still transfer students now? And I heard that she's very young. She's a genius who skipped grades. Yes, yes, I heard that too. This person seems to be Yi School Flower's sister. The little beauty who was at the school gate a few days ago. No way, could it really be her? Listening to the discussions around her, Yi Mei's face suddenly turned cold. She had been too happy and excited yesterday, and had actually forgotten about this. Yelan, this guy, actually followed along. The whole class also received this news and was discussing it at the moment. Gao Zhe sat down next to Yi Chen. He couldn't contain his excitement and said, Yi Chen, have you heard? It seems like Yi Shue's sister is going to transfer here. Oh my god, I never expected this. In my lifetime, I can actually be in the same school with my two goddesses. Yi Chen was curious, two goddesses? Gao Zhe nodded wildly, yes, yes, don't you know? Yi Shue's sister Yelan is a skilled esports player. It seems like she just won a championship recently. Her skills are amazing. Incredibly cool. Yes, yes. I didn't expect it either. Lan's skills are amazing. Completely beyond her age. I never thought she's also a genius in her studies. She's actually skipping grades. The classmates who were gossiping nearby had gathered around at some point. They all talked excitedly in front of Yi Chen. Soon, Yi Chen had a rough impression of Yelan in his mind. Yi Mei's younger sister, a particularly talented esports girl. She seemed straightforward and lively, but just like her sister Yi Mei, she kept people at a distance. Gao Zhe suddenly said, I wonder why she suddenly wants to transfer and skip grades to come here. Which class do you think she'll join? Others started guessing randomly. Only Yi Chen remained silent, because he suddenly remembered the message Yelan sent him before going to bed last night. Yi Chen, we will soon be classmates. I have a lot of things I don't know. So please guide me more when the time comes. Yi Chen, I want to get closer to you. Will you be angry? When he received this message, Yi Chen didn't take it seriously at all. Yelan is still so young. How could she be in the same class as him? But now, she actually skipped grades. And the second message was even more intriguing. It seemed to imply that she specifically transferred here to study for herself. If that's the case, it's very likely that she will join his class. Just as this thought occurred to him, a sweet voice suddenly came from outside. Yi Chen. Everyone instinctively turned to look. Standing at the classroom door was Yelan, the one they were just discussing. Yelan was holding something in her hand, and she ran straight to Yi Chen. Her eyes were bright. Yi Chen. Have you had breakfast? Not yet. Great. After Yelan finished speaking, she quickly covered her mouth. I, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant that I made breakfast for you. If you haven't eaten yet, you can have what I made for you. She brought the things in her hand and placed them in front of Yi Chen one by one. The items were very simple, oatmeal with milk, boiled egg, and a sandwich. As she arranged these things, everyone's eyes were fixed on her, with a very strange look. Such a strong presence of gazes, even Yelan couldn't ignore it. She began to feel uneasy and couldn't help but say, is the breakfast I prepared too simple? Or is it not nutritious enough? Yelan bit her lip and her voice became even smaller. I'm sorry, Yi Chen, I really wanted to make a more elaborate breakfast for you, but I've only learned these recently. But don't worry. I will definitely work harder to learn more in the future. I'll strive to make better breakfasts soon. These two short sentences contained a lot of information. Yi Chen even suspected that he misheard and asked again, did you make all these breakfasts? The result he got was Yelan nodding even more shyly. At that moment, Yi Chen clearly felt the envy and jealous glances from all the boys around him. It was one thing for Yi Lan to bring breakfast, but what was even more important was that she had made it herself. And this was just the beginning. Before Yi Chen could respond, a voice outside the door called his name. Yi Chen. 
I brought breakfast for you. It was none other than Yi Mei. In that brief moment, the two sisters' eyes met, and sparks flew. Yi Lan, what are you doing here? Why can't I be here? I've transferred to this school, and shouldn't I be asking you that? This isn't your class, so what are you doing here? Of course, I'm here to bring breakfast to Yi Chen. No need, because I've already brought it. Your breakfast of plain kanji and bread has no nutrition at all. Yi Chen, you should eat what I brought for you. It was specially prepared by a nutritionist I hired at a high price. Who says my breakfast has no nutrition? Eggs and milk are all nutritious. And most importantly, I made all of these myself. My sincerity is in these dishes, unlike you who rely on others. Yi Chen, you should eat mine. The two sisters immediately began to argue, each refusing to give in. All the classmates in the room watched as the two fought over their breakfasts, then placed their own breakfasts on Yi Chen's table. There was a mix of jealousy and complex emotions in their hearts. Who exactly was Yi Chen? Or what had he done to these two sisters to make them fight each other like this? Watching the breakfast being pushed back and forth, they all wanted to shout, let go of that breakfast. Let me have it. I can eat it all. The two sisters argued for a long time, then suddenly stopped and looked directly at Yi Chen. In unison, they said, Yi Chen, you decide. Whose breakfast do you want to eat? Under the gaze of everyone, Yi Chen fell silent for a moment, then took out soy milk and fried dough sticks from the drawer. Actually, I bought my own breakfast. He had only said he hadn't eaten breakfast, not that he hadn't bought any. To prevent the two sisters from continuing to argue, Yi Chen cleanly opened his own breakfast and started eating. You two can eat your own breakfasts. The breakfast battle between the two sisters was forced to come to an end. However, while breakfast had been avoided, the topic immediately shifted to lunch and dinner. Yi Lan was the first to speak, Yi Chen, what do you want for lunch? I'll make it for you. Yi Mei immediately retorted, no matter what cuisine it is, just say it and I'll have my chef make it for you. And you've eaten dishes made by my chef before. They must suit your taste. Yi Chen. He was really puzzled now. He felt that these two sisters were very particular about what he ate, as if they were afraid he wouldn't eat well. But in the end, neither of the two sisters got the answer they wanted, because class was starting. Since Yi Mei wasn't in this class, she had to leave in frustration after class. Yi Lan watched her leave with a smug smile. The reason she had acted this way this morning was not without cause. Last night, before going to bed, she had seen Yi Mei's post on her social media. I have it too, our little secret. This ambiguous statement immediately raised her guard. Sure enough, when she asked, Yi Mei said it was their little secret with Yi Chen. Secrets were not to be shared, of course. Yi Lan was furious. Although her connection with Yi Chen was the second weakest among the four sisters, she couldn't let this slide. In other words, she was the weakest. This was absolutely not allowed. Her brother had been so good to her. She had to repay him well in this lifetime. Thinking of Yi Chen's stomach problems, Yi Lan decided to take charge of his future meals. That's why she had gotten up early to make breakfast. At that time, she never thought that Ji Mei was faster than her. Because of the jumble of thoughts in her mind, Yi Lan didn't pay attention in class at all. As soon as the class was over, she hurried to find Yi Chen. However, her plan fell through. Yi Chen had already anticipated that the two sisters would continue to pester him after class. So as soon as the class was over, he turned and ran without hesitation. Can't provoke, can't hide? Yi Chen directly avoided her all day. Several times, Yi Lan was about to catch up to him. But when she reached a corner and ran up, Yi Chen was already gone. It was like he had vanished into thin air. At the end of the school day, Yi Chen repeated his tactics. Just as Yi Lan was about to catch up, he swiftly dodged with incredible agility. When Yi Lan reached the corner again, Yi Chen was gone once more. Damn it! Why is he gone again? Yi Lan stomped her foot in frustration. She stopped in place for several seconds, her eyes turning red with a tinge of sadness. She felt upset. Why does Yi Chen keep avoiding me? Does he not like me? Or does he think I'm too annoying? The thought that it was very likely because Yi Chen didn't like her made Yi Lan even more upset and on the verge of tears. This reminded her of her past life. In her past life, she was easily swayed, repeatedly misunderstanding Yi Chen and not trusting him. So in this life, Yi Chen avoiding her was probably retribution. The more she thought about it, the more distressed she felt. Lan, why are you crying? A worried voice accompanied by urgent footsteps quickly approached her. When Yi Lan looked up, she saw a familiar person. It was her senior from the esports club. Yi Lan was surprised and quickly wiped away her tears. Senior, what are you doing here? Su Li Kun continued with concern, you said you were transferring here, and I was worried that something might happen to you, so I came to check on you. I didn't expect that something really did happen to you. 
His expression immediately turns serious and very angry. Lan, who bullied you and made you cry like this? In his memory, Yi Lan had never cried before. Since joining the esports club, she had always been fearless. How could she look so fragile now? What on earth had happened? Who dared to bully her? Yi Lan felt very embarrassed. She never expected that someone would see her in this state of breakdown and tears. It was impossible to explain the specific reasons. Senior, I'm fine, no one bullied me, I just got some sand in my eyes. Absolutely impossible. Suli Kuan immediately interrupted, Lan, don't lie to me, I heard everything when I came over just now. What happened with that Yi Chen? As he spoke, something came to his mind. A few days ago, he saw a photo on Yi Lan's computer. Could that man be this Yi Chen? Yi Lan didn't like anyone slandering Yi Chen. This made her think of her past, so she was very angry. Her expression also turned cold, I said it's not. He didn't do anything to me. The things you said just now, senior, just pretend you didn't hear them. Su Li Kuan, are you defending him? Yi Lan, I said I'm not. She didn't want to explain further. She also knew Su Li Kuan's personality very well. He was very stubborn. If she tried to explain, it would be impossible to clear things up. So Yi Lan simply didn't say anything. She turned and was about to leave. All right, senior, you go back. I'm going home too. In the end, Su Li Kuan could only watch her gradually disappear from sight. He stayed in place, feeling more and more angry as he thought about it. Yi Lan's state was definitely not right. What had this Yi Chen done to her? No, he had to find out what this Yi Chen had done. Teach him a lesson. Let him know that Lan is someone he absolutely cannot provoke. Su Li Kuan had already made a plan in his heart and immediately put it into action. The next day, when the bell rang, Yi Chen deliberately entered the classroom, successfully avoiding the breakfast struggle between the two sisters. He also received a resentful look from Yi Lan. More importantly, Yi Lan behaved herself this time. As soon as the bell for the end of class rang, she stood up and shouted, Yi Chen, stop right there. Her voice was so loud that even the teacher was startled. Ignoring everyone else, she ran directly to Yi Chen, who had not managed to escape. Why are you avoiding me? Yi Chen couldn't admit it. I didn't avoid you. Yi Lan said, if you didn't avoid me, why did you run outside as soon as class ended? Her eyes were slightly red, and she stubbornly held back her tears. Yi Chen, do you hate me? She didn't want to feel sad. She had promised to be strong. But the thought of Yi Chen, who had loved her so much in the previous life, avoiding her like a snake in this life, made her feel a huge sense of disappointment that she couldn't help but want to cry. But she managed to hold back. Yi Chen was very troubled. He really didn't know how he had provoked her. But it couldn't be said that he hated her. He could only speak the truth. I don't hate you. As soon as he said he didn't hate her, Yi Lan's eyes immediately lit up. Where was the slightest trace of grievance? She grabbed Yi Chen's clothes and said, Really? You really don't hate me? I knew it. Yi Chen, you're the best. As long as Yi Chen didn't hate her, she would be satisfied. Seeing the extent of her change, Yi Chen finally understood. A woman's heart is like the depths of the ocean. This saying is indeed true. Yi Chen's calmness only lasted until the end of the school day. At lunchtime, the two sisters started fighting again. It was simply envy-inducing. Yi Chen had just managed to calm the two sisters' fight and took the first bite of his meal when someone walked up to him. With an extremely loud and angry voice, they said, You're Yi Chen, right? Yi Chen looked up. The person standing in front of him, he didn't recognize at all. Who are you? Although he didn't recognize him, Yi Lan did. Senior brother, what are you doing here? Yi Lan looked at Su Li Kuan in utter surprise, completely unaware of how he, from another school, had come here. Su Li Kuan's tone was full of righteousness, of course, I have to stand up for my junior sister. I can't just let someone bully you for no reason. Yi Chen's face looked strange. Where did you hear that? I bullied her? Su Li Kuan sneered, Lan was crying because of you. And here you are saying you didn't bully her. Yi Chen, if you're a man, don't be a coward. Bullying someone and not admitting it. Yi Lan was really about to be driven to madness, I said he didn't bully me. Su Li Kuan didn't believe it. He was now very stubbornly convinced that the reason Yi Lan kept refuting was because Yi Chen was threatening her. Lan, don't worry. With me here, no one can bully you, and you don't have to be threatened by him anymore. After his self-righteous speech, he looked at Yi Chen again. Why aren't you saying anything? Are you scared? Yi Chen really wanted to pry open his thought process and see what kind of structure it was. Even though Yi Lan said it, he didn't believe it. After thinking for a while, he curiously asked, Okay, if as you said, I really bullied her, what do you want to do? You really did bully Lan. Su Li Kuan's voice immediately rose a notch. What do I want to do? You bullied her, so of course I want to avenge her. 
Yichen found it even more amusing. What do you want to do to avenge her? Su Li Kuan compared their physical builds, I won't take advantage of you. With your weak physique, I won't even bother fighting you. Do you play PUBG? Yi Chen immediately understood his meaning. You want to compete with me in esports? Su Li Kuan laughed arrogantly, esports? You? Ha ha ha, do you know what esports is? Don't think that just because you can play a game, you think that's called esports. Esports is definitely not just about playing games. But since you can say this word, you must be able to play. Yi Chen ignored his words and only answered the last question, a little bit. Su Li Kuan's eyes were full of malice, it's good that you can play. Then let's have a competition. If you lose, you have to apologize to Lan immediately. Yi Lan originally wanted to stop Su Li Kuan. She couldn't bear to hear Su Li Kuan constantly defaming Yi Chen. However, when she heard him say he wanted to compete with Yi Chen in PUBG, she immediately lost interest. Instead, her eyes became extremely strange. Su Li Kuan actually wanted to compete with Yi Chen in a game. Did he think that as the third place winner, he was very powerful and awesome? But Su Li Kuan didn't know. It was Yi Chen who had taught her to become a champion. It was also through Yi Chen's guidance that she won her first championship in her life. Su Li Kuan compared to Yi Chen. Yi Lan kindly reminded, Senior brother, it's better not to. If you lose, it will be very embarrassing. But Su Li Kuan misunderstood her meaning. Lan, are you afraid that I will win and make him doubt his life? Don't worry. I will go easy on him. Yi Lan. No, I'm afraid that you will lose and doubt your life. Yi Mei watched the whole scene from the side. For a moment, she didn't know whether to stop it or let it go. This person who came out of nowhere actually challenged and belittled Yi Chen. This was something she absolutely could not tolerate. And it seemed to be related to her second sister. What did her second sister do to make him misunderstand how Yi Chen treated her? But before she could stop it, she heard Su Li Kuan's arrogant words. He actually wanted to defeat Yi Chen in the field of esports. At that moment, the two sisters' hearts were in sync. Since he was so arrogant, then let him taste the feeling of being slapped in the face. Neither of the two sisters opposed it, which made the onlookers feel strange. After all, before this, the two sisters had always respected Yi Chen and had been defending him. But now that others had come to bully him, these two sisters surprisingly did not react. When Yi Chen and Su Li Kuan left for the internet cafe, a group of people immediately gathered and started discussing. Why didn't the school flowers speak up for Yi Chen? Could it be that they really think Yi Chen can beat Su Li Kuan? Don't be ridiculous, how is that possible? Do you know who Su Li Kuan is? This year's esports third place winner. His level is only slightly lower than Lan, the school flower. The reason why the two school flowers didn't refute, I think it's very simple. They finally realized Yi Chen's true poor appearance. So they don't speak up for him anymore. That's not right, if that's the case, why didn't Lan stop Su Li Kuan from competing with Yi Chen? Didn't you hear Su Li Kuan say, he's worried that Yi Chen will lose too miserably? Yi Chen will definitely lose. No, I must go and see how Yi Chen will be humiliated. I've been tolerating him for a long time. Count me in. I want to go too. When Yi Chen and Su Li Kuan sat in the internet cafe, a large crowd had already gathered behind them, all of them bystanders. Seeing more and more people, Yi Lan softened and worried that Su Li Kuan wouldn't be able to handle it. Senior brother, before it starts, end it quickly. It's too late if you wait any longer. She spoke very seriously. You can't beat Yi Chen. Su Li Kuan was happy to hear the first half of her sentence, but the second half made him angry. Lan, are you questioning me? How could I possibly not beat him? People around him who were familiar with him had already started explaining his achievements. Su Li Kuan is undoubtedly a genius. At the age of 15, he had already won the national championship in CF. And he won the championship for three consecutive years. If it weren't for Yi Lan's sudden emergence, snatching the championship from him in the fourth year, he would have been the undisputed king. He is also the world champion seed player that everyone is looking forward to. After someone explained this, those around who didn't understand instantly realized how formidable Su Li Kuan was. They never expected that this tall guy was such an extraordinary figure. As others recounted his achievements, Su Li Kuan proudly straightened his back. With an admiring gaze, he looked at Yi Lan beside him. It was because of Yi Lan's exceptional skill that he could understand just how talented and capable he was to defeat Su Li Kuan. Yi Chen, listening on the side, was thoroughly enjoying the conversation. No wonder he was so arrogant. He had the capital to be so. The people around continued to talk. Yi Chen is definitely going to lose this time. It's clearly an impossible situation to win. If Yi Chen doesn't lose, I'll livestream myself eating shit. Damn. Bro, are you playing this hard? This makes me look forward to Yi Chen winning. Yi Chen obviously heard this remark, if I win, 
will you really live stream yourself eating shit? The person had only been trash talking. He never expected to be caught by the main character. Everyone's gaze turned to him. He felt extremely nervous. But in just a moment, he regained his composure. What was there to fear? Su Likuan was the three-time consecutive national champion. How could a nobody like Yi Chen possibly defeat him? So there was no way he would have to eat shit. With his head held high, he spoke confidently, Yes, that's right. If you win, I'll livestream myself eating shit. But you have to win first. Yi Chen silently moved his chair further away. I never expected someone to have such a weird hobby. Actually liking to eat shit. Then I'll fulfill your wish. Su Likuan, watching from the side, couldn't help but chuckle. This Yi Chen was so sure that someone would live stream themselves eating shit. Didn't that mean he was certain he would lose? Ridiculous. He clasped his hands together, the joints making a cracking sound. Stop trash talking. Let's have a real battle. Yi Chen didn't back down. Let's do it. The two of them formed a team directly. Since it was a matter of headcount, there was no problem teaming up. The game officially began. Su Li Kuan quickly calculated the best landing spot and, once chosen, jumped without hesitation. He wanted to play with a fast and decisive style. Yi Chen was in no rush. He waited until everyone else had jumped before leisurely following suit as the last one. Just as he landed, Su Li Kuan had already claimed the first head. His speed was truly impressive. The onlooker's attention was all focused on Su Li Kuan. His moves were just too beautiful. Truly worthy of a professional esports player. Every move was incredibly precise. Once he pulled the trigger, no one could escape. Truly worthy of Brother Cohen. His skills are too strong. He's already far ahead in headcount. Yi Chen is definitely going to lose. It's already a blessing for Yi Chen that Brother Cohen is willing to play with him. Brother Cohen is really handsome. Yi Chen still has zero headcount. It's really hilarious. Yi Lan had always stood behind Yi Chen, watching his moves. Hearing everyone around saying that Yi Chen was bound to lose, she felt extremely dissatisfied. Yi Chen will definitely win. She was very confident. Even though Yi Chen hadn't claimed a single head at the moment. Just as Yi Chen finished checking his backpack, he heard Yi Lan's firm statement in support of him. It felt a bit strange. Yi Lan sounded too certain. It was a kind of certainty that knew his level of skill. But how was that possible? He had never revealed it. Suppressing this strange thought, Yi Chen finally made a move. He drove a car and quickly approached a stronghold. At this stronghold, two groups were currently engaged in a fierce battle. Yi Chen drove the car into a blind spot and then got out of the car. Finally, he quickly hid in an excellent ambush position. He set up the gun. Yi Lan recognized it at a glance, it was a car 98k. Is Yi Chen finally going to start collecting heads? Yi Lan was extremely excited and eagerly waiting. On the other side, Su Li Kuan once again snatched a head, firmly occupying the top spot on the kill list. He glanced at the number of people and felt confident in his heart. Although he had been killing all along, he had also been listening to the people around him. Yi Chen's head count is still zero. How could such a trash possibly win against him? He slowed down, found a place to hide, moved his fingers a bit, and planned to relax and ease the tension. However, at that moment, he suddenly heard the people around him exclaiming in amazement. Yi Chen actually got ahead. Su Li Kuan looked at the time and couldn't help but laugh. He had only gotten one head so far. What was there to be amazed about? The final victory would still be on his side. However, Su Li Kuan never expected that the voice just now was just the beginning. Oh my god. What's going on? How did Yi Chen suddenly get three heads? Damn. Four. No. Five. Damn. Six. Is this game bugged? Su Li Kuan also thought it was impossible. He thought they were lying. However, when he saw the number of kills behind Yi Chen's ID displayed on the screen, he instantly lost his composure. When did Yi Chen kill so many? He didn't even care about his own game character. He turned his head to look at Yi Chen's computer screen. He saw Yi Chen controlling the character, moving quickly. Even in the midst of the movement, he didn't forget to pick up the gun and shoot one kid after another. His kill count had risen rapidly because of this. Amateurs watched the excitement, experts watched the skill. Su Li Kuan was a professional gamer. At a glance, he could see how fast Yi Chen's hands were moving on the keyboard. And every command was incredibly clear. Neat and clean. There was no unnecessary operation. Looking at the screen, the reason why Yi Chen was able to kill so many at once was because he happened to pick a team that was in the middle of a firefight. As a result, all these people died under his gun. So fast. Such a skillful technique. Su Li Kuan dared to assert that even Yi Lan absolutely couldn't do such precise micro-operations. The more Su Li Kuan watched, the more shocked he became. 
He completely forgot that he was in the middle of a competition. Or was it the onlookers next to him who woke him up? Koen Ge, don't watch anymore. Yi Chen is about to surpass you. He's about to rank first. Su Li Kuan woke up as if from a dream. He immediately turned to look at the screen results. Sure enough, Yi Chen, who was originally at the bottom, had now jumped to second place. There were only a few heads left to surpass him. Su Li Kuan immediately stopped watching and frantically picked up the mouse again, placing his hand on the keyboard. Su Li Kuan quickly got into a car and started running poison. No, he absolutely couldn't lose. But, with Yi Chen's operational skills, could he really win? No, stay calm. He had been the champion for three consecutive years. How could he be scared before he even lost? Su Li Kuan also started to take it seriously. It was like he had unleashed the speed of being single for 20 years and was frantically pressing. The onlookers watched as the two sides suddenly began a fierce killing spree, not daring to breathe heavily. Yi Chen got two more heads. So fast. Kuan Ge got one. His marksmanship is so cool. Yi Chen's marksmanship is so cool. He got a triple kill. Kuan Ge also got a double kill. We're in the final circle. The ultimate winner is about to emerge. I'm so nervous. Help. Yi Chen is about to catch up. Could it be that he's really going to turn the tables and win? Ah. He caught up. Oh my god. So fast. What kind of operation is this? I can hardly see clearly. Damn it. Yi Chen got the first place. With the fall of this sentence, the third person on the screen also fell. Now, there are only two people left in place. Yi Chen and Su Li Kuan. Su Li Kuan controlled the character hiding in the house, holding the mouse and keyboard, and was already sweating profusely. His left hand fingers were trembling slightly. Until now, his heart was still beating violently in his chest. Clearly, it was just the game character controlled by the other party. But just now when he shot another person, Su Li Kuan clearly felt a substantial sense of killing intent. It was extremely chilling. He almost thought he was really on the battlefield with real bullets, not playing a game. What kind of monster is Yi Chen? Su Li Kuan moved his hand, just about to find a chance to counterattack. Suddenly, he saw another person appear in front of his game character. It was Yi Chen's game character. His pupils suddenly dilated. When did Yi Chen come? How did he not notice at all? The game character picked up the gun and shot at him without hesitation. Su Li Kuan's brain went blank, completely forgetting to dodge. Or rather, the shots fired by Yi Chen completely blocked all his retreats. He had no way to avoid it. Su Li Kuan's game character killed an action. Yi Chen undoubtedly won the MVP of the whole game. Yi Chen looked at the victory words on the screen, with no fluctuation in his heart. Su Li Kuan still looked dazed. I lost? He actually lost and he was completely crushed by superior skills. Even now, his fingers were trembling from the rapid operation just now. But Yi Chen's hand was still incredibly steady. Yi Chen stood up, yes, you lost. Yi Lan broke the eerie atmosphere between the two, cheering loudly, I knew it, I knew it. Yi Chen, you would definitely win. She couldn't contain her joy and hugged Yi Chen tightly. She fell into his arms, I knew it, you are the best. She looked up at him, her eyes full of admiration and joy. She knew it. Her brother, her clown, he was the most powerful person in the world. No one could make him lose. Yi Mei, watching her sister jump into Yi Chen's arms, felt happy for Yi Chen, but it instantly turned into jealousy. How could her younger sister take advantage now and hug Yi Chen? No way. She also wanted to. Since Yi Lan hugged from the front, Yi Mei could only hug Yi Chen from behind, not showing any weakness, Yi Chen. You won. That's amazing. Her appearance made everyone around drop their jaws. What high and cold attitude. What icy demeanor. It was all fake, right? Yi Mei was actually not difficult to approach at all. Yi Chen paid no attention to the softness in two places and focused on the crowd, noticing a person who wanted to run away quietly. The brother in the green t-shirt, didn't you say that if I won, you would livestream yourself eating shit? You can start your performance now. Green t-shirt. Damn it. Eating shit was impossible. The only truth was to cover your face and run away quickly. Su Li Kuan finally came to his senses and looked at Yi Chen with a complicated expression, I lost this time, but in the future, I will definitely surpass you. After saying this difficult sentence, he reluctantly greeted Yi Lan and left. Yi Chen left amidst the compliments and admiring glances of the crowd. The two sisters naturally followed. Yi Lan felt very sorry, Yi Chen, it's all my fault, I made you suffer unjustly. I don't know why senior brother thought you bullied me. I feel sorry for his behavior. I'm sorry. Yi Chen didn't take it seriously, you told him before, it's his own fault for not listening. Yilan lowered her head, still feeling very guilty, even so, 
I'm very sorry. From the direction of Yi Chen, only the top of Yi Lan's head can be seen. It adds a bit of cuteness. Yi Chen suddenly felt that the scene in front of him seemed to have appeared somewhere before. But upon further investigation, he found that this scene was like a flower in a mirror, or a moon in the water. It couldn't be found or remembered. However, when he came to his senses, he found his hand resting on Yi Lan's head. Yi Lan also felt her head sink a little, and raised it with some confusion, bumping into Yi Chen's deep eyes. How could he suddenly touch her head? Yi Chen silently withdrew his hand. You haven't done anything wrong, no need to apologize. Yi Lan couldn't help but reach out and touch the ends of her hair, where it still seemed to retain the warmth of Yi Chen's hand. She smiled brilliantly. Hmm. Yi Mei, watching from the side, felt extremely jealous in her heart. She also wanted Yi Chen to pat her head. Before she could speak, there was a sudden movement in her pocket. Yi Mei took out her phone, and the caller ID on the screen was Zhou Qiguang. She couldn't care less about being jealous and quickly answered the phone. Teacher. Ah, really? That's great. I'm looking forward to your arrival, teacher. Hmm. I understand. Okay. Goodbye, teacher. When Yi Mei hung up the phone, she still had a smile on her face. Yi Lan curiously asked, Big sister, was it President Zhou who called you? Yi Mei's face had a faint smile. Yes, it was teacher Zhou. She suddenly thought of something and looked up at Yi Chen. Yi Chen. Do you know Zhou Qi Guang? That's right. The person who just called Yi Mei was indeed Zhou Qi Guang. This life is the same as the last. Yi Mei still worships Zhou Qi Guang as her teacher. The only difference from the last life is that she created the opportunity herself. But Yi Mei hasn't forgotten that she can still worship Zhou Qi Guang as her teacher because of the foundation laid by Yi Chen in the previous life. Yi Chen thought for a moment and quickly shook his head. I don't know him. Who is he? Yi Mei's eyes, which had been bright, suddenly dimmed. You. Don't know the teacher. Yi Chen felt her attitude was strange. What does he do? Is he amazing? A celebrity? He's usually very busy. Even going to school was delayed for two years because of the things in his hands. Yi Mei's heart skipped a beat. Yes. This life is different from the last. Yi Chen never became the older brother of the four sisters. He didn't have to work hard for the four sisters. To ponder and plan everything in secret. He didn't plan to find a teacher for her, so it was impossible for him to understand and know Zhou Qiguang. Even if she understood this in her heart, Yi Mei was still very sad. The connection between her and Yi Chen had diminished by one. However, Yi Mei quickly cheered up. It's okay. If Yi Chen doesn't know, she'll make him know. Zhou Qiguang is my teacher. He is the president of the highest institution of learning. He's a very, very amazing math professor. He said he will come to our school to give a lecture in three days. Yi Mei thought of something and her smile deepened. Yi Chen, when my teacher comes, I will definitely introduce you to him. My teacher will definitely like you very, very much. Three days passed in the blink of an eye. And the news that Zhou Qiguang, the president of the highest institution of learning, was coming to give a lecture here, had been announced to the whole school. Yi Chen could clearly feel that the reputation of President Zhou was very great. As the time approached, there were more and more discussions about him. I never expected it. President Zhou is actually coming to our school to give a lecture. It's just amazing. I've always wanted to attend one of his public classes, but there are too many people registered. I haven't gotten a spot before. Me too, me too. So when I heard that he was coming to our school this time, I was over the moon. Dean Show. He's a genius. And it's said that he just recently won a math award abroad. Speaking of which, do you guys know why Dean Joe chose our school to give a speech this time? I heard about this. It seems like it's because of Yi, the school flower. Yi is Dean Joe's student. It's because of her that Dean Joe finally decided to come to our school. Yi is really amazing. She's so beautiful and also a university genius. At the same time, the few people who were being discussed by everyone happened to meet. After a warm and affectionate conversation, Yi Mei couldn't wait to mention Yi Chen to Zhou Qiguang. Her eyes were very bright, teacher. I want to introduce someone. Or rather, introduce a genius. Zhou Qiguang was surprised for a moment, then smiled at her. Oh, I can actually hear the word genius from your mouth? He had known Yi Mei for 10 years. He had long figured out her character. Yi Mei not only looked cold like an iceberg, but she was also the same inside. And she had the confidence and arrogance typical of a genius. She never acknowledged anyone being stronger than herself. This was the first time he had heard her admit that someone else was more of a genius than her. Yi Mei was a little shy, but soon became firm. Because he really is a genius. A genius even more amazing than me. Zhou Qiguang didn't quite believe it. Since meeting Yi Mei, he had been shocked by her. 
He had never seen a child with such a huge computing ability and logical reasoning skills. Yi Mei was the most genius teenager he had ever seen. And now, she was saying that someone could be more of a genius than her? Yun Mei, are you joking? How is that possible? A person walked out from behind Zhou Qiguang. Wearing glasses with a golden frame, he looked gentle and refined. It was Zhou Qiguang's other student, Zhang Liang. Yi Mei suddenly became very proud. Before I appeared, did senior brother Jiang Liang think that someone was more amazing than you? Jiang Liang showed a hint of embarrassment on his face. Geniuses are rarely not arrogant. Jiang Liang just had the common problem that geniuses would have. Before Yi Mei appeared, he had always thought that he was amazing. Zhou Qiguang smiled contentedly when he saw his beloved student being silenced. He became even more interested in the genius mentioned by Yi Mei. Who is he? What did he do to make you admire him so much? Yi Mei had a lot to say. It's just that when the words reached her lips, she held them all back. She wanted to surprise Zhou Qiguang. There was a gleam in her eyes, if I say it, then teacher, you won't be surprised. Teacher, don't you often say? Treasures are meant to be discovered by oneself, only then will you feel excited. He is a treasure. Let the teacher discover him by himself. Zhang Liang saw the rare expression on her usually cold and proud face, and his heart couldn't help but beat a little faster. But at the same time, he also felt a bit jealous of the genius mentioned by Yi Mei. Who is this person after all? Yun Mei, who always had a cold face, was actually so happy because of him. Yi Mei looked at her wristwatch. There was still an hour before the official start of the speech. She straightforwardly proposed the request to take Zhou Qi Guang around her alma mater. The scenery of the school's lake pavilion is especially beautiful. Teacher, don't you want to go and see it? Zhou Qi Guang saw through her true thoughts at a glance. Seeing the scenery of the lake pavilion was secondary. Her true thoughts were probably to take him to discover the treasure. Zhou Qi Guang, who was so painstakingly and thoughtfully led by Yi Mei to meet this person, had become interested. Naturally, he couldn't refuse and agreed on the spot. Along with Jiang Liang, the three of them set off. Ye Mei did walk in the direction of the Huexian Pavilion with Zhou Qi Guang on the surface. But secretly, she had always been heading to the place where Ye Chen often appeared. She prayed silently, hoping to meet Ye Chen. Ye Mei really did run into Ye Chen. Her eyes lit up, and she waved to Ye Chen from a distance. Ye Chen. Ye Chen heard someone calling his name, turned around, and saw Ye Mei, as well as the center of recent student discussions, Zhou Qi Guang. The two locked eyes. Zhou Qi Guang instantly understood that the young man named Ye Chen was the genius Ye Mei had been talking about all along. If I'm not mistaken, he's the treasure you want me to excavate, right? Ye Mei looked at Zhou Qi Guang's teasing smile and did not deny it. After all, her methods were not that clever. It was only natural to be guessed at. Ye Mei simply admitted, yes. When Ye Chen walked in, she introduced him, Ye Chen, this is my teacher, Zhou Qi Guang, and this is my senior brother, Zhang Liang. Ye Chen greeted Zhou Qi Guang and nodded to Zhang Liang. After chatting with Ye Mei for a while, Ye Chen prepared to leave. However, before he could speak, Zhou Qi Guang interrupted him. Ye Chen, have you researched the topic I'm going to talk about today? Zhou Qi Guang suddenly asked this question, which was quite abrupt. However, he knew that Ye Mei had intentionally brought him here to meet this young man. In fact, it was to let him know how talented this young man was. The simplest way to gauge this young man's level of knowledge was to ask questions. So Zhou Qi Guang asked. Ye Chen was taken aback. Although there had been a lot of talk recently about Zhou Qi Guang coming here to give a speech, he hadn't really paid attention to what he was going to talk about. Naturally, he had no idea. Besides, his phone had been vibrating in his pocket the whole time. It seemed that they couldn't wait. He had to deal with that first. Ye Chen quickly made a decision. I'm sorry, President Zhou, I haven't researched the topic of your speech. I'm sorry, I have something to attend to right now. Please allow me to leave first. With the conversation reaching this point, how could Zhou Qiguan not let him go? We can discuss it when you have time. After Ye Chen agreed, he quickly left. In the eyes of others, his departure might have been seen as impolite at most. But in Zhang Liang's eyes, Ye Chen had fled because he couldn't answer Zhou Qiguan's question. He had already harbored a hint of jealousy towards Ye Chen. Now, that jealousy deepened even more. He had seen it. When Yumei was chatting with him just now, her face was completely different from her usual coldness. It was like the ice had melted, and spring had arrived. This person left so quickly. He must have been afraid of his teacher. He couldn't answer the teacher's question at all. Perhaps. This person was not a genius at all. The so-called title of genius was just a way to deceive Yumei. He had seen many people like this before. No. He absolutely couldn't let Yu Mei be deceived. Zhang Liang muttered to himself, Huh, how dare he act so pretentious. 
then don't blame me for exposing your true colors later. After Ye Chen finished handling his affairs, Zhou Qiguan's speech officially began. Ye Lan had already saved a seat for him. Ye Chen, over here. Amid the jealous looks from everyone that seemed almost tangible, Ye Chen walked over and sat down next to her. He ignored the various voices like, how dare this kid let the goddess Yelan save a seat for him, and why isn't the person sitting next to the goddess me, and calmly asked, has it started already? Yelan shook her head, not yet, you arrived just in time. Indeed, he had arrived just in time. Ye Chen had only been sitting for a short while when Zhou Qiguang stepped onto the podium. It was at this moment that Ye Chen learned what Zhou Qiguang's research and lecture topic was. It was quite interesting. He suddenly became more focused on the topic. Meanwhile, at the back of the platform, Jiang Liang's eyes kept scanning the venue. He quickly locked on to and discovered Ye Chen. This kid really came to listen to the lecture. Oh, he even looks like he can understand it. In reality, his mind must be a mess. Ha! Ye Chen! I will expose your mask in front of everyone soon and let Ye may know that you are nothing but a fraud. Although it's a lecture, in order to deepen the student's understanding of this research course, Zhou Qiguang deliberately set up a Q&A session. Zhang Liang targeted this session. As it was about to begin, he picked up a water cup and went up to the platform. With a voice that only two people could hear, he said, Teacher, you must be tired after speaking for so long. Why don't you let me handle the Q&A session? You should take a break and have some water. Zhou Qiguang did not expect this, but after speaking for so long, he was indeed a bit tired and thirsty. Besides, he had been in similar situations before. So Zhou Qiguang quickly agreed. Zhang Liang took over the platform for Zhou Qiguang. He didn't immediately reveal his true purpose, saying, Hello everyone, I am Professor Zhou's student, and I will answer your questions on his behalf. If any of you have any doubts or questions, feel free to ask me. Although this course was relatively advanced for this group of students, there were still some geniuses among them. Soon, people started asking questions, and Zhang Liang patiently answered each one. Zhou Qiguang was very satisfied with his disciple's performance. Although he had the arrogance of a genius and a scholar, it had to be said that he was very talented in this field of research. Zhang Liang took this opportunity to go on stage, not for real, but just to answer the students' questions. When the time was almost up, he finally revealed his true purpose. After listening to so much, I believe you all have a certain understanding of this research topic. So, I will now ask you all some questions to see if you can answer them. Yi Mei felt that something was wrong. This was not part of the plan she had discussed with the teacher. Was this Jiang Liang's own idea? It was too late to stop him. Jiang Liang quickly posed a very tricky question. Is there anyone who can answer this question? There was silence in the room. Everyone, including those who had asked questions earlier, had only one thought in their minds. What is this? Can this question really be answered? Jiang Liang could see that everyone was confused. As he expected, these people didn't even understand his question. This question was given to him by Zhou Qiguang. He had been given over a month to answer it. He did not disappoint Zhou Qiguang's expectations. Within a month, he had answered it. After he answered it, he found out that Zhou Qiguang had also given the same question to Yi Mei. Even a genius like Yi Mei took over half a month to successfully answer it. This person called Yi Chen, who boasted about being a genius like Yi Mei, surely could answer this question quickly. Zhang Liang's malicious gaze fell on Yi Chen. Yi Lan sensitively noticed this and muttered to herself, why does this person keep looking in our direction? Could it be that he wants us to come up and answer this question? Before she could finish her sentence, Zhang Liang took action. Without any pretense, he directly looked at Yi Chen. The student in the middle of the third row, please come and answer this question. Everyone followed his gaze and looked at Yi Chen. Some people couldn't help but mutter, wow, he really asked. Luckily, he didn't ask me. Otherwise, I would have been embarrassed. I don't even understand what the question means. Ha! Huh? Don't you think there's something fishy about the person who asked the question? As far as I know, this person is called Jiang Liang. He and the school flower, Yi, are senior and junior siblings. Think about it. Think carefully. Now that you mention it, it's true. With so many people here, he didn't pay attention to anyone else but Yi. I can't believe it's just a coincidence. Last time, Ye's exam results were among the bottom 10 in the class. He's obviously a poor student, probably doesn't even understand the question. When he asked the question just now, I immediately looked at the second-ranked student in our school. His expression was completely clueless. You know, he was among the people who were asking questions just now. Even those who were asking questions just now didn't understand this question. Yi is finished for sure. They spoke quietly, but Yi heard everything. Yi looked at Jiang Liang on the platform, feeling somewhat helpless. 
Has he been having a run of bad luck lately? Why are so many people eager to cause trouble for him? One after another. He couldn't ignore them. He remained silent for a while, and Jiang Liang's expression turned even more mocking. It seems this person is indeed pretending. He doesn't actually know anything about academic research. He's just pretending to be a genius in front of Yimei. Although I don't know how he managed it, his time is up now. Why aren't you speaking, classmate? Is it because you don't understand? But it's not your fault. This question is indeed very difficult. Even I took a whole month to solve this question. The whole room was in an uproar. A whole month. What kind of insane level of question is this? No wonder I didn't understand it. If it's this insane, I wouldn't be here if I did understand it. Before they could continue to be surprised, Zhang Liang dropped another bombshell. I'm ashamed to say that it took me over a month to solve this question, but my junior sister, Yi Mei, only took half a month to solve it. The room became even more noisy. What? The school flower, Yi, only took half a month to solve this question. Truly deserving of being our school's recognized number one. The beautiful and talented school flower, Yi Goddess. She's truly amazing. I'm Yi Goddess's dog. Wah! Wow. But still, I really want to spoil the atmosphere and ask, why did he ask this question if it's so difficult? Zhang Liang, of course, wasn't stupid. He quickly explained, the reason I asked this question was not to get you to answer it. But to let you know, learning knows no bounds. Don't think that you know some knowledge and look down on others. The sea of learning is boundless. Everyone must be humble. Don't let a single leaf obstruct your view. Don't be ignorant of the vastness of the world. As Jiang Liang said these words, he was clearly looking in Ye's direction. As his words fell, the whole room erupted into applause. Just as the applause died down, a voice rang out slowly. But I didn't say I couldn't do it. With the fall of this voice, the previously extremely noisy lecture hall instantly fell silent. Almost all eyes in the room were focused on Yi. In those eyes, there was nothing but shock and doubt. Is Yi crazy? He actually said he can do it. Is he joking? This question is something even our second rank student in the whole school doesn't understand. And the school's number one, Yi Mei, took over half a month to solve it. And he actually said he can do it. Is Yi trying to show off? Has he gone mad? Can he even understand the question? Does he think he's invincible just because the school flower, Yi, has been pursuing him recently? Is he delusional? This is so ridiculous. If he really wanted to show off, he shouldn't have spoken up at this time. Gao Zhe also felt the eyes around him. He looked extremely uneasy, and he nudged Yi Chen in a secretive manner, whispering, Yi Chen, don't mess around at this critical moment. So many people are watching. He had thought he was speaking very quietly, but Yi Lan heard him. She immediately became very angry, who said Yi Chen couldn't answer it. In the previous life, Zhou Qiguang had said that he was a genius even more so than his elder sister. Moreover, he had never lied. So when Yi Chen said he could, then he definitely could. Gao Zhe completely didn't understand where Yi Lan's confidence in Yi Chen came from. It seemed as if in her eyes, Yi Chen was capable of anything. After the voices of Jiang Liang and everyone else gradually quieted down, he spoke, So what you meant just now is that you can do it? Yi Chen remained calm, yes, isn't it very simple? Simple? Zhang Liang was almost driven mad by Yi Chen's words. It had taken him over a month to solve this problem. But this Yi Chen in front of him was saying it was simple? Zhang Liang suddenly noticed Yi Mei's eyes filled with admiration. His anger surged even more. Could it be that Yi Mei truly believed it? Was Yi Chen relying on this to pretend to be a genius in front of Yi Mei? Zhang Liang became so angry that he started to calm down. He sneered, since you say it's simple, then let Yi student answer this question and show us how it's done. Yi Chen said, well, if I have to say, it is indeed somewhat difficult to understand. Before he could finish, Jiang Liang interrupted him, wearing an expression of I knew it. Yi Chen, are you trying to say that because it's difficult to understand when spoken, you simply won't say it? Yi Chen paused, indeed. Jiang Liang couldn't help but laugh, and it was a mocking laugh. He spoke the words deep in his heart, so this is your method to appear impressive in front of Yi Mei. First, you say you think the problem is very simple, and then you make others doubt themselves thinking they are really foolish, and then you take the opportunity to search for the correct answer, and then you casually reveal it. Everything you do is just to get closer to Yi Mei. Yi Chen, do you still want to use this method now? In a certain sense, Jiang Liang's words were completely logical. Many people present even thought he was right. So that's it. I didn't expect there to be such a hidden agenda behind this. No wonder. I knew it. Yi Chun at most just helped Yi School Flower a little, how could he make Yi School Flower so moved and protective of him? It turns out he was playing tricks. Yi Chen's move is so impressive. 
If he were to release a book on picking up girls, I would definitely buy it. Not a single person believed that Yi Chen was telling the truth. Everyone thought he was lying. Yi Mei couldn't bear it any longer. She would never allow anyone to slander or insult Yi Chen. Jiang Liang, please watch your words. She didn't even call him senior brother anymore. Her expression was extremely cold. On what basis do you say Yi Chen can't do it? Do you have any evidence to prove that he can't? And he has never tried so hard to get close to me. It's me who has constantly wanted to get closer to him. Zhang Liang was scolded so fiercely that his face turned red. He had never been so embarrassed before. Seeing the situation getting more and more out of hand, Yi Chen, who had not been angry before, was now slightly annoyed, huh, just as Yi School Flower said, do you have any evidence to prove that I can't? I hadn't finished my previous sentence. The second half of my sentence was, while it's difficult to understand when spoken, it becomes very simple and easy to understand when written out. He stood up from his seat and walked to the platform. He casually picked up a piece of chalk and began to write down the process of solving the problem on the spot. The process was extremely long, almost taking up the entire surface of the blackboard. Yeme had been watching the whole time. She clearly saw the entire process of his problem solving. As a result, her eyes began to shine brighter and brighter. It turns out that there is this kind of solution to this problem. How ingenious. And Zhang Liang's ability to stand in this position clearly indicates that he is not a real idiot. He also realized that the answer written by Yechen was correct. His pupils suddenly dilated. Yechen actually knows how to solve this problem. He really wasn't just bragging. But how is this possible? This problem took him more than a month to solve. And before that, this problem had not been leaked at all. So, after listening to the problem, Yechen really could solve it. If that's really the case, then what does he count for? When Yechen made the final stroke and the chalk was just used up, he looked expressionlessly at Jiang Liang, Senior Jiang Liang, what you said earlier is right. The sea of learning is boundless, and everyone must be humble. Don't think that just because you have a little knowledge, you can arrogantly look down on anyone. You should know that having a narrow view is a very foolish behavior. He directly returned all the words that Jiang Liang had secretly mocked him with before. Jiang Liang's face turned pale. He never expected that he had really made a fool of himself. The students below completely couldn't understand Yechen's answer. Both the problem and the answer were like a foreign language. What's going on? Did Yechen answer correctly? Look at this person's expression. I'm afraid Yechen really answered it. Damn. So Yechen really isn't a bad student? He's not just showing off? Yeme's eyes were shining brightly beside them. Yechen was truly deserving of being a genius. He could instantly solve such a difficult problem. From the bottom of her heart, Yeme felt excited and happy for Yechen. But on the other hand, she also realized more deeply how much they, the four sisters, had been a burden to Yechen in their previous life. A person who should have been stunningly brilliant, but because of the four sisters, was overshadowed. Forever unable to shine, forever trampled on like a shadow for everyone. They grew up on his marrow and flesh, but in turn, they belittled and slandered him in various ways. She walked up to the platform and looked at all the teachers and students discussing below with an exceptionally firm tone, the answer Yechen gave is completely correct. There is no doubt about this. Jiang Liang, there are many geniuses in this world. Don't deny the existence of such people just because you haven't seen such a genius. I'll speak for the teacher. The sea of learning is boundless. Don't have a narrow view and be arrogant. The speech ended here. Jiang Liang didn't even know how he got off the platform in the end. He only knew that what had happened in this short half hour was the most embarrassing moment of his life in his 20-something years. All of his dignity had been trampled on, but this was all his own doing. It was his own judgment that Yechen was a waste, a fraud, that led to his current situation. Zhang Liang suddenly felt his vision darken, and when he looked up, he saw Zhou Qiguang. His face was filled with guilt and shame, teacher. This time, he had embarrassed his teacher. Zhou Qiguang's face was unusually cold, I know, geniuses all have their own arrogance. But you are too arrogant. If Yechen really didn't understand and couldn't solve this problem, would you feel superior? Although you are very intelligent, you have not yet substantially used your knowledge to help others. Where does your superiority come from? Zhou Qiguang's disappointment was not feigned. Zhang Liang was a student he had high hopes for. But he is really too arrogant and conceited. Zhang Liang, hi. I'm sorry. Zhang Liang, the project you are currently working on, handed over to your junior brother. Zhang Liang felt like an earthquake in his heart. He had fought for that project for a long time. If successful, he could advance further in the academic circle. But now the master asked him to hand it over to his junior brother. But he couldn't refuse. I understand, teacher. 
At the same time, on the other side, the two sisters, Yi Mei and Yi Lan, looked at Yi Chen with admiration in their eyes. Yi Chen, I knew you would be able to answer it. Did you see Jian Liang's expression? It's so ugly. Who let him be so arrogant and conceited, thinking that you couldn't answer it? Jiang Liang has been very smart since he was a child, and everyone flattered him as a genius, so he has developed this arrogant and conceited attitude. Tisk, why does this sound so much like a replica of Yi Ju? Yi Lan blurted out this sentence, and when she realized it, she suddenly stiffened. Oh no, how could she suddenly mention that unlucky person at this time? After all, before this, the three sisters had already agreed unanimously. If they ever met Yi Chen in the future, they would definitely not mention Yi Ju in front of him. After all, in the previous life, Yi Ju still wanted to kill Yi Chen. Yi Mei also didn't expect that she would suddenly mention Yi Ju, their fourth sister. Yi Mei glared fiercely at Yi Lan and cautiously looked at Yi Chen from the corner of her eye. The two sisters thought they were being very careful in stealing glances at Yi Chen. Unfortunately, all of it was caught by Yi Chen. Yi Chen felt something strange. Why did the two sisters' eyes look a little off at this moment? With a bit of caution and a hint of regret. This feeling was as if he should have known this person originally, and this person had done something bad to him. Yi Chen quickly ran through his mind. He confirmed that he did not know this person named Yi Ju. Yi Chen suppressed his speculation and casually asked, What's wrong? Who is this Yi Ju person? She's very similar to your names. Is she your sister? With this remark, Yi Chen successfully put the two at ease. Yes, everything in this life has started anew. Yi Chen doesn't even know them, so how could he remember Yi Ju? Yi Ju is indeed our sister. Yi Lan pretended to be casual, but this person is not important. Anyway, you don't know her. Yi Mei also nodded, right. She's not important. Yi Chen remained composed. The attitudes of these two sisters towards this person named Yi Ju were indeed strange. However, Yi Lan was right about one thing. He really didn't know her. There was no need to put so much energy into someone he didn't know. At that moment, a voice suddenly came from behind, Wait, wait, teacher, Dean Shou. Zhou Qiguang was panting, but his eyes were very bright as he looked at Yi Chen. He temporarily suppressed his excited emotions, I apologize to you for what Jiang Liang did just now. Yi Chen, this is not your fault, Professor Zhou. It's just Jiang Liang's personal behavior. Zhou Qiguang, it's also my fault as his teacher for not teaching him well. But... He suddenly changed his tone, Yun Mei was right after all. You are a genius even more formidable than her. Ha! Huh? Yi Chen was stunned for a moment, and suddenly understood why Jiang Liang would suddenly want to cause trouble for him. Yi Mei also thought of this and looked very embarrassed. She quietly explained to Yi Chen what she had done before. I didn't expect him to do such a thing. She just wanted to let the teacher know about Yi Chen's existence. Just like in the previous life, Yi Chen had gone to great lengths to let the teacher know about her existence. After listening to it, Yi Chen could only admit that he was unlucky. After all, no one wants to encounter such a brain-dead person. When Yi Chen thought back to the time when he had just met Zhou Qiguang and was chased by him to ask about his research on this course, he was a little puzzled at first, but now he completely understood. So, Professor Zhou suddenly asked me that question just to test me? Zhou Qiguang coughed, it's not exactly a test. Well, it is a test. After all, when Yun Mei mentioned you to me, she said that you are a genius even more talented than her. Since Yun Mei said that, he naturally wanted to test to see if it was true. Yun Mei was very serious. Teacher, I told you, I don't lie. She would never joke about this matter. Zhou Qiguang nodded with a smile. Although what Jiang Liang did before made him very angry and sigh, it ultimately confirmed one thing. That is, Yi Chen is indeed a genius. At Zhou Qiguang's position, leaving aside other things, what he values most is talent. Because they are the future successors and the cornerstone for the future development of the career. So after confirming that Yi Chen does have this ability, he immediately had the idea of cherishing talents. Your name is Yi Chen, right? Yes. Have you ever thought about continuing to develop in the field of mathematics? If you want, I can be your teacher. Zhou Qiguang had no intention of concealing his purpose. At the moment he said this, Yun Mei had a sudden realization in her heart. This scene was strange and familiar to her. Strange because she had never seen it with her own eyes. Familiar because in her previous life, when extracting memories, Zhou Qiguang had once invited Yi Chen in the same way. Even if it's a new life, some things will not change. In this life, Yi Chen no longer needs to plan for the four sisters. Will he agree? Yi Chen didn't hesitate at all. I'm afraid I will disappoint you, sir. Yun Mei was even more excited than Zhou Qiguang. She couldn't control her anxiety. Why? Yi Chen, why don't you agree to the teacher? In the previous life, 
Yichen concealed his true abilities for the sake of the four sisters, living like a shadow. This time, she didn't want Yi Chen to repeat the same mistakes. That's why she secretly recommended Yi Chen to the teacher. In fact, the ultimate goal was to return the glory that belonged to Yi Chen in the previous life to him. But Yi Chen refused. There was no expression on Yi Chen's face, but he felt even more that the attitudes and perceptions of these two sisters towards him were very strange. Where did Jun Mei learn about these things? Her attitude was too firm. Although he knew these things, he had never shown them in front of others. He suppressed his thoughts, it's not difficult to understand. Just like some people like to paint, some people like to sing, and some people just like to drink and have fun. Everyone has their own preferences and choices. This is just one of my choices, there's no need for so many whys. Yun Mei wanted to say something more, but, you are clearly very talented in this field. If, elder sister, Yelan suddenly interrupted her, since this is Yi Chen's own choice, we should respect it. Yun Mei could only close her mouth. Zhou Qi Guang watched with great interest from the side, in theory, if Yi Chen disagrees, I should be the one most regretful. I didn't expect it to turn out to be you. Yun Mei blushed, her originally cold and proud face now looked extremely beautiful. I just don't want the teacher to miss out on such a good seedling, and I'm also worried that you might regret it later. Zhou Qi Guang suddenly nodded, Yun Mei is right, you don't have to refuse so quickly, and I don't necessarily need an answer at this time. If you think it through and suddenly want to change your mind, you can come to me anytime. My door is always open to you, he added silently, proving that he hadn't really given up. Yi Chen responded with a nod, but only he knew what he truly thought. Zhou Qi Guang had other matters to attend to, so he left after a brief chat. When only the three of them were left, Yi Chen found the opportunity to ask the question that had been weighing on his mind. So, how did you know, Yi Xiaohua, that I have a strong interest in this area? Everything else was just incidental. What truly puzzled him was the core of it all. Yi Mei suddenly froze. She was so eager to let Yi Chen meet the teacher that she completely forgot about this fatal point. The current Yi Chen had never revealed this talent at all. Yet she was so certain. Yi Chen was a genius even more formidable than her. I, I guess Big Sister doesn't know that it would end up like this. Seeing Yi Mei completely stiffen and unable to speak, Yi Lan immediately spoke up to help fill in the gaps. As an onlooker in this whole affair, her logical thinking was clearer and more agile than that of the parties involved. I think the meaning of genius in Big Sister's mind is completely different from what Professor Zhou and the others understand as genius. After all, there can be many different types of geniuses. Any outstanding aspect can be called genius. Professor Zhou and the others must have misunderstood and mistakenly thought that you are a genius in academic research. They didn't expect it to turn out like this. Big Sister, don't you think so? Yi Lan's logic was very self-consistent. Yi Mei immediately nodded in agreement, yes, that's right. The teacher completely misunderstood. I didn't expect that what I said to him was completely different from what he understood. You have never shown in front of me that you are very good at mathematics, so how could I have known? So, this is actually a fortunate misunderstanding. Does Yi Chen believe it? He doesn't. These two sisters are clearly hiding something from him. And this matter is definitely related to him. But judging from the attitudes of the two sisters, they have no intention of revealing it. Oh well. Time will reveal everything. He will eventually find the reason and answer behind it. So that's how it is. It's really a fortunate misunderstanding. Yilan nodded sincerely, exactly. But, isn't this a good thing? Her eyes suddenly lit up, at least I know now that you, Yi Chen, are so amazing, even more amazing than my big sister. It took my big sister half a month to solve this problem. Yi Chen, you are really amazing. Yi Mei quickly added, yes. Although there were some errors in the middle, the result is good. Don't think about those unimportant things. Seeing that Yi Chen still had a look of wanting to continue to pursue the matter, Yi Mei kept thinking hard trying to figure out how to change the subject. She finally came up with an idea. By the way, Yi Chen, my birthday is coming up soon. Can I invite you to attend my birthday banquet? In fact, her birthday was still nearly two months away. But at this moment, Yi Mei didn't care about that. Your birthday? Yes. It's also my coming of age ceremony. When Yi Mei said this, a glint of darkness flashed in her eyes. Yes, in two months, she would finally come of age. Coming of age meant that she could make many decisions on her own and there was something even more important. As Yi Mei thought about the things that the four sisters had been wanting to do since they came back from their rebirth, her eyes became increasingly obscure. If it weren't for the age limit, that pair of scumbag parents was taken care of a long time ago. How could they have lived so peacefully until now? Just thinking about what they did to her and her three sisters made Yi Mei feel sick. At the same time, Yelan also sensed Yi Mei's feelings. 
She subtly took her hand and silently gave her strength. They were given a chance to live again by the heavens. Whatever they said, they would cherish it. That's why they have been suppressing their anger and not doing anything foolish to land themselves in jail. But after Yemei's birthday, everything was about to change. The eldest sister was now an adult. It meant that they could finally be free from those scumbag parents, no longer under their control. And if Yechen could witness such a glorious moment, Yelan couldn't wait to speak up. Yes, Yechen, my eldest sister's birthday is in two months. Do you want to come and join us? Yechen had been a little absent-minded just now. He had forgotten that Yemei had skipped a grade in school, while he had been delayed for two years due to work before starting school. So, Yemei had just become an adult. This adult birthday was indeed very important. Yechen immediately agreed, sure. A smile involuntarily appeared on Yemei's face. Then it's settled. After the two sisters and Yechen parted ways, Yelan seemed lost in thought, as if she was in a trance. Yemei asked, what are you thinking? Yelan snapped out of it, after much internal struggle, she finally spoke up. Big sister, for your birthday, the third sister should come back, right? As soon as she said this, Yeme knew what Yelan was thinking. Just like when she first found out about Yechen's existence, she had kept his news from Yuzhu. Now the two sisters were very tacit, and they hadn't told Yuzhu about Yechen. There was no need to go into the twists and turns. Yeme was conflicted, I can't not tell her about this, and she can't not know. Yelan said, so the third sister will definitely come back. Then she will know that Yechen has appeared. If Yuzhu saw Yechen, then their relationship would definitely change. The two sisters fell silent for a while. Then Yelan raised an even more critical question. What about Yujia? Will she come back at that time? Since returning to this world, the name Yujia had become a taboo for the three sisters. To be honest, they really didn't know how to face her. Yujia had never let go of her hatred for Yechen. If she hadn't just returned as a little baby, she would have caused chaos long ago. Yeme's face also became extremely ugly. Over the years, although Yujia hadn't appeared in front of them, she had never stopped causing trouble for them. They both knew in their hearts. They couldn't go back to the past. Yeme said coldly, I won't let Yujia cause trouble. Absolutely not. Time always flies by. Yeme thought she still had a long way to go before her birthday, but in reality, it was almost here. Yeme had been very busy during this time. Not only with the preparations for her coming-of-age ceremony, but also secretly arranging things that could only be implemented after the ceremony. And in this world, there was someone who cared even more about her coming-of-age ceremony than Yeme. That person was Yujia. On her slightly immature face, there was a vicious and cruel look that didn't match her innocence and age. She looked at the calendar on her phone and a cruel smile appeared on her face. I didn't expect that Yeme would be coming of age so soon. Yeme, don't think I don't know what you're thinking. All these years, everything you've secretly arranged, isn't it all to bring down our father and mother? However, how can I let you have your way? Yi Ju suddenly clenched her phone tightly. Her expression was extremely terrifying. Anyone who saw the expression on her face at this moment would feel horrified and terrified. After all, Yi Ju still had the face of a child. A child's face. How could there be such a substantial resentment and malice on her face? How chilling it was. Yi Mei. You and your two sisters have deprived me of everything. Her chest suddenly heaved violently, her breathing became extremely rapid. Just thinking about the things her three sisters did to her when she was young, she wished they would die like Yi Chen. You want to become the true and only president of the Yi family after you come of age. Dream on. I will never let you achieve it. Yi Ju opened her phone and quickly made a call. As a grand coming-of-age ceremony, Yi Mei naturally invited many people to attend. For others, the invitations were sent by the butler. Only Yi Chan received a personal invitation from Yi Mei. The pale pink envelope carried a faint fragrance, the same scent that Yi Mei always wore. Yi Chen, you must come to my birthday party. Yi Chen accepted the invitation, I will. Yi Mei left with a joyful smile, leaving only a faint lingering fragrance in the air. Gao Zhe suddenly appeared from nowhere, oh my god. It's actually Ye's campus bell who personally delivered the invitation to you. Envy and jealousy. I heard that. Ye's campus bell's birthday party is going to be held on a yacht. It's said that many celebrities will also attend. I really want to go and see. But Yi Chen, what gift are you preparing for Ye's campus bell? What gift can Yi Chen prepare? I think even a 10 yuan jewelry set from a street stall is the best thing he can come up with. The last person to speak was none other than the long silent Qin Ji. Since the failed attempt to show off at Huan Chang, he had become a transparent person, quiet as a chicken for a long time. It was unclear what had gotten into him now. Suddenly, he started to confront Yi Chen again. Cao Zhe was the first to be unable to bear it, Xin Ji? What do you mean by that? 
Who do you look down on? Sheen she gave Gao Zhe a sinister look. Without saying a word, Gao Zhe suddenly felt a jump in his heart and retreated in fear. What had he eaten to dare to confront young master Qin like this? Yi Chen was also puzzled. Qin Ji had been quiet and well behaved for so long, why would he suddenly pick a fight again? What was wrong with him? After the incident at Huan Chang, Qin Ji did intentionally weaken his presence. He was truly afraid. Afraid that Yi Chen was really some kind of behind the scenes big shot. Who would mess with their Qin family? But after all this time, coupled with what he had heard a few days ago, Qin Ji suddenly realized. Yi Chen was just a fart behind the scenes big shot. He was very clear about what he had heard from Yun Mei's father, his future father-in-law. That Huan Chang had a cooperative relationship with their family. And it seemed to be quite deep. So at that time, those classmates really guessed it right. That so-called boss wasn't showing respect to Yi Chen at all. He was really showing respect to Yi Mei. Yi Mei. She was the one they wanted to flatter. Yi Chen just happened to be standing next to Yi Mei and was pretending to be that big shot. And after observing for so many days, Yi Chen didn't look like he had any money at all. He must be pretending. Yi Chen, why are you silent? Is it because you feel guilty? Yi Chen, I'm just thinking, did your mother raise the placenta when she gave birth to you? Xin Ji didn't understand at first. What do you mean? However, a second later, he understood what kind of insult it was. Fuck you, Yi Chen. The hot-tempered young master Qin couldn't stand it and immediately wanted to swing his fists at Yi Chen. However, in the end, he thought of the words of his future father-in-law and forcibly held back. Even a hint of smugness appeared in his eyes. Mixed with his hateful and resentful gaze, his expression became extremely distorted. Humph. Just a jumping clown. This young master will tolerate you today. I won't bother with a dog like you. Yi Chen. Don't think that just because Yun Mei likes you, you can act arrogantly. You really think of yourself as someone important. You're just a nobody, someone I can easily crush with my fingers. And let me tell you. On Yun Mei's birthday, my future father-in-law will publicly announce. Yun Mei will be engaged to me. Xin Ji's eyes revealed a triumphant joy, Yi Chen. You're just a clown. The one who will finally get Yun Mei is only me. Xin Ji. Ha ha ha. Xin Ji's voice was not quiet at all. Almost the entire class heard it. Everyone widened their eyes. What? Yi, the school flower, is going to be engaged to young Master Qin. Is it true? I must have woken up in the wrong way this morning. This news sounds shocking, but I strangely feel like it's expected. After all, the engagement between Yi, the school flower, and young Master Qin is no longer a secret. I just didn't expect it to actually lead to an engagement. In his ecstatic state, Qin Ji heard all these discussions in his mind. He felt even more elated. The school's male students all admired the goddess, and she was about to become his plaything. He could do whatever he wanted with her. What could be more exciting and proud than this? Yi Chen. Just a person of no significance. Nothing to care about. He raised his chin high, wanting to see the shock, sadness, guilt, or fear on Yi Chen's face. However, there was none of that. Yi Chen's face remained cold and indifferent. This was not what he wanted to see. Qin Shi gritted his teeth, Yi Chen. Are you so shocked and upset that you've become dumb? Can't even speak. Yi Chen finally spoke, and with just one sentence, he shattered Qin Ji's heart. So you also think that Yi, the school flower, likes me? Qin Ji, damn. This wasn't the answer he wanted to hear. Yi Chen, you can keep acting tough here. There's still a week until Yun Mei's birthday. I'm looking forward to it. Qin Ji emphasized, you will come to attend my engagement ceremony with Yun Mei. As soon as he finished speaking, a beautiful voice retorted. Nonsense. How come I don't know that my elder sister is going to be engaged to you? It was Yi Lan who had returned. Behind her was Yi Mei, with a dark expression. How come I don't know that I'm going to be engaged to you? Xin Shi suddenly panicked. Oh no. Just to provoke Yi Chen earlier, he accidentally let slip this news. His future father-in-law had warned him. This was supposed to be a surprise for Yun Mei. It should not have been revealed before her birthday. But the words had already been spoken. How could Qin Ji not have to face the consequences? He disregarded his future father-in-law's warning and directly revealed the truth. Yun Mei, this is a surprise prepared by your father, so he didn't tell you, but told me first. I was just too happy, so I spoke too soon. Surprise! The shock in Yi Mei's heart was earth-shattering. How could she not know about this? That despicable couple. They had secretly arranged this for her. However, at this moment, she couldn't care about all that. Yi Mei immediately refuted, Qin Ji. I absolutely will not marry you. And I definitely will not be engaged to you. Xin Ji, who had been worried about Ji Mei's anger and secret joy, suddenly lost all of it. Yun Mei, what are you saying? 
Don't be ridiculous. Ye may said each word, I'm not being ridiculous. You heard me clearly, I will never marry you even if I die. They have no right to decide what I should do. She turned to look at Ji Chen, with a hint of urgency in her expression, Yi Chen, believe me, I would never marry someone who has insulted and hurt you. I won't like someone you don't like. Implied meaning, you decide who I can like. Yi Mei's logic was very simple. Yi Chen was her most respected and beloved brother. Naturally, she would not be with those who insulted and bullied her brother. Xin Ji's face turned pale and blue. Yi Mei's words were like rubbing his face on the ground and repeatedly slapping him. Slap, slap, slap. Seeing the meaningful looks of the surrounding classmates, Xin Ji angrily said, Yun Mei, you can't make the decision on this matter. Anyway, her father was firmly on his side. He left in a hurry after saying this. He didn't want to stay and see the expressions of the people around. Yilan, seeing Yi Mei's flushed face, kept comforting her. Sister, don't be angry. He won't succeed. Yi Mei forced herself to calm down. After calming down, she realized something was wrong. They couldn't have suddenly thought about my engagement to Qin Ji. There must be someone. The two sisters looked at each other and understood in that instant. It's her. It's only Yi Ju. She would think every day about how to cause trouble for them. Because she knew very well that if the Yi group really fell into Yi Mei's hands, she would be completely finished. Because of what happened that day. Qin Ji returned home with a still grim face. This caught Qin Hai's attention. Who made you like this? Why do you have such an expression? Dad. Didn't you say that Ji Mei would be engaged to me as soon as she came of age, and she would definitely marry me? Of course. But today she actually said she would never marry me. Xin Shi felt no shame at all and directly told Qin Hai about what happened today. Qin Hai frowned, the Yi Chen you mentioned, is he the one from Huan Chang at that time? Xin Ji had also mentioned Huan Chang to him. Xin Shi nodded, yes, it's him. He was angry, I misunderstood last time. They didn't care about his face at Huan Chang, they cared about the Yi families. Yi Chen is just a poor guy. He shamelessly sticks to Yi Mei all day. He said a lot. Xin Hai listened quietly, his tone indifferent, there's no need to be angry about such a person, he's just a nobody. Since he wants to attend Yun Mei's engagement banquet with you, let him come. Let him know the difference between a nobody and us. Xin Ji knew his father's temper very well. Now he understood his father's implied meaning and couldn't help but start looking forward to it. When the banquet started, what could this poor guy Yi Chen bring out? Time passed in the blink of an eye. There was only one day left until Yi Mei's birthday. Yi Chen finished his work and hurried to school. As soon as he arrived in the classroom, he heard his classmates discussing Yi Mei's birthday. Tomorrow is Ye's big campus flower's birthday. I can finally see my bamboo goddess. Right. Yi Zhu. Ye's big campus flower's birthday, she will definitely come back. Then tomorrow, won't I be able to see the three big goddesses on stage together? Yi Chen felt a little dazed. Time passed so quickly? Tomorrow is actually Yi Mei's birthday. He had been busy during this time. He had actually forgotten about buying a birthday gift for Yi Mei. He regretted it for a moment, quickly sent a message to Lei Xiao to prepare a birthday gift for the female classmate. After arranging it, he focused on their conversation again. He had just caught a new name. Yi Zhu. He couldn't help but ask, who is Yi Zhu? Gao Zhe looked at him in amazement, Yi Chen. Where did you come from? You didn't even know about Yi Dashiao's three sisters. That's Yi Zhu. Yi Zhu. Yi Chen felt the name was familiar, but upon careful thought, he couldn't capture anything from his mind. Who is she? Gao Zhe was truly drunk. He excitedly explained to Yi Chen, the recent hit TV series, The Revelation of Tangua, the actress who plays the main character's sister. Do you know? Yi Chen had a vague impression, mainly because this series had been popular in the class recently, and he occasionally glanced at it. Whom? She? She is Yi Dashiao's third sister, Yi Lan's twin sister, Yi Zhu, our national sister. Even though Yi Chen still had a cold expression, they were very excited and continued to explain. Don't be fooled by Zhu's young age. She is talented in acting. Do you know? When she was five years old, she was nominated for the Best Newcomer Award. At 10, she could already play the leading role. At 13, she won the Best Actress Award. Yi Zhu, truly a forever goddess. So amazing. After listening, Yi Chen finally understood why they were so excited. Their dream goddess was coming, and she was the goddess they could only see on TV in the past. They couldn't help but be excited. However, Yi Chen's expression changed slightly. You just said she has three sisters, so where is the last sister? The crowd suddenly fell silent. It was Gao Zhe who scratched his head and said, Um, actually, we don't know. Yi Chen? Gao Zhe, this youngest sister is very mysterious. 
We have never seen her, and Yi Xiaohua has never mentioned her, so we don't know who she is. Is it so strange? Are their relationships bad? Or, Yi Chen suddenly remembered a name, Yi Ju. When the two sisters were talking, they inadvertently mentioned this name, and from the reactions of the last two sisters, they seemed to avoid this name, so, it must be because of their bad relationship. At the same time, at the airport, a group of fans crowded around the airport pickup area, each holding a large sign. Although the words on the signs were different, the key core name was the same, Yi Zhu. They were there to pick up Yi Zhu, her fans. As they became increasingly impatient, the front of the line suddenly moved. Shu's sister. I see Zhu's sister. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Shu's sister is coming out. What what? Where is she? Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Make way, I want to see too. Amidst the fluctuating voices, a graceful figure finally appeared in the sight of the crowd. She had shoulder-length hair with bangs, and a delicate and pure face. It was the long-awaited Yi Zhu. When Yi Zhu appeared, the entire airport erupted in cheers. The continuous shouts of her name were like those for a superstar. She waved to the fans, and the screens grew even louder. The security personnel did their best to escort her back to the nanny car. After the car door closed, the manager sighed deeply. Your fans are really crazy. The noise just now almost overturned the airport. A new assistant chimed in, yes. Those people were pushing so hard that I almost lost my shoes. I've never seen such a scene before. The manager said, Ju's acting is so good. There will definitely be more fans in the future. You have to get used to it quickly. Yi Zhu sat beside them, listening to their intentional or unintentional flattery, and just smiled lightly without saying a word, because she knew very well that she was completely cheating. It's all because of the foundation laid by Yi Chen in the previous life, coupled with so many years of acting experience, that she has been able to come to this point today. Yi Chen. Yi Zhu's eyes looked through the car window, not knowing where to look. After returning from rebirth, they changed the plan for the scum parents to adopt Yi Chen. They haven't been able to see Yi Chen again. It's been so many years, and I don't know where he is. Zhu, 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 what are you thinking? Snap out of it. Yi Zhu came to her senses, huh? What's wrong? The agent held a phone, looking very excited. Guess what message I just received? She couldn't wait, and before Yi Zhu could guess, she said, It's an invitation from the screenwriter Quang Zhou. He's interested in you. He wants you to be the leading actress in his movie. Quang Zhou, Yi Zhu knew him. In the previous life, there were actually two well-known screenwriters in the entertainment industry. The scripts of these two screenwriters are classics as soon as they are released. And they are blockbuster classics. One is Yi Chen's pseudonym, 12. The other is Quang Zhou. Quang Zhou is also an exceptionally stunning screenwriter. Unfortunately, in the previous life, he met Yi Chen. With Yi Chen's presence, he could only forever be second best. A gem cannot shine if it is not polished. Quang Zhou has always been suppressed, and has long harbored resentment and jealousy towards Yi Chen. The two openly clashed in the industry. Although at that time it was Quang Zhou unilaterally against Yi Chen. Quang Zhou even declared that actors in his scripts absolutely cannot have acted in Yi Chen's scripts. So in the previous life, Yi Zhu never acted in Quang Zhou's scripts. In this life, Yi Zhu didn't hesitate, and said directly, help me decline it. No need to think, you will definitely agree, I will send you the script now. What were you saying just now? The agent, speaking to herself, suddenly froze halfway through. Did she just imagine it? She actually heard Yi Zhu refuse. Yi Zhu, I just said help me decline it, no need to look at the script, I won't take it. The agent went completely crazy, Zhu. What are you saying? Do you know who Quang Zhou is? He is the number one gold medal screenwriter in the industry. All of his scripts are blockbusters. And each one is a classic. He hasn't personally written a script for three years. This is the script he has written again in three years. Do you know what it means for you to play the leading role in this movie? It's all kinds of status elevation for you. And you actually refuse. The agent went crazy explaining a bunch of information about Quang Zhou to Yi Zhu. In short, in a nutshell. It's just that Quang Zhou is extremely awesome. Refusing his script is equivalent to losing a Best Actress award right in front of your eyes. Yi Zhu remained very calm. He's not. Agent, what do you mean he's not? Yi Zhu, he's not the most talented gold medal screenwriter. The most talented gold medal screenwriter, and the eternal mythological number one in the industry, is Yi Chen. The agent laughed angrily. If he's not, then who is? Yi Zhu pursed her lips. She couldn't say it. She couldn't say it. The trajectory of this lifetime has completely changed. Yi Chen did not, as in the previous life, put on the pseudonym of 12 to ensure her longevity in the entertainment industry. There is no 12 screenwriter at all now. Yi Chen, where are you now? 
If you are here, you would definitely be the top screenwriter in the industry. And with your acting skills, you would definitely be a more dazzling presence than me. The Peer The wind is clear and the sky is bright. Yi Mei, as the birthday star of this occasion, didn't have to stand on the pier to greet everyone. But she came. Everyone thought she was waiting for her third sister, Yi Zhu. Only she knew that she was waiting for Yi Chen. Why hasn't Yi Chen arrived yet? Did he forget? Yi Lan, impossible, I reminded him today. Sister, you don't need to be so nervous. If he promised to come, he will definitely come. Yi Mei responded, trying to force herself to relax. Just then, there was suddenly a commotion in the crowd. The two sisters vaguely heard a familiar name. When they turned their heads, they indeed saw a familiar figure walking towards them in the distance. It was Yi Zhu. Yi Zhu also noticed them at the same time. A smile involuntarily appeared on her face, and her pace quickened slightly. Big sister. Second sister. Yi Zhu has been busy with the play and has been in the crew all this time. So, it had been almost half a year since she last saw her sisters. Seeing her two sisters again at this moment, she felt genuine joy from the bottom of her heart. Third sister. Third sister. The three sisters reunited and embraced each other. Yi Zhu, who had always been quiet and reserved, was now completely lively. She held their hands and talked a lot. Finally, realizing that she had said too much, she felt embarrassed and stopped. Sorry, big sister, second sister, did I talk too much? Why aren't you saying anything? The two sisters shook their heads at the same time and said in unison, No, we were just listening to you. Yi Zhu felt that something was off with them at this moment, but she couldn't figure out what it was. She changed the subject, okay, but, big sister, second sister, don't stand outside anymore. It's so windy outside, you might catch a cold. Let's go inside first. The two sisters were a bit hesitant. They weren't really eager to go inside at this moment, as they were still waiting for Yi Chen. Yi Zhu, being a popular actress, naturally noticed their subtle expressions. Big sister, second sister, are you standing here not to wait for me, but for someone else? Yi Zhu, understanding her two sisters, immediately guessed it. The two sisters also knew very well that they couldn't hide it for too long. After all, Yi Chen was about to arrive. Yi Mei decided to tell the truth. However, just as she was about to speak, someone interrupted her. Yan Mei, are you standing here specifically waiting for me? The person was Qin Ji. He had a surprised smile on his face, and Qin Hai was standing next to him. Yi Zhu was still unaware that Yi Mei had already fallen out with the Qin family, and politely greeted, Uncle Qin. Qin Hai responded. Xin Xu was immersed in the joy of Yun Mei actually waiting for him outside, and didn't notice the obvious coldness in her eyes. Yun Mei, I'm here now, let's go in together. Yi Mei directly said coldly, the person I'm waiting for is not you. Not me? Then who are you waiting for here? Xin Xu suddenly thought of something. Don't tell me the person you're waiting for here is Yi Chen. Yi Chen. Yi Xu reacted even faster than Yi Mei. Who were you just talking about? Yi Chen. He's here. And he's coming over. Her astonishment and joy at this moment couldn't be suppressed. Xin Ji, you also know Yi Chen. What's the deal with these three sisters? How do they all seem to know Yi Chen? I seem to have heard someone calling my name just now. A deep male voice sounded behind the crowd. It was indeed Yi Chen, along with other classmates from the class. They had come over together. When the classmates saw Yi Zhu again, they were extremely excited. Oh my god, it's really Yi Zhu. She's really here. Sister Ju looks just as beautiful as she does on TV. What are you saying? She's even more beautiful in person than on TV, okay? Almost everyone here was a fan of Yi Zhu. It was because she was really popular. The TV shows she starred in covered all age groups. Everyone knew her, and everyone loved her. How could they not be excited to be able to get close to their idol at this moment? But at this moment, the person who made everyone's hearts race was Yi Chen. The moment he appeared, all of Yi Zhu's attention was captured by him. Yi Chen. It's really Yi Chen. Her heart couldn't help but start pounding. It's been more than 10 years. She finally gets to see him again. Yi Chen. Yi Zhu's inner excitement must have burned all rationality. The accumulated emotions of longing over the past decade erupted like a geyser. She couldn't contain her excitement and rushed towards Yi Chen, then hugged him tightly. Her voice trembled, with a hint of caution, brother. Yi Zhu's body trembled slightly. The person she was hugging now. It wasn't the cold, pale, and thin body from her past life. It was a warm, breathing person with a healthy complexion. Yi Chen, who was still alive. I finally see you again. Compared to Yi Zhu's excitement, Yi Chen was completely stunned. Yi Zhu's voice just now was very soft. If it weren't for Yi Chen being so close, he wouldn't have heard it. She called him brother. But, what brother? When did he have a sister? 
Although it was just a glimpse, he still clearly saw the person in his arms. She looked 80% like Elon. It was highly likely that she was his twin sister, Yi Zhu. So, how could this national sister suddenly hug him and call him brother? Yi Zhu's actions also shocked everyone. What's going on? Who is this young man? Why is Yi Zhu hugging him? And why does Yi Zhu look so excited? Damn. When did Ji Chen meet Yi Zhu? What's going on? No. My goddess Xu is now hugging someone else. Why isn't it me? Yilan was the first to react and quickly pulled Yi Zhu away. Third sister. What are you doing? Yi Zhu was pulled away, and her senses returned. She noticed the gazes of the people around her and realized what she had just done. She actually hugged Yi Chen in front of so many people. This was an extremely bold move for her. Yi Zhu's face turned bright red. Her pure little face now had a blush, making her look even more fresh and elegant. She stammered to explain to Yi Chen, I, I was just excited. She remembered. At this moment, Yi Chen was not actually adopted by their parents. So strictly speaking, Yi Chen was not their brother. She suddenly hugged him and called him brother. It probably scared Yi Chen. Yi Chen's face looked strange. Do I look like your brother? Otherwise, how else to explain what just happened? Yi Zhu didn't answer, and it was Qin Ji who answered the question. He had a sarcastic smile on his face. Yi Chen, did you not wake up this morning? You? Their brother. The Yi family only has four sisters, and no other brothers. Even if you want to establish a relationship, this is not the way to do it. Hilarious. Brother. Yi Zhu's brother was called out very softly. Only the two of them heard it. No one else did. The two sisters looked shocked. Indeed. It was a very correct decision not to inform the third sister about Yi Chen's news. They were still hesitant and didn't dare to directly call Yi Chen brother. But as soon as the third sister arrived, she directly hit a home run. Right into the goal. She directly called Yi Chen brother. No. They couldn't be inferior. They also had to quickly call Yi Chen brother. But before they could, they were interrupted. It was the steward sent by Yi Jian. The guests had all arrived. He asked them to go in and attend to the guests. It was not the time to confront publicly. Yi Mei could only pull the twin sisters away. Qin Ji also followed Qin Hai and left. A group of people left with a cheer, and Gao Zhe finally managed to get close to Yi Chen. Yi Chen, tell me, what is the relationship between you and my sister, Xu Shen? Why is she so happy to see you? Yi Chen rolled his eyes at him. Without a word, he walked straight in. Ask me? Then who should I ask? But, brother, Yi Zhu definitely couldn't have just been confused for a moment, or mistaken me for someone else, and called me brother. So, what's really going on here? When Yi Chen walked in, Yi Mei and Yi Jian were standing together. Yi Chen looked at Yi Jian, furrowing his brow slightly. This person, why does he feel familiar? It feels like I've seen him somewhere, but upon careful recollection, I can't figure it out. Yi Mei's birthday banquet finally officially began. But in fact, it was more like a gathering of connections and networking between people. Yi Mei's birthday was just an excuse, the important thing was to meet more people and expand her network through this banquet, gain more cooperation opportunities and explore more markets. Yi Chen had no interest in any of this, so he found a seat in the corner closest to him. Yi Mei had been pretending to be polite with Yi Jian for a long time, and finally found the opportunity to get rid of him. The first thing she wanted to do was to find Yi Chen, but as soon as she took a few steps, she was stopped by Qin Ji. Yan Mei, happy birthday. Have you received the gift I gave you? Yi Mei was not interested in his gift at all, but just to avoid his continued entanglement, she casually replied, Yes, I received it. Qin Shi stopped her again, Really? But why do I see that you're not excited at all? I picked that gift for you for a long time, it's something you'll definitely like. Yi Mei noticed that he was still blocking her, and her expression turned cold, her tone becoming impatient, Move aside. Qin Ji's expression changed suddenly, You don't even know what I gave you, do you? He noticed Yi Mei's gaze, which was on Yi Chen, I thought you were in a hurry to go somewhere. Turns out you wanted to go see that poor guy. Yi Mei's eyes turned cold, who are you calling a poor guy? Qin Ji, watch your mouth. No matter how much Qin Ji tried to please her, he couldn't bear being belittled repeatedly. His tone also turned sour, isn't it true? Why do you always defend him? Yi Mei, you are going to marry me. I've given you face time and time again. Don't give me face. Yi Mei replied, then let me tell you. Don't dream of it. I will never marry you. After saying that, she wanted to go to Yi Chen, but in the end, she didn't achieve her goal. Yi Jian didn't know when he noticed she was gone and called her over. Yi Mei was not in a position to confront him right now. She could only suppress her anger and walk back to his side. After watching her go, Xin Shi turned his head and found that Yi Chen was no longer in the corner. 
he had stood up and seemed to be heading to the restroom. Xinji narrowed his eyes, called a few of his brothers, and followed Yi Chen. After the group entered the restroom, they locked the door directly. Then they surrounded Yi Chen. Yi Chen seemed completely unaffected by their pressure, and very casually washed his hands before speaking slowly, Young Master Qin, what do you want to do? What do I want to do? Xin Shi smirked, I want to give you a drink of golden nectar. He grabbed a nearby vase, threw off the flowers inside, and then publicly took off his pants. Yi Chen. He never expected that Qin Ji had such a hobby, but soon, Yi Chen knew what he was up to. He poured into the vase. After he finished, he had the others do the same. The vase quickly filled up with a bottle of golden liquid. After doing all this, Qin Ji said fiercely, hold Yi Chen down for me. I'm going to make him drink it. The group immediately reached out and held Yi Chen down, while Qin Ji walked over to him with a wicked smile. Yi Chen. I'll make you go crazy. Just as his hand was about to touch Yi Chen, Yi Chen spoke. I don't want to deal with you, but you're pushing it. He moved. With a speed that caught everyone off guard and an irresistible force, he directly knocked down the person who had been restraining him. Xin Ji was scared and took several steps back. When he reacted, Yi Chen had already broken free completely. His eyes coldly fixed on him. Xin Ji, upon meeting Yi Chen's gaze, felt a chill as if he was being stared at by a wild beast. His voice trembled as he spoke. What are you all lying on the ground for? Get up and hold him down. Unfortunately, Yi Chen had struck the most sensitive nerve points, and they couldn't get up. He reached out and took the vase from Qin Ji's hand. He weighed it in his hand, and it was quite heavy. This golden dew, it would be a waste not to drink it. Just a simple sentence, but it sent a shiver down Qin Ji's spine, as if he had been targeted by a wild beast. He nervously swallowed and took a step back. Yi Chen, what do you want to do? At this moment, Yi Chen had completely lost his usual gentle demeanor. His face was like that of a demon. Just looking at it made people feel weak. Qin Shi understood what Yi Chen wanted to do. Yi Chen, you can't do this. I am the only heir of the Qin family. The mere Qin family, do you really think I can't handle it? Yi Chen directly grabbed Qin Ji's chin, forcing his mouth open. Then, Yi Chen took the vase filled with golden dew and poured it directly into Qin Ji's mouth. Yi Chen's method was very skillful. Qin Ji's throat was forced open, and he could only continue to swallow. And just as he felt nauseous and wanted to vomit, Yi Chen had already dodged to the side. Ugh! Qin Shi spat the golden liquid onto the ground. A difficult to describe smell filled the air. Qin Ji knelt on the ground, clutching his throat, continuously retching. Just the thought of the liquid that Yi Chen had poured down made his head spin, and he wanted to vomit to death. There was still some left in the vase. Yi Chen looked at the others lying on the ground. As soon as his gaze touched them, they all shuddered and quickly moved away, afraid of being noticed by Yi Chen. Yi Chen said, Young Master Qin, do you enjoy the golden do you brood yourself? Ugh. Qin Ji desperately clawed at his throat and also threatened, Yi Chen, I will never let you off. Yi Chen gently shook the vase. It seems you haven't had enough. Qin Shi's pupils dilated instantly. The desire to survive made him instantly abandon his so-called dignity and beg for mercy. Yi Chen, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Please don't come again. If he drank again, he would die. At this moment, Yi Chen was like a demon in the world. But there's still so much left. We can't waste it. Qin Shi kept shrinking back, suddenly looking at his brothers beside him. It's them. They instigated me to bring you here. The group of brothers did not expect Qin Ji to suddenly betray them. Damn. It was you who said you wanted to teach him a lesson, and we just helped you figure it out. And we only wanted to drag him into the bathroom and beat him up. The idea of this golden do is yours, and has nothing to do with us. In the face of absolute force, where was the brotherly love? Of course, it was better for others to suffer than for themselves. Despite so many people, not a single one dared to step forward to stop Yi Chen. They could only watch as Yi Chen poured all the liquid into Qin Ji's mouth. Just the thought of the liquid, which each of them had contributed to, made their stomachs churn. Yi Chen threw the empty vase on the ground, and his eyes were like those of a dead man. This is the last time. If it happens again, I will make the entire Qin family bury you. He really didn't like to get angry easily. But that didn't mean he was someone who could be easily manipulated. An elephant doesn't care about the life or death of an ant. Yi Chen laughed. But the cold and despairing aura he had just exuded still lingered in the entire restroom. The group of people finally reacted. Xin Xiao, are you okay? Xin Shi directly grabbed the nearby vase and threw it at them. Get out. Yi Chen. Good. This grudge must be avenged. He must make Yi Chen unable to live, unable to die. Just as Yi Chen left the restroom, he saw Yi Jian pulling Yi Mei, standing together in the center of the stage. 
Yi Jin's face had a hint of redness, the banquet has come to this point, and I also want to announce some good news to everyone. The good news is that my eldest daughter, Yi Mei, will be married to Qin Ji, the child of the Qin family. Those who came here were all savvy business people, and they all knew the weight behind this announcement. This was equivalent to an earthquake in the business circle. Of course, amidst the shock, they didn't forget to applaud. After all, saving face was always necessary. I've heard that the Yi and Qin families are close. Now, congratulations are in order. Congratulations to both Mr. Yi and Mr. Qin. Yi Chen had already heard Qin Ji mention this news before. So when this news was officially confirmed, Yi Chen wasn't too surprised. It's just that. Looking at Yi Mei's pale face on the stage, Yi Chen couldn't help but feel a bit sorry for the beautiful girl. It was truly regrettable that such an outstanding girl would marry a guy like Qin Ji. But given Yi Mei's personality, would she really choose to marry him, despite her aversion? Of course not. Before the applause had even died down, she snatched the microphone. I will decide my own fate. What you said is complete nonsense. I absolutely won't listen to your request to marry Qin Ji. These sudden words from Yi Mei were like a torpedo, creating a deep pit in the sea. Everyone started to clamor. What's going on? Have the father and daughter become enemies? Wow, this is getting interesting. Yi Chen hadn't expected Yi Mei to be so resolute. The pity in his heart instantly turned into admiration. And on the stage, Yi Jian's expression was beyond description. What nonsense are you spouting, you rebellious girl? Yi Mei's expression was extremely indifferent. I'm absolutely not going to marry Qin Ji as you said. She had come of age today. She had endured her despicable parents for so long. And at this moment, she didn't want to continue enduring. Just then, Yi Lan, who had been missing for a long time, walked up to Yi Chen with Yi Zhu. During her absence, Yi Lan had been comforting Yi Zhu. Yi Zhu was finally no longer angry, but she also realized that the two sisters had secretly united to keep her from knowing that Yi Chen had appeared. They wanted to monopolize Yi Chen a little longer, but now, none of that mattered. What mattered was that she had also seen Yi Chen. Yilan spoke to Yi Chen, sister actually wanted to break ties with the scum Yi Jin a long time ago. She endured until this moment just to come of age. Yi Zhu's eyes were filled with anticipation. Once she comes of age, sister can lead us out of this family. Yi Chen didn't understand why the two sisters suddenly told him all this. But he was curious. You've always wanted to leave the Yi family? And from what they had just said, it seemed like they had been prepared for a long time, which was quite interesting. Yilan involuntarily recalled the past and clenched her fists. Gritting her teeth, she said, of course. Yi Zhu looked at Yi Chen, tears welling up in her eyes, it's only now that I understand how much suffering you've endured for us. I'm sorry. When they extracted their memories before, even though they said they saw Yi Chen being beaten, unless the needle is stuck in one's own body, one won't feel the pain. Even though they regretted it later, they couldn't empathize with Yi Chen. But after being reborn this time, they deeply understand and feel how severely Yi Chen was beaten at that time. Yi Lan gritted her teeth, silently apologizing to Yi Chen in her heart. Yi Chen felt a little puzzled by their gazes. It seemed as if he had done something very important for them in the past. Suffered for you? When? How come he didn't know? This sentence from Yi Chen made both sisters fall silent. They are now in a very conflicted emotional state. On one hand, they want Yi Chen to forget about the past life so that they can numb themselves and never have to apologize to Yi Chen. On the other hand, Yi Chen has forgotten everything, and naturally, they have lost the love they received from him in the previous life. This makes them feel very lonely. Yi Chen didn't wait for the sister's response. The confrontation between Yi Mei and Yi Jian had reached a tense state. It was clear that the banquet could not continue. Yi Jian suppressed all his anger and announced the end of the banquet. Even if he wanted to discipline this rebellious girl, it couldn't be done in front of so many people. The guests had originally planned to watch the excitement, but the show was cut short before it even began. As they left, everyone's eyes revealed a sense of regret. Naturally, Yi Chen also left. Although the twins wanted to follow Yi Chen, this matter was important. They could only watch Yi Chen leave from a distance. In an instant, only the Yi family remained. With no one else around, Yi Jian didn't even think and directly slapped Yi Mei. However, his hand was caught by Yi Mei in midair. She looked at Yi Jian fiercely, do you think you can still hit me now? Yi Jian's blood pressure rose in anger, you rebellious girl. Are you trying to defy me? If defying you means turning the world upside down, then I will do just that. Yi Mei had been waiting for this moment for too long. Yi Jian. I am an adult now. I am no longer the child you could beat and insult at will. It's only after this time that I can understand how much he has endured for us, how much suffering you have caused him. Yi Chen was only 8 years old at that time. 
he had no blood relation with the four sisters. After enduring all that suffering, it would be natural for him to develop a sense of revenge and want to inflict all the pain he suffered in his childhood on the four sisters. Just like her, after enduring this suffering, she couldn't help but resent Yi Jian, resent these despicable parents. But Yi Chen didn't. After enduring all this suffering, he didn't have the thought of seeking revenge on the four sisters. On the contrary, he did so much for them. He worked hard to teach them to excel in various fields. He gave them all his best, while he had nothing and was plagued by illness. Throughout his life, he could only live like a dirty mud, enduring the cold eyes of the four sisters and all the people in the world. Yi Jian, you deserve to die. Just thinking about those things again made Ji Mei's heart ache. Her eyes revealed intense resentment, so strong that it made Yi Jian take a step back. You, that gaze, it seemed as if she wanted to devour him. Ye Mei suddenly sneered, but from a certain perspective, we should also thank you. If it weren't for Ye Jian, this beast, adopting Ye Chin, we four sisters wouldn't have such a best, best brother in the world. Without Ye Chin, the fate of us four sisters would probably never have reached such heights. Ye Mei buried all her emotions and looked at Ye Jian with a look of contempt. I am already an adult, and you will never control me again. And my sisters. She turned around, holding one of them by the hand. Let's go. The twins also held Ye Mei's hand tightly and followed her, leaving quickly. Ye Jian was so angry that he could hardly catch his breath. Looking at Tian Xin, who had been silent from the beginning, he angrily kicked her. You've given birth to these good daughters. Tian Xin was kicked and wanted to cry but dared not, and hurriedly went forward to support Ye Jian. Honey, don't be angry. It's not good for your blood pressure to get too high. Ye Jian kicked her again at the words, his face terrifying, Are you cursing me to die? Tian Xin knelt on the ground, repeatedly kowtowing, I didn't. Honey, believe me, I never thought like that. Ye Jian's face darkened and he didn't know what he was thinking. At that moment, his phone suddenly rang. Dad. A sweet voice came from the phone, how's it going? Ye Jian's face twisted in anger, you're right. That little bitch never had any intention of forming an alliance or contributing to me. I raised her to be this big, and she has no gratitude at all. On the other end of the phone, Ye Ju held back her disgust, so, Dad, I am your most obedient daughter. Only I will unconditionally obey all your orders. Ye Jian remembered something and showed a little joy on his face, yes, that's right, only you are the most beloved daughter to dad. Ye Ju lowered her eyes and spoke softly, dad, big sister won't give up easily. Ye Jian's face twisted again, I won't let her stir up any trouble. I know dad, you can definitely do it. Ye Ju narrowed her eyes, a hint of resentment flashing in her pupils, but as a daughter, please allow me to worry for you and investigate more. In fact, big sister's rebellion is all because of one person. Ye Jian frowned. One person? Who? Ye Chin. Ye Ju exerted all her strength to keep her tone from revealing anything unusual. In fact, Big Sister is not really rebellious, but because of Ye Chin's instigation. He has set his sights on our Ye family's property, so he wants to use Big Sister as a bridge to seize our family's assets. Dad, you should be most careful of this person. Ye Ju spoke quietly, and she was full of resentment. She had been looking for Ye Chin for a long time, but she didn't expect Ye Mei to get ahead of her. It overturned all her original plans. She could only come up with new plans to continue to deceive Ye Jian. Ye Jian was an extremely selfish and narrow-minded person. When he heard Ye Ju say that this Ye Chin wanted to seize his family's assets, he exploded in anger. How dare he? Who is this Ye Chin? Ye Ju couldn't help but say, Dad, he is a complete villain. A creature that never deserves to stand in the sunlight, only fit to stay in the dung heap. Ye Jian narrowed his eyes, it seems like you have a personal grudge against him. Ye Ju immediately became alert. She knew Ye Jian's character very well. He could use others, but others couldn't use him. Ye Ju's tone immediately became obedient. Of course not, how could I know him? Dad, everything I said was what I found out through my investigation. Young Master Qin Ji also knows. The implication is that if he doesn't believe her, he can go ask Qin Ji. Ye Jian coldly replied, I will find out. Ye Ju knew she had said too much. Dad, if everything is okay, I'll hang up now? Yi Jian responded with a grunt. After Yi Ju hung up, he immediately called Qin Ji and asked about Yi Chen. Qin Ji hated Yi Chen so much that he even wanted to eat his flesh and bones, so naturally, he spoke more harshly than Yi Ju. After hanging up, Yi Jian had a rough idea in his mind. This person called Yi Chen was indeed trouble. Want to seize his family property? It depends on whether he has the ability. Yi Chen didn't know he was being targeted. But even if he knew, he wouldn't care. Just a Yi family. As soon as he arrived at school, he heard numerous classmates discussing. Did you guys hear? Shu Mimi is back. She also attended Yun Mei's birthday banquet yesterday. What? Really? 
I really want to see Zhu Mini's divine face. I knew their sisterly relationship was so good, of course she would come to Yun Mei's birthday banquet. I should have staked out outside yesterday. Once again, Yi Chen felt the explosive fame of Yi Zhu. Even in the classroom, the topic of discussion among classmates was Yi Zhu. And because they had seen her, the discussion became even more frenzied. Gao Zhe pulled Yi Chen over as soon as he saw him. Hey kid, I finally see you again. Yesterday at Yi Mei's birthday banquet, he only caught a glimpse of Yi Chen in a hurry. After that, he disappeared and no one knew where he went. This left Gao Zhe with a lot of questions in his mind. Now that he finally saw him, he could ask them. You little rascal. It's one thing to have a good relationship with Yun Mei and Lan. When did you start getting close to Zhu Mimi? I didn't even know. God knows how jealous he felt when he saw Yi Zhu's excited look at Yi Chen yesterday. Gao Zhe's words opened the floodgates, and the male classmates who were originally in small groups instantly surrounded him, as if they were interrogating him. Yes yes yes. The situation was too urgent yesterday. I have so many questions that I didn't get answers to. Yi Chen. Why are you so close to Zhu Mimi? Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Jealousy and envy. It has filled my heart. Yi Chen was speechless and puzzled. Why do I feel like you guys are more enthusiastic about Yi Zhu than her two sisters? Although Yi Mei and Yi Lan also seemed very popular, compared to Yi Zhu, their popularity was discounted. Gao Zhe was shocked to hear this. Yi Chen, do you not watch TV at all? Don't you know that Zhu Mimi has starred in many classic TV shows? Yes, yes, yes. She is the national sister. In terms of fame and everything else, she is the top among the three sisters. Who wouldn't want such a cute and lovable little sister? Although Yi Lan and Yi Zhu were twins, Yi Zhu was more delicate. With her straight bangs, smooth long hair, and her adorable face, she was a real-life Barbie doll. And she was a Barbie doll that was so lovable and evoked a protective instinct. So tell me, when did you meet Zhu Mimi? How did you get so close? Yi Chen coldly spat out four words to them, I don't know. He really didn't know. And he also felt puzzled. The attitudes of these three sisters towards him made him feel extremely strange. It was as if. It was as if they had known him for a long time. And he had done something that made them feel extremely guilty. While Yi Chen was puzzled, on the other side, Yi Zhu was being constantly harassed by her agent. Kuang Jiu is really sincere this time. He has already made it clear that as long as you agree, you will immediately be the leading actress in his movie and sign the contract immediately. Yi Zhu, this is a huge opportunity. How can you give up? The agent persuades vigorously, she really doesn't know which string Yi Zhu has gone wrong. After struggling to this height, she finally caught Kuang Jiu's attention. But when Kuang Jiu offered her an olive branch, she actually refused without even thinking. Yi Zhu really felt very helpless, sis, I already told you before, I won't accept his script. You don't need to mention this matter again, even if you mention it a hundred or a thousand times, I won't change my mind. The agent really went crazy and even pulled her hair, just because of what you said last time, that other gold medal screenwriter. Zhu, it's not what I said. The most gold medal screenwriter in the domestic screenwriting circle now is Kuang Jiu. No one can be more powerful than him. Are you believing some inexplicable person who said that his script is better than Kuang Jiu's, so you don't want to accept his script? It has to be said. The agent really guessed a little bit of the correct answer. However, unlike before, Yi Chen is not even in the screenwriting circle now. So Kuang Jiu didn't even know of his existence. The two naturally have not met. However, if Yi Chen really enters the screenwriting circle, the two are bound to clash again. Because Kuang Jiu is arrogant. But Yi Chen is the real gold medal screenwriter. Just as Yi Zhu was about to speak, the agent's phone rang. After seeing the caller's name on it, she was excited and thrilled. It's a call from Kuang Jiu. Oh my. Kuang Jiu actually called in person. It can be imagined how much he wants Yi Zhu to be the leading actress in his movie. Yi Zhu also didn't expect that Kuang Jiu actually called. She thought of a permanent solution. Sis, give me the phone. I'll take it. What do you want to do? You don't want to refuse in person, do you? Sis, will you give it to me or not? Yi Zhu looked soft and weak, but at this moment, her attitude was particularly firm. After struggling for a long time, the agent chose to give her the phone. After taking the phone, Yi Zhu directly answered the call. It was indeed a call from Kuang Jiu. His purpose was also very simple, getting straight to the point, Lu, have you told Zhu about filming the movie? What does she think? Hello, Kuang Jiu, I am Yi Zhu. Yi Zhu also didn't beat around the bush, I have already heard from my agent about your intention to cast me in the movie. I don't know how she replied to you, but my answer is, I won't accept. Kuang Jiu on the other end of the phone was silent for more than 10 seconds. Then he reacted, why? You haven't even read my script. And I'm not a fraud. 
Quang Jiu thought Yi Zhu refused because she thought he was a fraud. I know you're not a fraud, but I'm really sorry. Regardless of the script, I won't accept. Yi Zhu decisively refused, then returned the phone to Lu Xiaoting. As soon as Lu Xiaoting put the phone to her ear, she kept apologizing. I'm really sorry. Teacher Quang Jiu, she was unwilling to accept, I have no way either. Why? I think you should know clearly about my position in the screenwriting circle. He is the first gold medal screenwriter in the screenwriting circle. He was actually rejected right after offering an olive branch. This is simply the biggest joke in the world. Lu Xiaoting walked away with the phone, making sure Yi Zhu wouldn't hear, then spoke, Teacher Kuang Zhou, you also know that my child is young. I actually suspect she was deceived by someone else. Someone said there's a writer who's even better than you, and then tricked her into directing the play written by that writer. What? Kuang Zhou laughed when he heard this, who dares to speak such nonsense? Who dares to say that her script is better than mine? Lu Xiaoting was equally puzzled and helpless, I don't know, but now she's completely absorbed in that unknown little scriptwriter. Kung Jiu, she really didn't mean to reject your script, she was just deceived. Lu Xiaoting left a way out for both parties. Kung Jiu really didn't want to let Yi Zhu off the hook. This time, his script was inspired by Yi Zhu. If she didn't direct it, the script would be meaningless. Suddenly, he thought of something. Yi Zhu must not have directed my script. That's why she has this idea. As long as she has read my script and directed it, no one can resist the charm of the characters in my script. Recently, a variety show called Screenwriter and Actor approached me, you make her participate. He was 100% confident. As long as Yi Zhu participated in this show and directed his script, she would definitely not refuse him again. Lu Xiaoting also didn't expect Kung Jiu to be so persistent with Yi Zhu. It seemed like he couldn't do without her. She naturally welcomed it. Kung Jiu, you can rest assured. I will make sure she participates in this show. The two quickly reached an agreement. After hanging up the phone, Lu Xiaoting couldn't help but smile involuntarily. Other actors and artists usually begged other screenwriters or directors to choose them. Where was her artist like that? It was the screenwriter who knelt down to ask her to direct. Although this was her thought, when Lu Xiaoting returned to Yi Zhu, she had a helpless look on her face. The script from Kung Jiu's side has been rejected. Yi Zhu also knew that this time it was her stubbornness. Sorry, sis, for making you worry. Lu Xiaoting quietly began to set a trap. Since you know, then you absolutely cannot refuse the next show. What show? Screenwriter and actor. In order to prevent her from refusing, Lu Xiaoting deliberately reduced the presence of the word screenwriter. You also know that recently, there has been a lot of discussion about actors' acting skills. That's why this show is to let the public know about actors' acting skills. This time, you can't refuse me again, right? When Yi Zhu heard the name of this variety show, she was still a bit conflicted. But since Lu Xiaoting had already said so, her guilty conscience prevailed, and she agreed, I promise to participate. However, in this way, she seemed to be able to take the opportunity to make a small request. By the way, sis, there's one more thing. Yi Zhu, with a gentle look, spoke, didn't you tell me last time that there's a movie that wants me to make a cameo? I can agree, but I have one request. I want to shoot at the school of my eldest and second sister. As long as the filming crew agrees to this, then I can participate in the cameo for this movie. Yi Zhu was different from her two sisters. Her focus was entirely on the entertainment industry now. There were many previously scheduled notices that couldn't be postponed. If she wanted to see Yi Chen, she could only do so through other means. Lu Xiaoting didn't know the twists and turns in her mind. When she knew that she was willing to make a cameo, she didn't care about anything else. This is just a small matter. I'll take care of it. Lu Xiaoting was very quick in this regard. She quickly contacted the director and explained the situation. Both parties quickly agreed, and the director immediately decided to go to their school for filming next week. When Lu Xiaoting told Yi Zhu this news, she couldn't help but be excited. Great. Next week, she would be able to see Yi Chen. Yi Zhu didn't tell anyone about this news. She wanted to surprise Yi Chen. Yi Chen felt that someone was tracking him. It was about 5 meters behind him on the left and right. By looking through the glass storefront of a nearby shop, he saw a total of 5 people tracking him. They were standing at different positions, directly blocking all the routes for Yi Chen to retreat. Although he didn't know who was tracking him, it was really interesting. Yi Chen sneered and deliberately chose an empty alley to walk into. As expected, as Yi Chen speculated, those who were originally tracking him quickly emerged from the shadows after there was no one nearby. One of them looked at him with a sneer. There's a road to heaven, yet you chose to come to hell. You are really a fool to run to a place where there is no one. You are seeking a dead end. Yi Chen stood calmly, who sent you? These people only had the aura of ordinary thugs, 
not like the assassins sent by the enemy. This meant that his true identity had not been exposed. You are going to die, why ask so many questions? Save your questions for the king of hell. They pulled out knives from their pockets and stabbed towards Yi Chen. They were fast, but Yi Chen's movements were even faster. In just a few minutes, these five people were lying on the ground in pain and agony. Yi Chen twisted one of their wrists and spoke with the same tone as before, I'll ask you again, who sent you? He still refused to speak. But when Yi Chen applied a little force, he shamefully confessed everything. Help! Let go! I'll tell you everything! Actually, I don't know the details. The only thing we know is that the employer's last name is Yi. Last name Yi? Yi Chen didn't hear any hint of lying in their tone. However, the only Yi family he knew was the three sisters. Could it be that the three sisters sent these people to kill him? Unconsciously, while he was thinking, his actions did not stop. He directly broke the person's wrist. Ah, big brother, I really told you everything, I really don't know anything else. While I'm in a good mood and haven't taken your lives, get out of here. When Yi Chen let go, these people immediately got up and ran away in fear. If they knew that they were hired to kill such a formidable opponent, they would never have taken on this task. Yi Chen made a phone call, Lei Xiao, help me check something. Ten minutes later, Yi Chen finally knew who the mastermind behind the scenes was. It was the father of the three sisters, Yi Jian. Strange, why would he want to target me? This answer made him feel extremely strange. Lei Xiao's voice was cold, Boss, this little Yi Jian from the Yi family actually dared to hire a hit on you. It's like having the heart of a bear and the courage of a leopard. Do you want me to go and take care of Yi Jian immediately? Yi Chen thought for a moment. It seemed that only Yi Jian was involved in this matter. The three sisters seemed to be unaware. And the three sisters had been good to him before. Out of respect for them, he was willing to spare Yi Jian's life for now. However, if he didn't do something about being targeted for assassination, wouldn't it be allowing others to look down on him? It seemed that he had been too passive for too long, allowing others to treat him as an enemy. No need to be ruthless, cutting off one hand is enough. Also, I want you to do one more thing. Yes, three sisters were not aware of his speculation. He wanted to make sure that the three of them were truly unaware. After giving the instructions, Yi Chen hung up the phone. Lei Xiao would naturally handle the rest. Yi Mei suddenly stood up from her chair. What did you say to me? You said that old man Yi Jian actually hired a hit to kill Yi Chen. Yes, miss. I overheard this incident by chance outside Yi Jian's study. Yi Mei's face turned extremely gloomy. She never expected that Yi Jian, the scum, would actually make a move on Yi Chen. I already know about this matter, you can go down first. Okay, miss. After the others left, Yi Mei quickly took out her phone. Her hand holding the phone couldn't help but tremble. She was afraid. Afraid that Yi Chen would really be harmed by that scum. Trouble. Yi Mei suppressed her fear and finally dialed Yi Chen's phone. Do 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 do. After three rings, the call was answered. Yi Mei? It was Yi Chen's voice. All the worries in Yi Mei's heart disappeared by half. Yi Chen, where are you now? Yi Chen casually replied, Me? Where else can I go besides home? Do you have something to tell me? You're at home? That's good. If you don't have anything to do today, don't go out again. Yi Chen raised an eyebrow. It seems that Lei Xiao has already started to act. Yi Mei's reaction did not surprise herself, but she still had to probe further. Is something wrong? Is it not suitable to go out today? In short, don't go out unless you have to. I have something to do, so I'll hang up first. Yi Mei quickly hung up the phone. She wanted to stop this matter before Yi Jian started to act. She didn't know that Yi Chen had already resolved it. Nor did she know that she learned this news from Yi Chen. Just as Yi Chen hung up Yi Mei's call, his phone rang again. This time the caller was Yi Lan. As soon as Yi Chen answered the phone, her tone was very urgent. Yi Chen, are you okay? Yi Chen, what's wrong with me? Yi Lan seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. Where are you now? Yi Chen replied exactly the same as Yi Mei, without changing a single word, me? Where else can I go besides home? Do you have something to tell me? You're at home? That's great. Do you have any plans to go out today? No. Are you asking me this because something happened? Is it not suitable to go out today? You're right, today I looked at the calendar and it says that there may be bloodshed if you go out today. So it's best to stay at home today and not go anywhere. Anyway, I didn't plan to go out today, so staying at home is fine. When Yilan finished speaking, she felt very uneasy inside because she felt it was far-fetched. But it seemed that Ji Chen really had no suspicion at all. He actually agreed. Yilan was overjoyed. That's settled then. After hanging up the phone, Yilan quickly made another call. Those two bitches want to harm my brother. I have to see if I allow it. Not long after Yi Chen hung up the call, his phone rang again. 
This time it was Yi Zhu. She asked the same question as the previous two sisters. Yi Chen also gave the exact same answer. But what she received was not the same answer as the other two sisters. Yi Zhu, Yi Jian wants to harm you. You must not go out today. Yi Chen, hmm? This was unexpected. Yi Zhu hurriedly explained, I know you may not believe me when I say this, but what I'm saying is true. Yi Jian, who is my nominal father, I don't know who has influenced him, wants to harm you. So to ensure your safety, you must not go out. Yi Chen, how do you know? Yi Zhu's words were interesting. She actually referred to that person as a nominal father. So she does not acknowledge him. Yi Zhu's voice sounded a bit conflicted, but she quickly became firm. I overheard it. I overheard that he wants to harm you. But don't worry, I will take care of this. I will definitely not let him harm you. The reactions of these three sisters were very interesting. But it was confirmed that these three sisters had nothing to do with this matter. It was done by Yi Jian alone. After hanging up the phone, Yi Mei went straight to find Yi Jian to settle the score. Before she arrived at the company, her subordinate called to tell her that Yi Jian had his arm broken and was taken directly to the hospital. What? Yi Mei was shocked. She hadn't even caused trouble for him yet. How did someone break Yi Jian's arm first? Yi Mei asked for the name of the hospital and headed there. She had just arrived at the hospital when she ran into the twins. Big sister, you're here too? So you both know, Yi Jian made a move on Yi Chen. I knew you both came for this. The three sisters came here to determine the truth of the matter. They didn't expect to run into each other. In that instant, their hearts were strangely connected, and they thought of the same thing. It looks like it was the older sister, or younger sister, who made the move. The three sisters jointly reached this conclusion and jointly decided to help each other hide this secret and not mention it again. So they tacitly did not discuss it further. Okay, let's not stand outside the hospital anymore, let's go in. Go and meet our nominal father. Yi Chen had just arrived at school and heard a group of people excitedly discussing. It is said that a film crew is coming to our school to shoot. So, does that mean we can see celebrities? Definitely. I wonder which film crew it is. I heard they are already on their way here. Yi Chen was not interested in this and let it go in one ear and out the other. He didn't know that at the same time, on the other side, Yi Zhu was very nervous and preparing. She had been waiting for this time for over a week. It felt like an eternity. After waiting so long, she had to show Yi Chen her most beautiful side. Lu Xiaoting saw her excitement and kept it in mind. She rarely saw such intense excitement in Yi Zhu, and always felt that she wasn't going to shoot a film, but was about to meet someone very important to her. Who could that person be? Could it be? The liar who deceived her, claiming to be the most talented scriptwriter with a gold medal. With a heart full of questions, they finally arrived at the school. When Yi Zhu got out of the nanny car, it caused a sensation. Wow! It's actually Sister Zhu! I didn't expect Sister Zhu to come to our school to shoot a drama. Ah, Sister Zhu, I love you. Just like a mouse loves rice. The director stood next to her and laughed. Zhu's popularity is as high as ever. She truly deserves to be the nation's sister. Yi Zhu smiled shyly, director, you're exaggerating. I just happen to be lucky enough to be liked by everyone. She looked towards the classroom where Yi Chen was. She couldn't wait. She couldn't wait to see Yi Chen. At this moment, the class teacher happened to walk into the classroom and announced the surprise that Yi Zhu had prepared early in the morning. I think everyone already knows that a film crew will be coming to our school these days, and our class has been lucky enough to be chosen as the shooting location. Even the crew said that as compensation for using our classroom, when they shoot scenes in the classroom, we can all stay here. Yi Chen was not excited at all. In simple terms, wasn't it just that they could be a background? They weren't even extras. In contrast to his calmness, others were full of excitement. I just saw Sister Zhu. So does that mean? I can play Sister Zhu's classmate later. Ah, this is definitely the luckiest day of my life. Sister Zhu chose our classroom, could it be because of Goddess Lan? Yes, yes, yes. It must be like that. After all, Goddess Lan is Sister Zhu's sister. Yilan not only did not feel happy, but felt a great crisis. Yi Zhu was too scheming. She thought that by being trapped in the film crew, she wouldn't have a chance to get close to Yi Chen. I didn't expect her to play this trick. Is she really here for her sister? She's clearly here for Yi Chen. Oh, right. Speaking of which, where is Yi Chen? Yi Lan just realized that Yi Chen is not in the classroom now. Yi Chen feels that he must have left home today without checking the almanac. Otherwise, he wouldn't have encountered this kind of thing. The drunkard who bumped into him turned the tables and said that he didn't look where he was going. He had red hair and reeked of alcohol. He definitely wasn't a student at the school. This should be a staff member from the crew, right? 
Yi Chen didn't want to argue with the drunkard and planned to ignore him and leave directly. But obviously, the drunkard didn't think so. Damn, how dare you bump into me, kid. Do you know who I am? Do you know how much I'm worth? You, a piece of trash, dare to touch me. I'll let it go if you apologize to me, considering that I'm in a good mood today. Apologize quickly. Yi Chen choked up. It seems that the person in front of him is not just a drunkard, but also a mentally ill person. As the top star in the circle now, Wu Fan has never been so ignored by anyone. He was furious and even more arrogant. Hey hey hey, I'm talking to you, can't you hear me? Are you deaf or dumb? You bumped into me and didn't apologize. Dealing with this idiot, Yi Chen directly took out his phone, intending to do a good deed and send him to a mental hospital. As soon as he took out his phone, Wu Fan became even more fierce. What are you trying to do, you little brat? Are you trying to record a video to expose this online? Let me tell you, don't even dream about it. Although he was drunk, he knew that if his current state was put online, it would definitely cause trouble. Wu Fan directly reached out to snatch Yi Chen's phone. Do you even deserve to expose me? He was fast, but Yi Chen was faster. Before Wu Fan's hand could touch the phone, Yi Chen directly subdued him. He said in a calm tone, if you have a problem, go get it treated, don't come out here causing trouble. Wu Fan's hand was twisted into a strange position by Yi Chen, and he screamed in pain. Ah ah ah. Let go. Damn it. Let go. Ah ah ah. Damn. Be brother. I was wrong, brother. I really was wrong. Please let go. My hand is about to break. Yi Chen let go and kicked him to the ground. Sober now? I'm sober. I'm sober. I'm sober. Wu Fan lay on the ground, sweating profusely, nodding in fear. Looks like I don't need to call the mental hospital for you. Yi Chen just treated this as a little episode and left the person behind. Wu Fan lay on the ground, watching his back with a fierce look in his eyes, damn it, I won't let you off. Yi Chen returned to the classroom, and the crew had already set up the cameras. They were going to shoot the classroom scenes here. Gao Zhe was very excited, adjusting his outfit, Yi Chen, where did you just go? Hurry up and get ready, we're going to start shooting. And, does my outfit look good? Yi Chen looked at his somewhat lewd face, very handsome. Gao Zhe smiled lewdly. Just then, the class suddenly became noisy. They're here, they're here. Shu Mimi and the others are here. Ah ah ah. Even my goddess Baba is here. I can die without regrets as long as I can be their background classmate. When Yi Zhu walked in, her eyes fell on Yi Chen. Her originally somewhat indifferent face immediately softened. If it weren't for the current situation, she would have jumped in front of Yi Chen immediately. The director entered the classroom ahead of everyone else. Hello, everyone. We are the crew of The Year the Wind Blows by Movie. I believe your class teacher has already told you, so I won't waste any more words. In the days of shooting to come, please give us your guidance and support. Soon, the staff informed everyone of the details. Yi Zhu and the others played the classmates in their class. The staff had already arranged their seats. The male classmate who was chosen to give up his seat for Yi Zhu was in a good mood when he heard his seat was chosen, and happily tidied up his desk, intending to give up his seat for Yi Zhu. However, as soon as he stood up, Yi Zhu spoke up, Sorry, can I not sit here? I want to sit. Here. She pointed to a seat next to Yi Chen. She was a special guest of the crew, so the director naturally agreed. Yi Zhu happily sat next to Yi Chen. Outside the corridor, the director was angrily questioning the staff in front of him. The movie is about to start shooting, where did the male lead go? I told you to find him. Have you found him? Director, calm down, I've already called teacher Wu Fan. He's already here getting ready in the dressing room. He should be able to come over in a while. Relying on the capital injection and the millions of fans, do you really think you're invincible and can do whatever you want? If you have the guts, say that to Wu Fan, why are you taking it out on me? What are you muttering about? Nothing, nothing. Oh, director. Teacher Wu Fan is here. Wu Fan walked over from a distance with a very unpleasant expression. The director immediately put on a smile and said, Teacher Wu Fan, you're here. All the staff are ready, just waiting for you. Then let's go in and get ready to start shooting. Wu Fan coldly uttered three words, not shooting. What, why not shooting, why? Everything is ready. Why so many whys? Have you seen my hand? It's injured. I have to go to the hospital right now. Do you understand going to the hospital? If there's even a tiny scratch on my hand, is that fair to my millions of fans? But, I don't care how you handle it, I absolutely won't shoot today. After saying this, Wu Fan turned and was about to leave. But in that instant, as he turned his head, he caught a glimpse of Yi Chen inside the classroom. Wait. This person looks familiar. Not sure. Take another look. Damn. Isn't this the crazy dog who broke his hand? 
Director, do we have a scene where a few hooligans beat up the school flower, and then I come in as the hero to save her? Ah, yes, yes. Very well. I've changed my mind. I'll shoot this scene today. Wu Fan strode into the classroom, his eyes coldly sweeping over Yi Chen. A gentleman does not take revenge, but this person needs to wake up today. Although the director didn't know why Wu Fan suddenly changed his mind, at least this little brat was willing to shoot. He forced a fake smile and said, Haven't you heard what teacher Wu said? We can start shooting, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and get to work. Yi Chen recognized this little redhead, unexpectedly the male lead. Because these few people were the main characters, they naturally had to sit together to accommodate the camera. On the left was Baba, on the right was Yi Zhu, and behind was Wu Fan. Unexplainably, Yi Chen became the center of attention. There weren't many scenes to be shot in class today. The main focus was on the genius character of the male lead. The teacher wrote a question on the blackboard, and only the male lead answered it. Watching Wu Fan confidently write down the answer he had already memorized, Yi Chen frowned slightly. The question was wrong, but it had nothing to do with him, and he didn't need to speak up. Whether this scene could be edited into the movie for official release was uncertain, but Wu Fan noticed. He already didn't like Yi Chen, and forgot that this was just a scene in a movie. You, why are you frowning? Do you think there's something wrong with my answer? Yi Chen calmly replied, No. No? Then why are you frowning? Ah, I understand. You probably can't understand this question, that's why you're frowning. However, it's true. Only a genius like me can understand it. You? Ha ha. You're just a waste of space, ranking last in the class. The character he played was originally arrogant and looked down on everyone as a genius, but later slowly grew into a reliable person through the female lead. So this incident didn't really deviate from the character's script, and the director didn't know why he didn't stop it. Yi Zhu was infuriated, who are you calling a waste of space? Yi Chen wouldn't fail to understand it. Yi Chen was called a monster by Dean Zhou Qiguan when he was 9 years old and wanted to desperately recruit him as a student. Baba, seeing that the director didn't call cut, also improvised, if it's not your problem-solving method, then why is Yes frowning? Yi, why aren't you speaking? Don't hide behind a woman like a coward. Yi Chen was sure that Wu Fan was trying to pick a fight. Since he had already leaned in, he felt obliged to retaliate. Since you claim to be a genius, then why didn't you notice the mistake in this question? Yi Chen pointed out the error in the question. Wu Fan sneered, you're just talking nonsense. Anyone can. Oh no. I actually made a mistake. The props teacher, who was preparing for this scene, suddenly exclaimed. Everyone's gaze turned to him. The props teacher awkwardly lowered his head, the data this student just pointed out, I did indeed copy it wrong. What he said is correct. After the props teacher corrected the question, Wu Fan's answer was revealed. Wu Fan's face turned pale. He actually got played by this person. Before he could explode, the director finally called cut as if he had seen enough. This ye student. What's wrong with you? Your role is not in the script. Don't make unnecessary expressions. Let's reshoot according to the script. He didn't dare to confront Wu Fan, the person with connections, but he wanted to see him suffer. Despite scolding Yi Chen, he actually liked Yi Chen the most at that moment. After watching enough of the drama, it was time to officially start filming. After that, Wu Fan didn't continue to cause trouble and followed the script. However, it was clear that Wu Fan's quietness was only temporary. He didn't give up on causing trouble. When it came time to film the scene of the hero saving the beauty, he couldn't wait to speak up, director, I think the person to play this thug should be that student named Ji Chen. Of course, no problem. The director smiled and turned to the assistant with a blank expression, did you hear that? You can discuss the script with that student. The director's assistant approached Yi Chen and told him about it. Yi Zhu was nearby and heard the whole thing. Yi Chen, don't agree to it. Wu Fan definitely has ulterior motives. Who knows what he wants to do to you? She had seen too much of this kind of thing. Yi Chen felt a bit tired. This red-haired guy was indeed a lunatic. He didn't apologize when he bumped into him, and he was dead set on causing trouble for him. He should have called the mental hospital earlier. Yi Chen usually didn't like to deal with these trivial matters. But having a fly buzzing around in front of him for so long was really annoying. I agree. Yi Zhu's heart tightened suddenly. Yi Chen, I'll be fine. But whether he would be fine or not, he couldn't say for sure. This scene was very simple. It was the cliché hero saving the beauty. Beauty was Baba, and the hero was naturally Wu Fan. Yi Chen played the street thug forcing Baba. As soon as the camera started rolling, Yi Chen got into character. He casually approached Baba, little sister, why are you out alone so late at night? Baba pretended to be scared and took a few steps back, pressing against the wall, what do you want to do? You don't come near me again. Otherwise, I'll scream. 
Yi Chen leaned against the wall behind her, then you should scream, see if anyone responds to you. Clearly a very rogue posture in teasing words, but Babala's face inexplicably turned red. No other reason. Yi Chen is just too handsome. This scene doesn't look like a rogue teasing a girl at all. Some people even believe it's the domineering CEO flirting with the female lead. Even the director in front of the monitor felt the atmosphere was strange. Just then, Wu Fan entered. Babala regained her composure and got back into character. Wu, help me. Class monitor? What do you, a rogue, want to do to my class monitor? Wu Fan walked over aggressively and threw a punch at Yi Chen without saying a word. In the original script, Yi Chen's character was supposed to be beaten up by him, to show how cool the male lead is. But Yi Chen changed it. He easily dodged Wu Fan's fist, then grabbed his wrist and kicked. Thud! Wu Fan bowed to the audience. This scene stunned everyone, but Yi Chen didn't stop there. He had seen that Wu Fan deliberately wore a sharp ring. If that punch had landed on his face, it might have left a hole. Yi Chen's anger was ignited. After making Wu Fan kneel, he kicked him again. Wu Fan was sent flying two or three meters away. Wu Fan's stomach churned, and he vomited. Everyone panicked. Wu, are you okay? A group of people surrounded him, expressing concern. After Wu Fan finished vomiting, the first thing he did was look at Yi Chen, you dared to kick me. Yi Chen's expression suddenly became blank, without any exaggeration, well, isn't that what the script required? I was wondering why you didn't dodge just now. Wu Fan almost vomited again, glaring at Yi Chen, you, he tried to get up but was in too much pain and had to lie back down. In that moment, a thought flashed through his mind. He spat again, then closed his eyes and passed out. His agent, who knew him best, immediately knew what he was up to. She cooperated perfectly and said, You're called Yi Chen, right? You actually knocked out my artist. I won't let this go easily. Assistant, what are you standing there for? Call 911 for an ambulance. Before the assistant could call 911, Yi Chen walked over, fainted? Why send him to the hospital? Pinch his philtrum. The agent couldn't stop him. Yi Chen pressed on Wu Fan's philtrum and applied force. Wu Fan almost jumped from the pain. He endured it. The agent said, What are you doing? Stop. Are you trying to harm him? The medical team will take too long. I'm trying to help him. Yi Chen's voice was calm. If pinching the philtrum doesn't work, then I'll have to use acupressure. Don't worry, I've studied acupressure charts and know every lethal acupoint. As long as I avoid those, I can definitely wake him up. The agent's heart trembled, and she watched Yi Chen warily. Yi Chen, are you threatening to kill? How could I? I can definitely avoid those lethal acupoints. Don't worry, it'll be quick. It won't hurt. The agent's frail body couldn't resist Yi Chen. He was already squatting in front of Wu Fan, reaching for him. Yi Chen's words, resembling a death threat, echoed in Wu Fan's mind. What does it mean to avoid every lethal acupoint? What if he doesn't avoid them? What does it mean it won't hurt? Dead people definitely won't feel pain. Just as Yi Chen's hand was about to touch Wu Fan, he couldn't resist the fear of death and suddenly opened his eyes. Ah, my head hurts. What happened to me just now? Yi Chen reluctantly withdrew his hand, you're awake. Wu Fan looked at him with eyes that seemed devoid of any humanity, and felt even more fearful in his heart. The slight drunkenness had completely cleared at this moment. Yi Chen, he really wanted to kill him just now, regardless of any consequences. After realizing this, Wu Fan no longer felt the effects of alcohol, and was determined to deal with Yi Chen. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. I feel great now. I can still continue filming. Filming could still continue. But this time, Wu Fan insisted that Yi Chen should not play the role of the street thug. The director had to find someone else. Yi Chen was happy to have some free time. Yi Zhu finally had the opportunity to approach Yi Chen. I knew he had bad intentions. Luckily, you're okay. If he really dared to harm you, I would definitely not spare him. Yi Chen was very curious. How would you not spare him? Yi Zhu looked too soft. Even if she spoke harshly, she still looked gentle. Yi Zhu spoke seriously. I have evidence against him, enough to put him in jail. In his previous life, Wu Fan was sentenced because of this evidence. Are you siding with me? First, she had confessed about her father, who wanted to harm her. Now she was asserting that if Wu Fan bullied her, she would make sure he went to jail. Yi Chen rubbed his chin. Was his charm really that great? Yi Zhu spoke in a voice that only she could hear, softly. Because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have reached this level. Yi Chen didn't hear clearly. What did you say? Yi Zhu, because I believe you're not that kind of person. You're a good person. The interaction between the two caught the attention of their manager, Lu Xiaoting. When there was no one around, Lu Xiaoting immediately grabbed Yi Zhu and asked, Zhu, 
Tell me honestly, was that boy just now the so-called genius screenwriter you mentioned? Yi Zhu knew everyone in her social circle very well. Besides the young man in front of her, she couldn't think of anyone else who could be suspected. Yi Zhu corrected her angrily, he's not just some so-called genius, he has a name, his name is Yi Chen. But Lu Xiaoting became even more certain. Yes, it was him. Zhu, although you're young, you're usually very clever. How did you suddenly get deceived by a man? He's at most in his twenties. What does he know about screenwriting? He must have been fooling you. Could it be that he seduced you? Sis, what nonsense are you talking about? Yi Xu blushed. He didn't seduce me, and he didn't deceive me. Yi Chen is really amazing. I can say this. Now, in the entire film industry, none of those award-winning films are anything special. If Yi Chen decides to take action, he will change the entire landscape of the film industry. But Lu Xiaoting felt even more worried. She was usually a rational artist, but now she had been brainwashed into what? Changing the landscape of the film industry? Why didn't Ji Chen call himself the father of film? Could the films he made change an entire era? Seeing her disbelief, Yi Zhu was also puzzled. She knew she couldn't change someone's mind. Because in this time and space, Yi Chen had not taken action. No one knew about his talent. No one knew about his abilities. This reminded her of all the shining points he had in his previous life, buried because of the four sisters. Forget it, I won't tell you anymore, if you don't believe it, then don't. Lu Xiaoting didn't want Yi Zhu to continue being deceived. But she knew that saying more was useless, Yi Zhu clearly didn't believe it. What should she do? Suddenly, she had an idea. Wait a minute. Zhu, since you say he's so amazing, why don't you let him write a script? If he's a genius who can change the film industry, and he currently has no popularity, he's really being buried. I just received an internal message. There's a variety show called Screenwriter and Director that's recruiting people. You actually believe him. Then why don't you just let him participate? By then, his talent can be known nationwide, right? Yi Zhu's eyes instantly lit up. Xiao Ting was right. Yi Chen's talent should not be buried. But, how should she tell Yi Chen that she was so sure he would write the script? Lu Xiaoting misunderstood. She thought her hesitation was because Yi Chen wouldn't write a script at all and was deceiving her. What are you thinking about? Don't you want his talent to be recognized by the whole world? A talent like gold should not be buried. He should shine and let the whole world know. Zhu, aren't you thinking the same? She deliberately induced, deliberately put on a high hat. Yi Zhu was indeed moved, sister, you're right. In the previous life, Yi Chen's talent and brilliance were buried because of the four sisters. Now she wanted to return all of these to Yi Chen. I will let him participate in this variety show. Lu Xiaoting saw that the first step had already been taken, and immediately began the second step. But with his current fame, the program team probably won't buy it. What if I join in? Yi Zhu was indeed caught in the trap. If I join, the program team will definitely agree, right? Lu Xiaoting just wanted her to say this one sentence, if you join, then it's definitely no problem. Yi Zhu nodded heavily. I understand. So now there's only one problem left. How can Yi Chen participate in this program? Yi Zhu couldn't think of a way and kept looking at Yi Chen from time to time. Yi Chen noticed. Do you have something to tell me? Yi Zhu shook her head and then nodded. If you don't say it, I'll leave. Wait. Yi Zhu hesitated for a long time, biting her lip. I, I joined a variety show called Screenwriter and Director. Yi Chen, congratulations? No. Yi Zhu didn't know how to be circuitous, so she simply hid her purpose and directly invited. I was just thinking if you could come with me to participate? Ha, huh? although I know it might sound abrupt, but I just saw the scene you acted in. It was really good. So I want to invite you to come with me, can you? Yi Zhu couldn't think of how to ask Yi Chen to write the script. But it was definitely right to first pull him into this program. Yi Chen also didn't know how she could tell that his acting was very good. He didn't even act seriously just now. However, the attitude of these three sisters towards him made him very puzzled and interested. He wanted to find out the reason. Perhaps agreeing to participate in the program with her could help him find out something. Okay. Actually, if you don't want to. Ah. Uh, Yi Zhu had already thought that Yi Chen might refuse. As a result, the answer Yi Chen gave made her stunned. You said, you agree, surprised, or did you change your mind? No, I didn't change my mind. Yi Xu couldn't help but smile, it's really great that you agreed. She never expected that Yi Chen would agree so easily, and he didn't even ask for the reason. I'll arrange it right away. This time, she must let Yi Chen's talent be known to the whole world. Yi Xu immediately told Lu Xiaoting about Yi Chen's agreement. Lu Xiaoting didn't care whether Yi Chen agreed or not. She cared that Yi Xu agreed. 
so she quickly contacted the director of the variety show. When the director heard that Yi Zhu was coming, he was extremely excited. After all, the three words Yi Zhu represented top level traffic, and top level traffic is the top pass in the entertainment industry. Adding an amateur was nothing at all. Putting someone on stage and putting them in front of the camera were two different things. The director was very clear about this in his mind. The director readily agreed. Lu Xiaoting, then I'll be counting on you after that. I will bring them to sign the contract tomorrow. Everything went very smoothly. The other two sisters also learned about Yi Zhu's plan to bring Yi Chen to participate in the program. It's one thing for you to come and act. Why did you also take Yi Chen to act? Yi Mei suspected and said, Are you deliberately trying to get closer to Yi Chen? Is that why you came up with this method? Yi Lan also thought the same. Could it be that the third sister is jealous of them, knowing about Yi Chen's existence before them, and spending time with him, and now trying to make up for it? Yi Xu felt a headache from her sister's assumptions. She explained, first, I didn't say I wanted to take Yi Chen to act. Second, I let him join this program with me not because I want to spend more time with him for personal reasons. Yi Mei asked in confusion, then why? Yi Lan also nodded, yeah. And isn't that program for scriptwriters and directors? What's the point of acting? Yi Zhu felt even more helpless, scriptwriters and directors. Why are you focusing on the actors? Yi Mei vaguely understood her thoughts. Do you want Yi Chen to write the script? Why? Because his talent should not be buried, and his gift should not be wasted. Yi Zhu pursed her lips, her eyes firm, in my past life, I covered up his original brilliance. So now, I want to make amends. The two sisters were shocked to hear this. They never imagined that their younger sister would have such thoughts. They looked at each other and realized, you're right. They had never thought about this issue before. They thought they had been good to Yi Chen, but they had never considered giving back his original halo. They had always been trying to possess it. Only the third sister had thought of it. Were they really good to Yi Chen? After speaking with her two sisters, Yi Zhu quickly went to sign the contract. The director only now realized that the amateur Yi Zhu mentioned wanted a position as a scriptwriter. But we already have four fixed positions for scriptwriters. They had already selected four candidates for the scriptwriting positions. Yi Zhu also knew she was putting the director in a difficult position. If it's not possible, then forget it. I look forward to working with the director next time. Wait. The director didn't want to let go of this popular figure in the industry, but he was also troubled by the scriptwriter selection. Just then, a voice interjected, the person Zhu recommended, could it be the talented scriptwriter you mentioned the other day? It was Kuang Jiu. Yi Zhu nodded, it's him. Kuang Jiu almost couldn't help but laugh. That kid actually managed to brainwash Yi Zhu like this. He was willing to spend his own resources just to get him on the show. Was he a top-tier gigolo? The thought of Yi Zhu sacrificing his script for a gigolo made Kuang Jiu even more furious. So it's that gold medal scriptwriter. Kuang Jiu said with a strange tone, Director, you must not refuse. This person is a super genius. It's said that his scripts are even better than mine. If you let go of such a talent, you will definitely regret it. Yi Zhu felt extremely uncomfortable hearing this. It was clearly a sarcastic remark, but she couldn't find a way to refute it. The director also sensed it, but he didn't quite understand Kuang Jiu's intentions. Did he want him to hire this person, or not? Kuang Jiu put on a fake smile, Director, why haven't you signed the contract yet? I also want to see how talented this gold medal scriptwriter really is, I want to witness it. The director instantly understood. It seemed that this newcomer named Yi Chen, despite having Yi Zhu as a backer, had still managed to provoke Kuang Jiu, a god in the scriptwriting circle. His future path was probably blocked. But, this topic was just perfect for creating a stir. Newcomer versus Gold Medal The traffic password is not easy to come by. The director immediately waved his hand and said, Sign. The screenwriter and director became popular before it even aired. This variety show actually adopted a live broadcast format. And Yi Zhu's traffic is incredibly huge. Plus, they even brought out the legendary figure in the screenwriting circle, Kuang Jiu. Countless people are looking forward to Yi Zhu and Kuang Jiu collaborating. As for Yi Chen, who was also officially announced, he is completely unheard of on the internet. But he unexpectedly occupies one of the four screenwriters. This has gradually increased his popularity. However, compared to the popularity of Yi Zhu and Kuang Jiu, Yi Chen's popularity is like a small ripple, without any significant impact. Under everyone's attention, the screenwriter and director officially began its first live broadcast. It was only at this time that Yi Chen realized he was not participating in acting in this program, but rather in writing the script. I originally thought you just wanted me to be an extra, a nobody, he said. How did you come up with the idea of having me as a screenwriter? 
With a deep gaze, Yi Zhu dared not meet his eyes. I, I, she hesitated, unable to come up with any reason. If you can't give a reason, then don't say anything. Anyway, the contract has been signed, and I can't run away, Yi Zhu sighed, then continued, I believe you can do it. Yi Chan remained silent. However, he became increasingly suspicious of the motives of these three sisters. They seemed to understand him very well. They headed to the recording studio. Almost everyone had arrived. The program officially began its live broadcast. Welcome everyone to watch the first episode of The Screenwriter and Director. This is a brand new variety show. Our focus will be on the screenwriting and how the script is presented by the director in the end. First, let's have the four screenwriters introduce themselves. From left to right, the first is a relatively well-known screenwriter in the industry who has been involved in many mainstream films. The second is a popular internet-famous screenwriter known for the web series Love and Monsters. Originally, Kuang Jiu should have been introduced last, but for some reason, he was placed third. As soon as Kuang Jiu picked up the microphone to introduce himself, the barrage in the live broadcast room started flooding in. Ah, it's Kuang Jiu. I love watching Kuang Jiu's works the most. They are profound and meaningful. Kuang Jiu is the number one gold medalist in the screenwriting circle. Who dares to challenge him? Kuang Jiu, in the current screenwriting circle, there's no one who can compete. After Kuang Jiu finished introducing himself, it was Yi Chen's turn. Yi Chen introduced himself very simply. My name is Yi Chen. Yi Chen? Who is this person? I've never heard of his name before. When the program officially announced it, I was puzzled. It seems like this person hasn't even produced a single work. How could he participate in this variety show? Could he have used connections? He doesn't even have a single work, yet he dares to participate in the program. Is he crazy about becoming famous? The host understood how to provoke hatred and conflict. The next moment, he picked up the microphone and said, I believe everyone has a certain understanding of each of our screenwriters. This last introduction is for Teacher Yi. Although he is a new screenwriter, his potential is very impressive. Even our teacher Kuang Jiu has great admiration for him. Kuang Jiu also smiled and praised Yi Chen, indeed. I have high hopes for this new junior. I heard that his script is exceptionally well written, and Shu Mimi holds him in high regard. So, let's all look forward to it. What amazing work will Teacher Yi present later on? He emphasized the words Teacher Yi with a strange tone. Yi Chen noticed his tone and smiled. I dare not claim to be amazing, but at least it's presentable. Kuang Jiu, then I'm even more looking forward to your work. The verbal sparring between the two was as sharp as it was substantive. Everyone could tell. Yi Zhu didn't expect the two to actually clash, and she was very anxious, not caring whether it was her turn or whether it would arouse Yi Chen's suspicion. She immediately defended him, Yi Chen's script is really amazing. As long as everyone has seen it, they will definitely love it. The barrage was instantly puzzled. What's going on? How did my sister Zhu get involved with this Yi Chen? Do they have any relationship? Both have the surname Yi, could they be related? You in front, you're talking nonsense. Goddess Xu only has sisters, not brothers. I have insider information. It is said that this Yi Chen is a gigolo. He bragged in front of the goddess, saying he's very good at writing scripts. Even Kuang Jiu can't compare to him. He used all his eloquence to get the goddess to use her resources to sign him with the production team, just to become famous. What? This Yi Chen is so disgusting. He's just a newbie with no works. He actually wants to compete with Kuang Jiu. Shameless. That's right. This Yi Chen is really shameless. A gigolo to this extent. I want to be one too. You in front, you've exposed your black feet, haven't you? It has to be said that the undercurrents between these three people, combined with Yi Zhu's own popularity, instantly made this show trend. More and more viewers poured in. And at this point, the show had already progressed to the on-site creation of scripts by the four screenwriters. Perhaps it was only because it was the first episode, so the requirements of the production team were very broad, only specifying a story background. The Republican Era When Yi Chen heard this requirement, the first thing that came to mind was let the bullets fly a while longer. The script had to be created within 24 hours. Although Yi Zhu was very confident in Yi Chen, she had never actually seen him create a Republican Era film before. She couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. Finding a blind spot in the camera, she asked, Yi Chen, are you confident in creating this script? She was already thinking, if Yi Chen really couldn't write it, should she intervene? In her previous life, there was a very famous Republican era film. Maybe she could. Yi Chen took in all of her expressions and said, what if I'm not confident? What? If I'm not confident, what can you do? I can. The rest of Yi Zhu's words were swallowed back by Yi Chen's eyes. 
He had already found the answer he wanted from her eyes, I am confident. These three sisters were really becoming more and more interesting. It made him curious about their true intentions. After confirming the theme, each and quickly began writing. The process of creating a script was very tedious. Not to mention, Yi Chen was an amateur with no famous works, and the number of viewers in his exclusive live broadcast room had dropped to single digits. But it was different in other live broadcast rooms. Especially in Kuangzhou's live broadcast room, it was like night and day compared to Yi Chen's. Not only were there many viewers, but the barrage was also densely packed. Damn! Kuangzhou is truly a top-notch screenwriter. This script is freaking awesome. After reading this script, I can't wait to see it come to life. Speaking of which, after the script is finished, will it go into casting? I wonder who Kuang Jiu will choose as the female lead for this script. I heard a little rumor that Kuang Jiu seems to have invited Sister Zhu to play his female lead. This script is obviously a big female lead script. I have an immature little guess. Wow! Is what the person above said true? If it is, I'm really looking forward to it. Kuang Jiu's script is so awesome, I feel like the other contestants don't even need to compete. The ending will definitely be Kuang Jiu's victory. Yes, what I'm specifically talking about here is that guy named Ji Chen. I don't know where this amateur came from, but he's so arrogant. Who does he think he is? Can he really outshine me, Kuangju? This barrage received the approval of countless Kuangju fans, and the live broadcast room suddenly turned into a Kuangju praise session and a belittling session for Yi Chen. At this moment, a barrage that didn't fit in suddenly appeared. Kuangju's fans, don't be so full of yourselves. When Yi Chen slaps you in the face later, you'll know shame. This out-of-place barrage immediately caught the attention of all Kuangju fans. Who's this trash intruding? Ha, huh, someone actually said that Kuangju's script will be slapped by Yi Chen. Trash, do you know the reputation of Kuangju in the script writing circle? It's top-notch. It's the best. Understand. Yi Chen, a trash who doesn't even have a script, actually has fans? Could it be bought? Under the attack of so many barrages, the owner of that barrage not only did not retreat, but also arrogantly started to output crazily. After outputting numerous barrages, the owner of the barrage returned to Yi Chen's live broadcast room in a huff. He was one of the few audience members of Yi Chen. The reason he stayed in Yi Chen's live broadcast room was simply out of curiosity, and he thought that if Yi Chen's script was too bad, then he would be the first to criticize it. However, when he saw the script written by Yi Chen, his original intention to criticize suddenly changed. It turned into all kinds of wow. The few audience members in the live broadcast room felt like they had struck gold and their barrages gave the illusion of hundreds of people. Wow! Yi Chen's script and lines are too amazing. I originally just wanted to casually watch, but I didn't expect to strike gold. I finally understand why the bamboo goddess values Yi Chen so much. He's really amazing. Just came back from Kuangju, bringing the latest news. The script he wrote is much worse than Yi Chen's. I don't know how his fans can praise it. Originally, there were only a few people in the live broadcast room, but at this moment, a group of viewers suddenly rushed in. The number of viewers instantly jumped to over a hundred. Wow! It's really trash. There are only four people in the live broadcast room. Can this trash still write a good script? I don't think he can write a script, but he's good at marketing. Do you have the face to say that this trash's script is better than Kuangju's? Check your brain. I think there might be something wrong with your brain. These newly arrived viewers were obviously Kuangju's fans, specifically coming to criticize Yi Chen. They started to criticize without even reading Yi Chen's script, and the live broadcast room suddenly became lively. Of course, it was a lively scene full of blocked words, and Yi Chen was completely unaware of this. The script was not difficult, and his typing speed was fast. While the live broadcast room was full of all kinds of criticism, he had already finished typing the last word, saved the document, and shut down the computer. So when Kuangju's fans in the live broadcast room remembered to read Yi Chen's script and wanted to continue criticizing, what they saw was him shutting down the computer. Is Yi Chen giving up struggling? Ha ha, this trash finally realized that he can't beat Kuangju, so he's giving up. Yi Chen shut down the computer, allowing Kuangju's fans to enter a new round of criticism frenzy. They believed that Yi Chen finally had some self-awareness. On the other hand, Kuangju also noticed that Yi Chen had actually shut down the computer. In a sarcastic tone, she said, Teacher Yi, have you finished writing already? Yi Chen casually said, Hmm, finished writing. Kuang Jiu was shocked. It had only been three hours since the 24-hour deadline, and Yi Chen had already finished writing. How was that possible? What could he have written in three hours? There was only one possibility. Yi Chen was just as he had originally thought, a waste. He didn't understand anything about scripts, he was just deceiving Yi Zhu, this little girl. Now, 
it was just under his influence that his true nature was exposed. Apart from the few viewers who had been following the live broadcast, no one believed that Ji Chen had actually finished writing. Quan Jiu was even more disdainful and contemptuous in his heart. He felt that Ji Chen knew he couldn't pass this test and was just pretending. Quan Jiu sarcastically praised Ji Chen, with such a gushing flow of words, you must have written a wonderful script in just three hours. I must definitely study and learn from teacher Ye's literary works. Yi Chen seemed oblivious and earnestly replied, Hmm, you must study well. Quan Jiu was visibly infuriated. His eyes were sharp and cold, then let's wait and see. He didn't have time to argue with Yi Chen now. The original script task for 24 hours, even if it was just a microfilm of less than 20 minutes, still required a large amount of script writing. This was a challenge for Quan Jiu. Yi Zhu also knew that Yi Chen had finished writing the script and hurried over, Yi Chen, have you finished writing the script? Yes, I finished and handed it over to the production team. The production team had already started setting up the scene. Yi Zhu couldn't believe how fast Yi Chen had been. Overjoyed, she immediately said, Are there any roles in your script that I can play? I want to be in your script. Well, there are female roles, but the process of recruiting actors hasn't started yet. This variety show was breaking new ground in the live broadcast industry. It was directly broadcasting the entire process of making a movie, from creation to filming. This included the process of actors selecting scripts and directors casting roles. Although Yi Zhu verbally agreed to wait until tomorrow, in her heart, she thought that she had come to participate in this show for Yi Chen. If she couldn't be in Yi Chen's script, she wouldn't act in anyone else's. The 24-hour script writing time finally came to an end. Next was the time for actors and directors to choose roles. For scripts, 12 actors. Yi Chen's script team drew the last slot for choosing actors. Quang Jiu was the first. When the host announced that the actors could start choosing, all 11 actors stood up, except for Yi Zhu. Their goal here was very clear. They were here to participate in Quang Jiu's script. Ideally, they wanted to use this opportunity to catch Quang Jiu's eye and truly collaborate with him in the future. Seeing so many people stand up, Quang Jiu's smile hadn't even had a chance to appear before he saw Yi Zhu sitting firmly in her seat, and it disappeared completely. He had come to this show for Yi Zhu. Could it be that Yi Zhu hadn't heard? Is there anyone else who wants to participate in my script? Yi Zhu remained motionless, not even giving him a glance. Quang Jiu persisted, my script revolves around the female lead. 80% of the scenes are for the female lead. So, is there anyone else who wants to participate in my script? Yi Zhu still didn't move. As the seconds ticked by, Quang Jiu's face grew darker. He no longer probed, Zhu, when I was writing this script, the first person I thought of for the female lead was you. Do you want to participate in my script? Before Yi Zhu could speak, the barrage exploded. The rumors were true. The main reason why Quang Jiu came to this show was for Zhu. Ah, are my male and female idols finally going to collaborate? I can't wait. My sister Zhu is amazing. Even the great Quang Jiu has fallen for her. In the midst of everyone's anticipation, Yi Zhu seemed to finally come to her senses. He spat out three cold words, I don't want to. Yi Chen could clearly hear everyone around him gasping for breath. Quang Zhu's face almost couldn't hold back, and he tried to recommend, you haven't seen my script yet. Once you see it, you will definitely like it. Sorry, teacher Quang Zhu, I have already made my choice. Yi Zhu firmly spoke, apart from his script, I will not participate in anyone else's script. Quang Zhu pointed directly at Yi Chen, you don't want to participate in his script, do you? Yi Zhu, yes. Quang Zhu's blood pressure rose, good, good, good. Yi Chen didn't expect Yi Zhu to really only want to participate in his. He thought about the content of his own script. Yi Zhu, the focus of my script is entirely on the male lead. The female role is just a small supporting role, with no more than 10 lines of dialogue in total. I suggest you choose teacher Quang Zhu's script. Yi Zhu is the most popular among all the actors here, and also the biggest star. It's not right to let her play a small supporting role with only a few lines, no matter what. Yi Zhu immediately spoke, the size of the role doesn't matter. I don't care if the role is heavy or not. As long as I can act, I will be very happy. Yi Chen, all right then. Quang Zhu listened to the conversation between the two of them on the side, and his fists were about to crush. He barely remembered that it was a live broadcast, so he didn't curse on the spot, and said with a gloomy face, then I will wait and see. Teacher Ye's script. When Yi Zhu participates in Yi Chen's script, she will know what a truly good script is. She would rather play a small supporting role with only a few lines of dialogue than play his leading role. She will regret it for sure. Quang Zhu picked out the actors with good acting skills on the stage, and when the other two screenwriters finished picking, the remaining actors were directly assigned to Yi Chen. After they returned to their respective rooms, 
each and distributed the script to them. These were three small stars in the entertainment industry who were almost unheard of. They all came from web dramas and were only familiar in a small circle of web dramas. They looked lifeless as soon as they entered the room. They were already desperate. Look at this crew. An unknown director and a rookie screenwriter. Even with Yi Zhu, the goddess, it's still not enough to compete with the next three groups. What kind of script can this rookie screenwriter write? It needs three men and one woman. Could it be the most cliché, three men chasing one woman romance film nowadays? The three male actors opened the script with a lack of energy. They were already prepared to be bombarded by a cliché and cheesy script. However, after reading the first page, they felt something was off. After reading the second page, they straightened up. After reading the third page, their eyes lit up. Damn. The lines in this script are awesome. Damn. The irony in this script is so strong. Damn. They suddenly felt that this script could be a hit. If these three actors who haven't acted in many plays can have such thoughts, let alone Yi Zhu. After reading the script, her heart started pounding. Yi Chen. I knew your script. It's the most powerful and unique in the world. Apart from Yi Zhu, these three actors plus the director were all relatively unknown. So, they wanted to be successful even more. And the first element to be successful is to have a good script. But with their previous unknown experiences, how could they possibly have a good script find them? Seeing such a good script right in front of them, how could they not work hard? So after receiving the script, they practiced tirelessly except for mealtimes. In order to ensure the freshness of the script during filming, this part was not broadcast live. So apart from their crew and related personnel, no one knew about their script. A week later, they were finally going to start the live performance. The live broadcast room finally opened again. Millions of viewers poured in. It's starting, it's starting, it's finally starting. Shumini, I'm here. I've been waiting for this day for so long. The feeling of waiting like a year, who understands it? Here to support Quagio. Can't wait for Quagio's script. The barrage was almost all fans of Quagio and Yi Zhu. After all, there were four drama groups, and time was very tight. So the host didn't waste any time and simply said a few opening words before getting straight to the point. I don't know if the production team did it on purpose, but Yi Chen's group was pushed to the end again. And above him was Kua Jio. The first drama group took the stage. Yi Chen was initially serious, but as it went on, he couldn't help but cringe. This was simply a dog blood love story dressed in the garb of the Republic of China. It wouldn't even be out of place in modern times. The script was so bad, not to mention the actors' performances. Their features were all over the place, and their body language was non-existent. He thought this was already rock bottom. But when the second group started performing, Yi Chen realized what rock bottom truly was. He just wanted to pay a fortune for a pair of eyes that hadn't seen this before. If Yi Chen felt this way, imagine how the audience felt. In the barrage, they had already cursed these two dramas. When I saw the lineup of these screenwriters, I already knew that besides Quagio, the scripts of the other three would definitely be crap. And now it's true. I used to curse the actors often, but now I realize that with such a crappy script, it's hard for the actors to perform well. Quagio coming to participate in this variety show is really a godsend. In the audience's anticipation, Quagio's drama group finally took the stage. Yi Chen was still very interested in Quagio's script. After all, everyone said he was the top screenwriter in the industry. After watching the whole film, Yi Chen felt that Quagio's ability to become a top screenwriter was not without reason. This script couldn't be considered outstanding, at best it was just average, but for a 24-hour competition, being able to produce such a script was quite good, especially compared to the two previous crappy scripts. After the drama group finished performing, it was time for mutual comments. The two screenwriters directly praised Quagio as a genius. Quagio didn't show any joy on his face, but his eyes kept looking at Yi Zhu. He only had one thought in his mind. See that? Hear that? My script is the best. Not participating in my script is simply your loss. However, Yi Zhu didn't even look at him. She was still reciting her lines in her mind. This was Yi Chen's script, making its first appearance in front of everyone. She must not hold Yi Chen back. And now it was time for Yi Chen to give his evaluation. He said what he thought, and also mentioned a logical flaw in the script. I know that teacher Kua Jiu wants to present the deep patriotism of the female lead in this grand background, but the character's arc changes too abruptly, without a good reason, making the female lead suddenly so reckless. But I believe that if there was a little more time, teacher Kua Jiu's script could definitely be polished better. He was speaking the truth, but no one wanted to hear it. Not to mention Kua Jiu, even the audience in the live broadcast room wanted to break through the screen and scold Yi Chen in person. Ha, this guy called Yi Chen, 
Where did this mediocre screenwriter come from? How dare he say that my Quaggio's script is just average? Does he have that big of a face? Calling him a screenwriter is giving him too much credit. Do you see the word screenwriter anywhere on Yi Chen's body? Why is he pretending to be something he's not? Saying that the character's arc change isn't good? Can't be true, can it? Can't be true. This Yi Chen really doesn't think he understands scripts better than the top screenwriter in the industry, Kuang Jiu, does he? He he, I really want to see what amazing script Yi Chen can write now, to give him the confidence to nitpick like this. The audience couldn't stand it, let alone Kuang Jiu himself. He burst out laughing directly. Looking at Yi Chen with a strange expression, he said, he he, everyone has different opinions on screenwriting. Maybe for Teacher Yi, the character transformation seems abrupt, but in my opinion, her logic is consistent. But Teacher Yi seems to have a good understanding of characters, I'm even more interested in Teacher Yi's script now. I can't wait to see Teacher Yi's script. I want to study how Teacher Yi writes characters. Everyone was in position. With the clap of the board, two actors appeared in front of the camera. I ask you, why should I be a bandit? I don't know. Because I'm not agile, I can't kneel down. So you want to make money standing up? Then continue to be a bandit. These lines opened the entire scene. The keyboard warriors who were ready to show off in front of the screen were completely drawn in by these lines, forgetting to type on their keyboards. And as the plot unfolded, everyone watching was shocked. The more Kuang Zhou watched, the paler his face became, his eyes full of disbelief. As a screenwriter, he knew too well the skill behind these lines. It looks simple, but in reality, every line is mocking. Every character is within their own logic. By the end of the performance, he was still immersed in the content of this short script that lasted just over 10 minutes. He even sadly discovered that even if he approached the play with a critical mindset, the problem was not with the script. It was the three inexperienced actors. If it were performed by more experienced actors, the brilliance of this script could be taken to another level. As the final line fell, the short play also came to an end. But no one in the audience spoke immediately. They were still shocked by the conflict brought about by this play. The first to recover were the online viewers. Wow! This play is amazing. Every line has a deep meaning. It touches my soul. This is not about the director's filming technique or the actor's performance. This is truly an awesome script. That's why this play is awesome. Exactly. I knew Sister Zhu didn't make a mistake in her choice. Yi Chen is really awesome. No wonder she wanted to join this production team. Who doesn't want to make money standing up? Let the bullets fly a while longer. I'm laughing all the way to the bank. After watching this play, I found that Yi Chen really has the qualifications to evaluate Kuang Jiu. This script is much more awesome than Kuang Jiu's. The audience has eyes and can discern whether a play is good or bad. Yi Chen's script is definitely better than Kuang Jiu's. Although they were proven wrong, they admitted it. In the studio, the host picked up the microphone and started provoking again. The three teachers have finished watching this play. Is there anything you would like to say? The two screenwriters exchanged meaningful glances for a while, neither daring to comment first. They had long seen the conflict between Kuang Jiu and Yi Chen. Unable to afford to offend, they simply passed the buck. The hidden meaning in this script is profound. We would like to hear Kuang Jiu's evaluation first. Right. After all, teacher Kuang Jiu's professional expertise in scripts is definitely better than ours. It's best to have him evaluate it first. The two of them directly passed the buck to Kuang Jiu. Kuang Jiu, with an expressionless face, looked at the hands hidden under the table, his veins bulging. At the same level, he could still sarcastically criticize, leaving people unable to find fault. When the level of difference is visible to the naked eye, he can only get a reputation for being scolded. But to make him admit that Ji Chen's script is really better than his, it's completely impossible. Kua Jiu smiled ambiguously and replied, since neither of the two script teachers evaluated it, then I will evaluate it first. There are a thousand hamlets in the eyes of a thousand people. For us screenwriters, naturally, the script we write is the best. As for the techniques we use when writing the script, and the professional perspective, these are all very personal matters. After the script is written, it is the audience who judges its quality. A script that is more popular with the audience is definitely a good script. Yi Chen couldn't help but want to laugh after hearing this. Kua Jiu's speech actually revealed two attitudes. First, he thinks his script is the best. Second, the audience's preferences and the screenwriter's preferences are different, so if the script chosen by the audience in the end is not his, it can only mean that it's the audience's problem. It has nothing to do with him. The host, constrained by his status, naturally wouldn't make things difficult for him. He casually said a few polite words and then directly skipped this troublemaking segment, moving on to the final audience voting segment. The differences between these four films are just too obvious. 
As expected, Yi Chen's group received the highest number of votes. The host asked all of them to come on stage to receive the award. Yi Zhu looked at the first place ranking on the screen and was so excited that she forgot she was on stage, and excitedly turned to hug Yi Chen, I knew it. Yi Chen, your script is the most amazing. As she spoke, her tone became a bit choked up. If it weren't for her in her previous life, how could Yi Chen have ended up in such a miserable state? She wanted to return the brilliance that originally belonged to him. Why not? It's not too late now. On the other side, the three male actors who starred in the film were so excited that their eyes were red when they saw the ranking. They had originally thought they would be eliminated, but they ended up getting first place. All of this was because of Yi Chen. They also chimed in, yes. What Chu Mimi said is right. Teacher Ye's script is really amazing. I'm very fortunate to be able to participate in this script. I hope in the next scene, Teacher Yi will continue to choose me. The crew happily walked off the stage. Kwajio, standing on the side, gritted his teeth as he watched. He had underestimated him. He had originally thought he was just someone who could talk, but he actually had some skills. Kwajio walked up to Yi Chen and said in a somewhat sarcastic tone, Congratulations, Teacher Yi, for getting first place. But this is just the beginning. I'm really looking forward to Teacher Ye's performance in the future. Let's stick it out together until the end. Yi Chen understood the underlying meaning of his words. His true intention was that his temporary victory didn't count for much, and the winner would be the one who laughs last. Yi Chen smiled. He didn't like to actively provoke trouble, but that didn't mean he was afraid of trouble. This Kwajio had repeatedly targeted him and had a condescending attitude. It was really too much. Yi Chen replied directly, I've received your blessing, and I won't let you down. I'll take this first place to the end. Kwajio almost couldn't contain his expression of anger. He stared at Yi Chen's back for a long time without moving his gaze. Yi Chen was somewhat angry. To a certain extent, all the viewers of this variety show were conquered by his script. Everyone could find their own experiences in the lines. As a result, terms like newcomer surpassing Kwajio and genius screenwriter appeared in the hot search. When Yi Zhu saw these hot search results, she was delighted, these hot search results are all correct. My brother is really amazing. Yi Lan also nodded in agreement, when Yi Chen writes more and more scripts, they will know Yi Chen's true strength. The twin sisters chattered happily for a long time, then suddenly realized that Yi Mei had been silent the whole time. Big sister, why aren't you saying anything? Yeah, big sister, what are you thinking? Why have you been so silent? Yi Mei came back to her senses from contemplation and smiled as she spoke, I just feel that, compared to you all, Kuang Jiu is feeling worse now. What Yi Mei said was indeed true. Kuang Jiu exploded with anger after seeing these hot searches. What do you mean by surpassing my existence? And a genius screenwriter. Even a waste like Yi Chen is qualified. The louder he cursed, the more afraid he actually felt. Just as Kuang Jiu's expression was constantly changing, he suddenly received a message. Annoyed, he opened it, initially not paying much attention to the message. However, after reading it, his pupils suddenly dilated. Yi Ju closed her phone, her expression slightly softened. She didn't expect Yi Jian to be such a waste. He hadn't even done anything to Yi Chen, but he ended up in the hospital first. This prevented her from using a series of tactics and forced her to seek help again. Thinking of this, Yi Ju's just soothed expression turned dark again. All of this is all because of Yi Chen. Thinking of the various experiences from her past life, her hatred couldn't be concealed and surged from the depths of her heart. She didn't remember Yi Chen's kindness to her, only that she was originally held in high regard and praised, but because of Yi Chen, she was ruthlessly pushed into the abyss. If it weren't for that memory exposure, if it weren't for Yi Chen, she would still be held in high regard and admired by everyone. How could she end up being despised by everyone and even called a hypocrite? All of this was caused by Yi Chen. In this lifetime, she must take revenge fiercely. Yi Ju gritted her teeth, filled with hatred, and dialed Yi Jian's phone. When the call connected, her tone instantly turned worried, Dad, are you okay? On the other end of the phone, Yi Jian gritted his teeth fiercely, I've had my arm broken, what do you think? Yi Ju pretended to be aggrieved, I'm sorry, Dad, I know you were supposed to be discharged today, I was planning to come see you, but I'm currently abroad and can't come back. She said a few polite words and then got straight to the point, Dad, when I made this call to you, I struggled for a long time in my heart, because I found out something about why you ended up in the hospital. Yi Jian furrowed his brow, what do you mean? It's just, it's not because of an accident that you got injured this time. Forget it, I'd rather not say. Yi Ju deliberately teased, after all, the truth of this matter is too cruel, I don't want to make dad sad. Yi Jian fell into her trap and aggressively asked, Yi Ju, if you have something to say, just say it. Do you know what happened to my arm? If you don't say it, don't blame me for killing you. 
Yi Ju rolled her eyes on the other end of the phone and even sneered. Did this jerk really think he was someone important? Did he still think he could cover the sky with one hand like before? Did he still want to kill her? It would be good enough if she didn't kill him. That's what she thought in her heart, but her attitude was different when she spoke. Dad, don't be angry, I'll tell you. Yi Ju deliberately remained silent for a few seconds and put on a conflicted look. All of this is actually caused by big sister. Yi Jin, you mean Yi Mei. Yi Ju exaggerated, yes, I know dad, you may not believe it, but listen to me. In fact, big sister has always coveted your position, so she has been targeting you like this. Do you still remember Yi Chen? Big sister colluded with him, originally wanting to take your life directly. Dad, you have a lucky star watching over you, and you escaped this disaster. Dad, they say that after a great disaster, there must be great fortune. You must be the chosen one, chosen by the heavens. Those who oppose you will surely be cast into the 18th level of hell. Yi Jin's expression grew darker and darker, alright, alright. I didn't expect this rebellious girl to become even more audacious. He has been through so much, how could he tolerate someone climbing over his head? Yi Mei. Yi Chen. He was so angry that he hung up the phone directly and started thinking about how to deal with these two. When Yi Ju heard the sound of the call being hung up, instead of being angry, she smiled sinisterly. Yi Mei. You've cut off my source of income. It shows that you no longer consider me as your sister. Then I won't consider you as my sister either. You have knowledge from past lives. So do I. Who will have the last laugh remains to be seen. On the other side, after hanging up the call, Yi Jian became angrier the more he thought about it. This rebellious girl actually joined forces with outsiders against him. If he didn't give her a big gift in return, wouldn't it be disrespectful to her? He quickly came up with an idea in his mind. Yi Jian sneered and called over a subordinate, giving him the instructions he had just thought of. After they finished their preparations, Yi Jian called Yi Mei. A few minutes later, Yi Mei hung up the phone, looking thoughtful. The twin sisters surrounded her. Big sister, what's been bothering you lately? Why do you always look so worried? Yi Mei was silent for a moment, then expressed her worries. I don't know why, but lately I always have a bad feeling in my heart. Yi Lan patted her shoulder. Big sister, don't think too much. Everything is developing in a positive direction for us now. You're definitely overthinking it. Yi Zhu also nodded, yes. Don't always worry too much. Yi Mei filtered through everything in her mind and found that there was indeed nothing worth noting. Maybe I am really overthinking it. Yi Mei skipped this topic and returned to the main point. By the way, the person who called just now was Yi Jian. He said today is the day he's being discharged from the hospital, and he wants us to go back for a meal to welcome him home. When the twin sisters heard this news, they instinctively frowned. I don't want to go back. I actually don't want to either. Since the exposure of the memories revealed the atrocities of these two scumbag parents, they didn't want to see him for even a second. Not to mention this time he was hospitalized by his own doing. Yi Zhu had been watching Yi Mei's expression all along and sensitively perceived that she had some intention of wanting to go back. Big sister, do you want to go back? Do you want to see his current miserable state? Yi Mei sighed. She couldn't help but admire her younger sister's thoughtfulness and sensitivity, you're right. She did want to go back. Not for any welcoming or so-called father-daughter relationship. Her only purpose in going back was to see how miserable Yi Jian, who had lost an arm, had become. Yi Lan also found it intriguing. Now that you mention it, I also want to go back. This person was so arrogant in front of us before, acting like he was the boss. I also really want to see if he can still act so arrogantly. With both sisters saying they wanted to go back, Yi Zhu naturally couldn't say she didn't want to go alone. Then I'll go back with you. After all, the variety show doesn't start recording until next week, so I have time. So the three sisters quickly reached a consensus, they would go back. However, at this time, the three sisters had no idea that what awaited them after they returned was the abyss in hell. The three sisters naturally wouldn't be so kind as to go to the hospital to pick up Yi Jian. They went straight to his home. At this time, Yi Jian had already come out of the hospital and was sitting on the sofa, clearly missing an arm. Seeing the three sisters, he sneered, I thought you had forgotten about me, your father. Not coming back. Yi Mei retorted expressionlessly, of course we would come back. The three sisters understood each other's thoughts. When Yi Mei said come back, it naturally couldn't mean remembering this father, but coming back to see his end and fate. Yi Jian looked at them with a dark expression, not saying a word. Tian Xian, sensing the tense atmosphere, immediately put on a smile to mediate. Okay, okay, it's rare for our family to be together. Don't be angry over this little matter. I've already had the housekeeper prepare the meal. Let's eat first. Besides Yi Jian, Yilan also disliked Tian Xian. 
clearly her biological mother, but she treated her and her sisters as if they were nothing, she had never considered them. How can you call this a family reunion? Fourth sister hasn't come back. Mentioning Yiju, the expressions on the faces of the three sisters became more serious. Since the last time Yichin died in the hospital, the fourth sister had completely cut off relations with them. She went abroad and hid in a place where the three sisters couldn't find her. Like a hidden snake, she might suddenly come out and bite them at any time. The three sisters were not afraid of Yiju dealing with them, but they were afraid she would go after Yi Chen. When they mentioned Yiju, Yi Jin's anger flared up. How dare you mention your fourth sister? She's abroad, but she still cares about my injury. She calls me every day to ask about it. How is it that you all are like a pack of wolves? Since I was hospitalized, have any of you come to see me? Tian Xin quickly supported him, telling him not to get too worked up. Okay, okay. They're probably just too busy with their careers. That's why they forgot for a moment. It's almost time to eat. Let's talk after dinner. Yi Jin thought about the matter for a while, snorted, and walked to the dining table with a stern face. Tian Xin hurriedly said, Okay, what are you three sisters standing here for? Hurry up and sit down to eat. Yi Mei looked at her back and vaguely felt that something was not right. But this feeling was fleeting. She couldn't grasp the source of this feeling, so she can only temporarily put it aside. However, they did not intend to sit down and eat. They had only come back to see the miserable state of Yi Jian after losing his arm. We won't eat. Since we see that you're doing well except for losing an arm, there's no need for us to stay here any longer. Sisters, let's go. The twin sisters naturally agreed and followed. Seeing them leave, Yi Jin tore off the last bit of his facade. Oh, I didn't expect that I, Yi Jin, raised a pack of wolves. If I had known, I should have killed you when you were young. And you have the nerve to come here and act all high and mighty. Yi Zhu had not spoken since she came in. But after hearing this, she couldn't hold back any longer. Do you think you don't have any? No, you really don't, because you didn't hit us. Yi Zhu remembered all the suffering that Yi Chen had endured for them in their past life, and her eyes turned red. He really was almost beaten to death by you. And at that time, I was foolish enough to mock and ridicule him. Yi Jian, your name really suits you. You are despicable. Rebels. Yi Jian slammed the table and stood up. I was actually thinking of letting you all have a good meal in the end. Now. Ha. Someone, come and arrest them. The bodyguards at the door rushed in and surrounded the three sisters. Yi Mei immediately protected the twin sisters and looked angrily at Yi Jian. Yi Jian, what do you mean? Yi Jian sneered. What do I mean? Yi Mei, do you think I don't know that you were behind my missing arm? You colluded with Yi Chen, right? Rest assured. I will definitely send him on his way. What are you standing there for? Hurry up and tie them up for me. Where would the strength of the three sisters be enough for this group of bodyguards? In just a few minutes, they were caught. They were deprived of all communication devices and their hands and feet were tied. Yi Mei couldn't believe it, Yi Jian. You're insane. Yi Lan struggled desperately. What do you want to do to us? Yi Zhu glared at him fiercely. What do you want to do to Yi Chen? This has nothing to do with him. Yi Jian narrowed his eyes. Oh, you're really defending him? So you really did collude with him. Yi Zhu struggled violently. Don't you dare touch him. Yi Jian couldn't be bothered to listen to a few words from her and walked up to them, looking at them as if they were goods. Since you are my daughters, you naturally have to contribute to me. Don't worry, I have already sold you for a good price. Mr. Su is very satisfied with you and you won't suffer too much after you go. Yi Zhu Tong's pupils suddenly dilated. What Mr. Su? Are you talking about Su Yi? Yi Jian looked at her in surprise. You actually know Mr. Su? In that case, you should serve him well. Hearing Yi Jian's admission, the three sisters were shocked at the same time. Su Yi. This name they would never forget. In their previous life, when their memories were extracted, Yi Jian sold all four of them to him. It took Yi Chen three years to set up a plan to bring this person to justice. After they were reborn, the three sisters had always wanted to deal with him first, but always fell short. It can be seen from this how brilliant Yi Chen's three-year plan was. Unexpectedly, they now heard this person's name again from Yi Jian's mouth. Yi Mei was about to speak, but Yi Jian had already sealed the mouths of the three sisters. From start to finish, Tian Xin was like an outsider, not daring to look at them. For the position of the Yi family's main mother, she could even abandon her own biological daughters. Yi Jian waited until the three sisters couldn't make a sound, then ordered his men, bring that Yi Chen to me. Yi Jin touched the stump of his arm, his expression dark and fierce, the brat who hasn't even grown his hair yet. How dare he cut off my arm? Ha! Huh? When I catch him, I will make him know what it means to beg for life and not get it. Beg for death and not die. His heart had already simulated what was about to happen. 
He wanted Yi Chen to kneel in front of him, bowing his head for mercy, then let Yi Chen know that he, Yi Jian, was not to be trifled with. An hour later, Yi Jian saw Yi Chen. This was the first time he carefully assessed the young man in front of him. He was dressed in very ordinary clothes, very handsome, and had no trace of fear or unease on his face. On the contrary, he seemed quite content, just like walking in his own backyard. Yi Chen looked around, walked to the sofa and sat down, then calmly asked, What do you want from me? Yi Jian's face darkened, You're quite arrogant, aren't you? Did I ask you to sit down? Yi Chen showed a faint smile, A person should be confident in his youth. Not to mention the means by which this man in front of him invited him over were not kind. A confident person indeed. Yi Jian sneered, But one should also be clear about one's abilities. Yi Chen, do you really think that choosing Yi Mei was the right decision? I will make you know now. The consequences of daring to cut off my arm. Yi Jian was eager to see Yi Chen kneel and beg for mercy, and show a desperate and helpless look. Come on, beat him hard. No one stepped forward. Yi Chen sat on the sofa, still wearing a seemingly smiling expression. So you called me here for this. Yi Jin frowned, ignoring his words. Where are the people? Someone. Didn't you hear me? However, the security personnel who should have been at his beck and call were nowhere to be seen. In the spacious living room, there were only the two of them. At this moment, Yi Jian finally faintly sensed that something was wrong, and he looked sharply at Yi Chen. What have you done? Yi Chen smiled at him. Nothing, just invited your people to have a cup of tea. He was not a fool, and naturally came prepared. Yi Jian's pupils suddenly dilated after hearing this. He thought everything was under his control, but now something beyond his control had happened. And more importantly, it was in his own home. How is this possible? Yi Jian couldn't believe it. However, what he saw next made him have to believe it. Where have all my people gone? Yi Jian struggled to maintain his expression, but his voice involuntarily trembled. Clearly, this was his home, but apart from the two of them, there was not a single living soul to be seen. Who are you, really? Yi Jian had already guessed that Yi Chen could not possibly have been invited by Yi Mei. Leaving aside everything else, based on the strength that Yi Chen was currently displaying, it was absolutely impossible for him to have been easily persuaded to come. Yi Chen sneered, You don't even know who I am, yet you dare to invite me? Indeed, if it weren't for Yi Mei, the Yi family would have gone bankrupt long ago. How could it still be like this? Yi Jian stared at Yi Chen, his mind racing. If the person in front of him was not invited by Yi Mei, then he would intervene to help Yi Mei. Could it be because? Yi Jin's eyes lit up, and his previously terrified expression instantly turned into arrogance and pride. Do you know who I am? I am Yi Mei's father. How dare you treat me like this? Aren't you afraid that Yi Mei will dislike you? Yi Chen looked at Yi Jin's sudden change in demeanor and didn't know where he suddenly gained confidence. And this confidence seemed to be because of Yi Mei? Yi Chen tapped the sofa lightly with his finger, oh? Why should I be afraid? Yi Jian looked smug, don't you like Yi Mei? Otherwise, how could you possibly help her deal with me? For the first time, Yi Chen realized that someone's thought process was so clear. Did he misunderstand that he liked Yi Mei? So that's why he suddenly gained confidence and dared to challenge him again. Yi Jian looked at Yi Chen's contemplative expression and mistakenly thought that he had guessed correctly. His previously 80% confidence instantly rose to 100%. His mind quickly raced. Based on the fact that the other party could silently eliminate all the people in his house, it was clear that Yi Chen was definitely from a powerful background. Even Su Yi couldn't do this. If that's the case, if he could marry into the family, all the resources in his hands would belong to the Yi family. Wouldn't he be able to rise even higher? He might even be able to surpass Su Yi. Yi Jin's beautiful imagination became more and more vivid, and all his thoughts were placed on the surface. Yi Chen I, Yi Jian, am not a bad person who likes to meddle in other people's relationships. Although you previously severed my arm, we have grievances between us, but I am willing to forgive you. I allow you to marry my daughter. Yi Chen remained expressionless, and even felt like laughing. Where did he see that he liked Yi Mei? Did his silence imply consent? But what made him even more curious was how Yi Jian suddenly changed his mind. He definitely couldn't be that kind of person. In other words, there was some hidden meaning behind his words. Sure enough, in the next second, Yi Jian revealed his true intention. You see, I have already shown my sincerity, so you must also show yours. I have no sons, only four daughters, and I need someone to inherit my family business. So my daughters will not marry outside the family. If you want Yi Mei, then you must marry into my family. Yi Chen couldn't help but laugh out loud, marry into the family. Did Yi Jian really think he was some naive young man who would be blinded by love? Let's not even mention that he didn't like Yi Mei, even if he did, he would never do such a thing. 
Not to mention that he didn't like her at all. Yi Jian nodded arrogantly, that's right. As long as you agree, I will immediately promise to betroth Yi Mei to you. I will refuse Mr. Su on the other side. He accidentally revealed his original plan. Yi Chen heard it and felt a little strange. Mr. Su, who is this person? He seemed to have accidentally heard some secrets. Yi Chen probed without changing his expression. Oh, are you sure? Why not? After Yi Jinli's matter-of-fact response, he suddenly remembered that he had accidentally mentioned Su Ye's matter. He immediately observed Yi Chen's expression. However, from his expression, he couldn't see any emotion. This kid who was hard to read, did he really know about Su Yi? He probably didn't know, right? Yi Jian gritted his teeth. Anyway, since the situation had escalated to this point, he didn't believe this kid would go and ask Su Yi about it. Thinking this, Yi Jian spoke with a commanding tone, this mister. Su also wants to marry into the family, but I have faith in you. If you agree with me, immediately reject him. Upon hearing this, Yi Chen scrutinized him for a long time and said, the brain is indeed a good thing. Too bad you don't have one. Yi Jian truly deserved such a comment. After hearing Yi Chen's words, he didn't feel it was sarcastic. Instead, he thought Yi Chen was praising him. A smile appeared on his face, but before he could speak, Yi Chen interrupted, does Yi Mei know what you're doing? Is she not resisting? Based on what he knew about Yi Mei, she was not someone who could be easily controlled, especially when it came to her lifelong matters. Yi Mei would definitely not obediently comply. But he had never heard her mention this aspect, nor had he seen her show any signs. This was quite strange. Yi Jian, with a disdainful look, said, She is my daughter. Whatever I want her to do, she will do. Resist? Ha! A few days of confinement and she will know what it means to submit. There are plenty of methods. Yi Chen noticed that his expression and tone were off. It didn't sound like a hypothesis, it seemed as if this had already happened and been executed. A thought crossed Yi Chen's mind. Could it be that Yi Mei had already been confined? Although according to normal logic, the probability of this happening was close to zero, based on what he had observed of Yi Jian in just a short 10 minutes, he was the kind of lunatic who could do such a thing. Yi Chen immediately dialed Yi Mei's phone, hoping that he was just being overly cautious and paranoid. But after a minute passed, the phone stopped ringing on its own, and Yi Mei didn't answer. This had never happened before. Yi Mei would never let him wait for the phone to ring a second time. Yi Chen's expression turned cold, where is Yi Mei now? His indifferent tone was like a bucket of cold water poured over Yi Jian, finally pulling him out of his arrogant and complacent emotions. The pressure emanating from him was too fierce, like a wolf. He stared at him intently, and if he said one wrong word, he would be bitten without hesitation. Blood would splatter on the spot. Yi Jian shivered and blurted out, I can find her. Yi Chen couldn't believe that his casual speculation had turned out to be true. They say a tiger doesn't eat its cubs. Besides being stupid, Yi Jian had completely lost his sense of morality as a human being. A surge of anger rose in Yi Chen's heart like a wildfire. He took a few steps forward, reached out, and directly grabbed Yi Jian's neck, his whole demeanor as cold as a god of death, where is she confined? Yi Jian looked at him in terror, trembling all over. Suddenly, Yi Chen smelled a pungent odor of urine. He looked down at Yi Jian and saw a puddle of yellow liquid flowing down his pants. This coward had actually been scared into wetting himself. Trembling, Yi Jian said, she. She's in the basement. Three minutes later, Yi Chen found the basement that Yi Jian had mentioned. He opened the door and walked in, turning on the light next to the door. Click. The basement, which had been pitch black, suddenly lit up. Ugh. The three sisters, who had been confined in the darkness for a long time, were suddenly overwhelmed and let out a sob. When they reopened their eyes after adjusting, they saw Yi Chen standing before them like a god. Before her rebirth, Yi Mei had longed for family affection, as her only memories were of her parents being kind to her. It wasn't until she underwent memory exposure that she realized all those past memories were false. No, perhaps it wasn't false, but rather Yi Chen had shielded her from all darkness, making her believe she lived in a warm and sunny family. After her rebirth, Yi Mei still held on to a glimmer of hope. Perhaps those scenes that appeared in her memories had only been occasional or coincidental? However, the events that followed made Ji Mei naively realize she was wrong. Her biological parents were indeed like beasts. Fortunately, inheriting memories allowed her to avoid them. As she grew older, she could utilize her past life memories more and more, gradually breaking free from the control of Yi Jian and his wife. From then on, Yi Mei subconsciously felt that Yi Jian and his wife were no match for her. In simple terms, she became arrogant. So when Yi Jian called them back this time, she didn't think too much about it. It was precisely because of her arrogance that the three sisters were caught and trapped here. During the long two hours trapped in the basement, 
Many images flashed through Yi Mei's mind. In these images, Yi Chen appeared the most. In her past life, Yi Chen threatened human traffickers with a knife, pretended to be a shadow teacher, and answered questions for her on the playground. There were also bits and pieces with dust. In these past memories, Yi Chen always existed as a protector or mentor. As long as he was there, she would not be harmed. Yi Mei couldn't help but think, if Yi Chen knew they were trapped here, he would surely do everything to rescue them. But in this life, Yi Chen was no longer there. He was no longer their brother and wouldn't know they were trapped here. This time, no one would come to rescue the three sisters. Yi Mei felt herself falling into an abyss, and at the bottom of the abyss, a large black hand was pulling her down. Just then, a beam of light suddenly appeared in the dark basement, driving away the large hand pulling her down. Wide-eyed, Yi Mei looked in disbelief at the person standing at the door. Yi Chen. Yi Chen. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, Yi Chen wouldn't have believed that parents would tie up their daughters in a basement. But the fact was not only did it happen, it happened to Yi Mei and her sisters. Without thinking too much, Yi Chen walked directly to the three sisters. As he approached, the three sisters struggled and made sobbing sounds. Wait a moment, I'll remove the cloth from your mouths first, Yi Chen said as he removed the cloth from their mouths. Yi Mei's mouth was finally freed, and she looked at him with great excitement, Yi Chen. It was really Yi Chen. It wasn't a dream. Yi Lan also spoke after being freed, Yi Chen, how did you get here? This time she thought they were done for. But unexpectedly, Yi Chen appeared and saved them. I happened to find out that you were tied up. Yi Chen quickly untied Yi Zhu's hands and feet, but before he could remove the cloth from her mouth, she suddenly threw herself at him. Yi Zhu threw herself heavily at him and hugged him. She removed the cloth from her own mouth and couldn't stop crying. Woo woo. Yi Chen. Woo woo. You came to save us. I knew. You would come to save us. Yi Zhu was the most afraid of the three sisters. The enclosed basement here reminded her of the shadows of her childhood. She was trembling constantly, tears falling from her delicate face, making her look like a helpless pear blossom in the rain, making people want to embrace her. Yi Chen saw her crying so hard that he could only comfort her first, don't cry, it's okay. Yi Zhu continued to cry, woo woo. Yi Chen had no choice but to say, your two sisters haven't untied the ropes yet. I'll help them first. Yi Zhu then remembered and quickly let go of her hands, tears still falling from her face, I, I'll help you too. The two of them quickly untied the hemp ropes from Yi Mei and Yi Lan. At first, when Yi Mei saw Yi Chen coming to rescue them, she was also very excited. She even had the urge to rush up and hug Yi Chen. However, after untying their ropes, Yi Zhu firmly held onto Yi Chen's left arm again. In this moment of hesitation, Yi Lan quickly grabbed his right arm. Yi Mei. Miscalculated. Yi Lan and Yi Zhu were twins, looking exactly the same, only with different temperaments. One leaned towards fragility, the other towards agility and spontaneity. But Yi Chen, who was being held by the two sisters, had no other thoughts. Do you feel uncomfortable anywhere? The three sisters shook their heads simultaneously. Yi Mei couldn't help but speak up. What about him? Yi Chen knew that Yi Mei was asking about Yi Jian, he's outside. He didn't ask the three sisters why they were tied up, so as not to upset them. Let's go out first. The three sisters nodded and followed Yi Chen out of the basement. Yi Mei saw Yi Jian tied up on the sofa in the hall. She instantly realized that this was Yi Chen's doing. When Yi Jian saw them coming out, he immediately said to Yi Chen, you've brought them out. Can you let me go now? Yi Chen's eyes were cold, the decision to release you or not is not mine, but theirs. When Yi Jin heard this, he quickly turned to the three sisters and said, I'm your real father. You can't treat me like this. Yi Mei laughed directly when she heard this, do you still remember that you are our real father? Yi Lan sneered, if you remembered, you wouldn't have used us as bargaining chips. Yi Xu spoke directly, I don't have a father like you. Yi Mei looked extremely dangerous, Yi Jin, you like being praised by everyone, right? Fine, I'll help you. Do you really think I don't know what dirty things you've done during your years as the chairman of the Yi group? Yi Jian, you will be punished by the law. Don't worry, I won't let you off easily. I will make sure those people in prison praise you. Yi Chen didn't pay any more attention to Yi Jian's subsequent words. After all, this was the sister's business, and he naturally couldn't interfere too much. And compared to this matter, he still had other things to do now. The second live recording of the variety show screenwriter and director officially began. As soon as Yi Chen arrived at the recording site, many staff members noticed him. Good morning. Teacher Yi, Teacher Yi, have you had breakfast? Do you want me to get you something? Teacher Yi, have a drink of water. Their welcoming smiles and humble attitudes were a far cry from Yi Chen's indifferent demeanor when he first arrived. People are just that practical. At this moment, Yi Chen saw Kuang Jiu. Kuang Jiu also noticed him at the same time. 
Seeing a group of staff members surrounding Yi Chen, a cold smile appeared on Quang Zhou's face. He walked towards Yi Chen, Yi Chen, we meet again. Since the last time the staff knew, Quang Jiao and Yi Chen didn't get along. So after seeing Quang Jiao coming over, the staff members found an excuse to slip away. Only the two of them were left in place. Yi Chen didn't respond, and Quang Jiao wasn't angry, but very confidently opened his mouth, this variety show recording, you will definitely lose to me. Yi Chen didn't know where his confidence came from. Oh, this sound was so contemptuous and provocative. Crazy Jiao's face turned cold, don't you believe it? He stared at Yi Chen for a few seconds, a cold smile appearing. Don't think that just because you wrote a great script, you're a genius. I've seen geniuses fall many times. A moment of brilliance doesn't mean anything. Yi Chen understood. He thought he could only write such a script. You're right, Yi Chen's response left Crazy Jiao speechless for a moment. But who would have expected that the next second, Yi Chen continued, I also have something to say to you. No one can stay at the peak forever, there will always be a downhill. Crazy Joe understood, looking at Yi Yen's eyes with increasing cunning, you're right, but don't be like a roller coaster. Just reaching the top and then plunging straight down. Yi Chen, don't worry, I won't. The two of them never saw eye to eye. After seeing Yi Zhu walking over from a distance, Crazy Joe left. Yi Zhu ran over, her gaze shifting from Crazy Joe, what did he say to you just now? Yi Chen didn't say much, just some everyday stuff. Yi Zhu knew she couldn't get anything out of Yi Chen, so she easily changed the subject. If your script this time has a female character, make sure to save it for me. She thought for a moment, then added, if it's not a female character, that's fine too. I can play a male role. In short, make sure to save a role for me. Yi Chen raised an eyebrow, I haven't finished writing the script yet, are you sure you want to reserve it without knowing the details of my script? For an actor, the script is a very important matter. A good script can elevate a good actor while a poor script can shatter the actor's aura. Yi Zhu was very serious and even a bit stubborn, I will only act in your script. Yi Chen smiled, I understand. The process of this variety show was similar to the previous one. The only difference was that this time the program team did not set a theme for the script, allowing them to freely express themselves. However, this time the rules were more tight. They had to come up with a complete script within just six hours. Six hours may sound like a lot, but creating a complete script requires brainstorming the plot and creating character outlines. When encountering writer's block, it can take days or even months to overcome. If everything goes smoothly, a slow writer can only produce a thousand words in an hour. With six hours, that's only six thousand words. Writing a script with a rich plot and well-developed characters within six thousand words is an extraordinary challenge. The final ranking would be determined by the viewer's ratings. The audience who had been waiting in the live broadcast room were shocked to hear this rule. I thought the 24-hour time limit for the first episode was already crazy, but now it's only 6 hours. This is insane. This rule is too cruel. Did you guys listen carefully? The program team also said that they can use previously unpublished scripts. In that case, 6 hours is more than enough. Ha ha, then I can relax. After all, Crazy Geo has a bunch of unpublished works. Crazy Jio can easily dominate the stage with any of his unpublished works. If I remember correctly, Yi Chen is a novice writer. Does he have a habit of writing scripts before? If he doesn't, he's done for this time. Why do I feel like this rule is targeting Yi Chen? After all, he was the only newcomer among all the screenwriters in the entire field. How can this be considered targeting the screenwriter? Isn't it normal to write several scripts? If Yi Chen doesn't have any unpublished scripts, it just means he deserves it. If I remember correctly, the last script Yi Chen wrote was his first one. When Yi Zhu heard this rule, she couldn't help but stand up as well. This rule is too much. A complete script in six hours. It must have been saved from before. Just like the barrage said, where does Yi Chen have any unpublished scripts? The program team is clearly targeting Yi Chen. After hearing this rule, Yi Chen finally understood why Kuang Jiu was so confident before the competition. Is it because of this? At this point, the camera focused on the four individuals. Quang Jiu and the other two had already taken out their unpublished scripts to revise and polish. Only Yi Chen opened a blank document. Wow, is Yi Chen really going to write it now? 6. I don't know what kind of script this is. Hmm, what is this? Crackdown on crime? Special struggle? It's actually this kind of script. This kind of script has the least traffic. This time it's about the number of views. Yi Chen has completely given up, hasn't he? Originally thought Yi Chen was a genius. Didn't expect, just a shooting star. Yi Chen couldn't see any of these barrage comments. He was fully focused on his creation. All the audience could see was his fingers flying on the keyboard. Quang Jiu was polishing his script. Hearing the sound of the keyboard next to him, 
he couldn't help but glance at Yi Chen. Seeing that Yi Chen was indeed creating on the spot, he couldn't help but sneer inwardly. This time's competition rules were set by him and the program team. His malice towards Yi Chen was no longer hidden. The last script Yi Chen wrote was indeed amazing. But compared to Quan Zhou's reputation in the industry, he was still far behind. After all, he was just a newcomer, but Quan Zhou had many hit dramas. It was only natural for the program team to stand on his side. What good script could be written in six hours? Not to mention, Quan Zhou looked at the document in front of him. There was a hint of fanaticism in his expression. This script in front of him was one of the most perfect scripts he had seen in his career. If it were made into a movie, it would definitely be popular and successful. I don't know who Yi Chen has offended, to actually go to such lengths, and even use this level of script to suppress him. This time, unless the god of literature descends, Yi Chen is bound to lose. Six hours passed in the blink of an eye. In the last second, Yi Chen typed the final period. After six hours of intense typing, Yi Chen's fingers were sore. But fortunately, everything he wanted to write had been written. That was enough. With the script finished, the next step was to select the actors. Unlike the last time when actors were chosen by drawing lots, this time they were given character cards based on the script and the actors could choose for themselves on a first-come, first-served basis. When the selection channel opened, Yi Zhu went straight to the character selection table for Yi Chen's script, without even looking at the script or character card, and directly inserted her card into the only female character. She made her choice straightforwardly. After making the selection, she realized that the script Yi Chen had written this time was actually a traditional drama. It was an extremely niche theme of cracking down on crime. And this drama was one she had never seen Yi Chen write in her previous life. Crack down on crime? This theme is going to be cold. A voice sounded next to Yi Zhu. She turned to look at the person, showing her displeasure. Who are you saying will be cold? The nearby little star just realized that Yi Zhu was standing here. Looking at the turning camera, the little star couldn't help but feel a sense of vanity. Immediately, he put on a very insightful look and said, I'm just stating a fact. Our current round of competition is determined by the number of views. Generally, romance and comedy films are the easiest to attract views, but for a genre like this, which leans towards serious drama, the audience is already small, not to mention that it's also about fighting crime and evil. I'm just synthesizing all the market data to come to this conclusion. I know you, Jumimi, are a fan of Yi Chen, so you might have some thoughts about what I'm saying, but we also have to speak based on facts. Yi Zhu was about to burst out laughing. Clearly, this person in front of her was trying to gain attention with such remarks. She had seen this tactic too many times. Well then, with your professional eye, which of these four scripts do you think will be a hit? Of course, it's teacher Kuangjo. The little star continued to praise in front of the camera, just by looking at the script introduction and character settings. I know this will definitely be an exciting script. Yi Zhu didn't want to listen anymore. This person in front of her was obviously trying to gain attention with such remarks. She had seen this tactic too many times. Then I'll wait and see if the result is as you wish. Yi Zhu was so angry that she turned and left decisively. It was because of this that she missed the opportunity to know the truth in advance. Yi Chen looked at the four familiar faces in front of him and greeted them, not bad, old friends. Yi Zhu didn't say anything. He really hadn't expected that the other three male actors would choose him. After the last script, the other three screenwriters probably wanted you to choose their group. After reading my script introduction and character profiles, do you still want to choose me? He knew that the reason these three people had chosen him last time was because there was no one else to choose. But since his last play, the three of them had gained recognition for their popularity and acting skills. Kuang Zhou and the others were eager for them to join. Su Ku, the oldest of the three male actors, joked, I, old Su, have poor acting skills, so I can only hope that teacher Yi will take me in. The other two male actors also expressed their opinions. In short, the meaning was clear, their current popularity was all thanks to Yi Chen, so they couldn't forget their roots. With that, Yi Chen didn't say much to them and directly gave them the script. It was indeed a serious drama, depicting the difficulties encountered in fighting crime and the collusion of various protective umbrellas. The female character chosen by Yi Zhu, who was said to be the female lead, was actually just a minor role. The focus of this play was still on the three male actors. Because Yi Zhu had few scenes, she spent most of her time watching them rehearse. Yi Zhu sat on a small chair, holding the two scripts written by Yi Chen, and unconsciously pursed her lips. The two scripts written by Yi Chen this time all had male protagonists, and they were scripts she had never seen before. But in her previous life, all the protagonists he wrote were female. Even in the later stages, many people speculated whether the 12 screenwriters were all women. Otherwise, why were there no big male lead plays, all were big female lead plays? 
But now Yi Zhu knew that Yi Chen simply didn't know how to write so-called big male lead scripts. It was because of her that he wrote scripts with prominent female protagonists. How many times had Yi Chen covered up his true talent for her and her three sisters? The more Yi Zhu thought about it, the more upset she became, and she couldn't help but grab Yi Chen's clothes. When he looked over, she opened her mouth with teary eyes, Yi Chen, I'm sorry, I will be good to you in the future. Yi Chen, Yi Chen? He really felt that these three sisters had a problem. Everyone, including Yi Zhu, actually felt that Yi Chen's script was absolutely impossible to be popular. Because the subject matter of this script is too remote, it is about evidence, and in the end it is still about the theme of fighting against crime and evil. There is not even a young and fresh actor among the cast, nor are there any cliché plotlines. There are no female actors to attract traffic by selling their looks. It was also written in just a few hours on the spot, without any effort to polish and modify the plot. How could such an ordinary script defeat Kung Jiu? All these speculations were made before seeing Yi Chen's script. However, when Yi Zhu and the others got the script, they realized they were wrong. Especially Su Ko, after seeing the background of the character Chang who sells fish, his eyes lit up. Trembling, he held the script, his eyes full of disbelief, is this character really for me to play? No one knew that the reason why Su Ku and the others chose Yi Chen again this time was not because they were hoping for success, but purely out of gratitude. However, after getting the script, they felt that they were wrong. Any actor who knows a little bit about acting can distinguish whether a script is good or bad. Not to mention a script with such depth of characters and plot. Yi Chen patted his shoulder, yes, you are not dreaming, this character is for you to play. He looked at everyone, the script has been sent to you, and you have already seen that this play has two very difficult roles to play. But these two roles are the focus of this play. It can even be said to be the highlight of this play. If either of these two characters has a problem, then this play will have flaws. So I hope you can treat this character well and interpret the essence of this character. Whether I can win in this variety show this time will depend on you. Suka firmly held the script, Teacher Yi. You can rest assured, I will definitely play it well. The others also promised one by one. When they had their first PK, they used a live broadcast mode with a single shot. This time the rules changed, it was not a single shot, but could be edited later. The parts shot by the crew would not be broadcast live, so the audience watching the show would not be able to know the content of their script in advance. After a busy week of shooting, everyone began the final editing and refining stage. Kung Jio was the first to finish editing. After finishing his own film, he went straight to Yi Chen. It's been a week, Yi scriptwriter, how did your script turn out? Kung Jio said with a hint of sarcasm, how come I heard that your script is over an hour long? When the program team found out that Yi Chen's play lasted for over an hour, Kung Jio burst into laughter on the spot, completely ignoring the staff nearby. Because this was just too funny. Who didn't know that the rules of this competition were based on the number of views? Naturally, the shorter the duration, the more times it could be played. So the three scriptwriters were eager to control the length of this play to within 15 minutes. This way, they could play it many times. But they never expected that Yi Chen would write a script that lasted over an hour. Not to mention anything else, just talking about watching movies, many people are not willing to spend over an hour sitting quietly to watch a movie, many people will fast forward. And in order to prevent people from playing it multiple times, the program team specifically prohibited fast forwarding, and even prohibited dragging the progress bar. You had to watch it from start to finish to count as one view. So, if you want to watch it, watch it for real and finish this hour. But the script written by Yi Chen only took 6 hours to write. Can it make people sit quietly in front of the computer and watch this hour? The more Kuang Jiu thought about it, the more he felt that Yi Chen was completely giving up on himself. He mocked, but there is an advantage to one hour. After all, when the playback volume is at the bottom, you can say, there's no way, the duration is too long. Can't finish it, right? Yi Chen did not respond to his words, but suddenly spoke, do you dare to bet? Kuang Jiu, what? You want to bet with me? What's the bet? Let's bet on whose script will win this time's championship. Ha, huh? am I hearing it right? You want to bet with me. What? Are you afraid? Are you scared? It's just a joke. How could I be afraid? But, Kuang Jiu's face was extremely gloomy. I'm afraid my stake is too big, and you dare not bet. What is your stake? Kuang Jiu looked him in the eye, a hint of viciousness flashed in his eyes. If you lose, from then on, you will stop writing any scripts. Although Kuang Jiu seemed to look down on Yi Chen on the surface, only he knew in his heart that he was actually afraid of Yi Chen. That script was just too excellent. It could even be said that if it were not for being placed in the program, but made into a movie, it would definitely win awards. And this was only Yi Chen's first script. How could this not make Kuang Jiu tremble with fear? 
Yi Chen also did not expect that the stake Quang Jiu offered would be this. He had no interest in writing scripts at all. The reason he agreed to come was only because of Yi Zhu. So this stake had no impact on him at all for him. Not to mention that Yi Chen never thought he would lose. However, just as Yi Chen was about to agree, someone hurriedly ran over. This is completely a hegemonic treaty. Yi Chen, you absolutely cannot agree to it. It was Yi Zhu. She ran over in a hurry, still not out of breath, and looked at Quang Jiu with extreme anger. Quang Jiu, I used to admire the scripts you wrote. They were profound. I thought you were a decent person. But I never thought that your heart was so dirty and ugly. Yi Zhu was almost furious. You clearly want to suppress Yi Chen. It's just using the name of a bet. Quang Zhou's thoughts were exposed. A hint of annoyance flashed across his face, but soon he calmed down. What do you mean by wanting to suppress Yi Chen? First, this bet was not proposed by me. Second, even if I proposed this bet, Yi Chen did not agree, did he? Third, haven't you always thought that the scripts written by Yi Chen are very powerful? How come, now even you think that Yi Chen will lose? So you dare not let me set this bet? You! Yi Zhu immediately saw that Quang Jiu was using the tactic of provocation. She was about to speak, but Yi Chen had already stopped her. You don't need to say anything. It's true that I want to bet with him. Yi Chen! Yi Zhu was shocked and felt unfair for him. This bet is unfair. He is deliberately provoking you to agree to this unfair bet. Yi Chen directly asked, Do you not have confidence in me? Of course not. How could I not have confidence in you? Then that's it. Yi Chen smiled lightly and looked at Quang Jiu. I can agree to your bet, but at the same time, if you lose, equally, you also cannot write any scripts from then on. Do you dare or not? This is simply putting one's own career at stake. Quang Jiu's face looked very ugly. Why am I willing to agree to your conditions, but you are not willing to agree to mine? Yi Chen directly returned all the words that Quang Jiu had just said. Are you afraid of losing? When Yi Zhu heard Yi Chen's words, she was extremely excited. Yes. Why didn't she think to question Quang Jiu just now? In any aspect, Quang Jiu cared more about his career than Yi Chen. That's right, since you want Yi Chen to agree to your bet, then the stakes must be corresponding. Do you dare to bet? He initiated this bet himself. If he refused to bet with Yi Chen at this critical juncture, wouldn't that be a slap in his own face? And, just thinking about the script he held in his hands gave Quang Jiu confidence instantly. What do I have to be afraid of? I promise you, if I lose this match, I will immediately withdraw from this variety show and will not write any script again. It's a deal. The bet was officially established. No one saw that a camera recorded the entire scene that happened in front of them. The script that Yi Chen and the others had filmed was officially released. At the time of the release, Quang Jiu immediately began to mobilize his various connections to promote his microfilm. In just half a day, the microfilm's views directly exceeded several million. What an impressive figure. After seeing this data, Quang Jiu couldn't hide his smile. He then looked at Yi Chen's, which had only a few hundred thousand views. After seeing this, Quang Jiu almost burst out laughing on the spot. Yi Chen, with such a low number of views, you still want to compete with me? You might as well stop writing. Ha ha ha. And with the influence of Quang Jiu's connections, the gap in views of several million only continued to grow. After all, Quang Jiu had been struggling in this circle for more than 10 years. Many celebrities had acted in the scripts he had written. Naturally, they owed him a favor. Therefore, with the outbreak of this publicity, Quang Zhou's views instantly surpassed tens of millions. Meanwhile, the views of Yi Chen's film had only just exceeded 500,000. It was simply because his film was too long. When the first day ended, Quang Zhou's microfilm, with 20 million views, was ranked first. Yi Chen had just broken a million. The other two screenwriters also knew about the bet with Yi Chen, so after seeing his results, they sent congratulatory messages. Quang Jiu teacher truly lives up to his reputation. This script is just too amazing. 20 million views. I can't even imagine it. I also watched Quang Jiu teacher's film this time. This script perfectly combines comedy and kung fu. It's simply stunning. Yi Chen will definitely lose this time. In my opinion, this Yi Chen is just too arrogant. Just because he wrote a slightly more powerful script, he's gone mad and doesn't even know his own name. This time, he'll get a lesson. That's right, let him know that there's always someone better, and there's always a higher sky. Listening to the flattery between the two, Quang Jiu was clearly feeling proud inside, but he still had to maintain a calm appearance on his face, no, no, I'm not that great. It's just a casually written script, nothing special. While these people were praising each other, the online discussion began to quietly change. Hey, has anyone seen Yi Chen's film? The plot inside is really amazing. My brother is awesome. I'm sorry, I'm a fan of Big Sister. 
Big sister is mine. Big sister is as beautiful as a painting. My brother is too painful. If it weren't for his younger brother, he wouldn't be like this. Finally, someone is discussing the plot of this film. Does anyone understand how I feel after watching this hour? I just can't get enough of it. It's too short. That's right. I always feel like there's so much more to tell. Damn it, why is it so short? Laomo, I want to eat fish. No kidding. The plot of this drama is too compact. I'm afraid I'll miss out on the exciting plot if I blink. This drama should be called The Life of Fish Seller, starting with selling fish, then I become a god. I've recommended it to my friends in the circle. It's really a loss if you don't watch this movie. The power of word of mouth is very strong. It comes from the deepest love in the heart, promoting things they like with all their might. This kind of passion cannot be extinguished by anything else. In just one night, the number of views of Yi Chen's movie doubled. Although it seems to be just over 2 million. But you have to know, this is when everyone is sleeping in the middle of the night. By the next day, after a night of online word of mouth fermentation, the number of views of this movie began to skyrocket. And the two screenwriters, after a night of heavy drinking, were half asleep when suddenly they heard their phones ringing. Impatiently, one of them answered the phone, who is it? Heavy drink. But it's not good, the number of views of Yi Chen's movie suddenly exceeded 10 million. The heavy drink didn't hear clearly, so what, let it exceed. However, as soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly woke up. What did you just say? The number of views of Yi Chen's movie exceeded 10 million. Yes. Go online and see for yourself. The remaining alcohol in the heavy drink's brain evaporated, and he hurriedly logged into the app and opened Yi Chen's movie page. There were 12 million views. It was like a thorn in his eye. How is this possible? How is this possible? The heavy drink couldn't believe the data in front of him. Clearly, just last night, he had surpassed Yi Chen by so much, but in just one night, Yi Chen's views had already reached 12 million. Yi Chen must be cheating. He's manipulating the data. This was the only explanation the heavy drink could come up with. He angrily picked up his phone and called the program team. How dare they manipulate the data right under his nose. Meanwhile, on the other side, Yi Zhu suddenly received a call from a colleague in the production team. As soon as she answered the phone, she heard the colleague's extremely excited voice, Zhu, have you seen the number of views of our movie? It exceeded 10 million. And the number of views is still doubling. Yi Zhu felt like she didn't hear clearly. What did you just say? The colleague excitedly repeated the words, now we're only 8 million away from the number one in views. No, 7 million. Yi Zhu couldn't believe it, really. She said in disbelief, but her hands were already searching quickly. The clear 13 million views on the page shocked her. Just as she had thought before, she didn't have much hope for this drama at all. So, in order to avoid feeling sad when she saw the data, she didn't dare to pay attention to it at all. It was precisely because of this that she didn't know about the increase in views. When she saw that the number of views increased by tens of thousands with each refresh, Yizhu was truly shocked. On the other end of the phone, the colleague was still excitedly talking, but Yizhu had already ignored him. I have to tell Yi Chen this good news immediately. Yi Zhu excitedly hung up the phone and was about to call Yi Chen. However, before she could make the call, she saw a movie that she was extremely familiar with, but shouldn't have appeared here. King of Comedy? These familiar four words made Yi Zhu constantly have a bad premonition. The script and movie hanging the four big words of the King of Comedy were written by Kuang Jiu. Just the same name, right? Yi Zhu thought in her heart, but her fingers involuntarily clicked on the movie. When she saw the plot inside, Yi Zhu's pupils grew larger and larger and she went from sitting to standing. The chair fell to the ground, and she didn't care. How is this possible? This script was clearly written by Yi Chen for me. How could it appear here now? Why did it take so long to write this script? Question marks filled Yi Zhu's mind. It was true, the script and plot of Kuang Zhou's movie were exactly the same as the script Yi Chen had written for her. She was the female lead in this movie, so she couldn't be mistaken. However, this script, which should have been written by Yi Chen, appeared in Kuang Zhou's hands. What on earth is going on? Yi Zhu was too shocked and immediately called the other two sisters and told them about the matter. After listening, Yi Mei was equally shocked. Youngest sister, are you sure you didn't make a mistake? Yi Zhu also thought she might have been mistaken. I am the female lead in this movie, how could I be wrong? Yi Lan was also at a loss. If you didn't make a mistake, why is this script now in Kuang Zhou's hands? I don't know, that's why I called you. What on earth is going on? The script that should have been written by Yi Chen was written by Kuang Jiu and even made into a movie. What went wrong in the process? While the three sisters were guessing, the production team gave Kuang Jiu the answer. The answer was that Yi Chen did not cheat, and all the back-end data for his movie was normal. 
The only abnormality was a sudden surge of users during a certain period of time, but all these users were genuine and valid. Kuangjiu was unwilling to believe it, but in the short time he investigated, Yi Chen's movie had successfully surpassed 20 million views and even surpassed his King of Comedy. This was no longer a miracle, but a miracle. At this time, Yi Chen received a congratulatory call. Teacher Yi, we have surpassed Kuangjiu. We are now in first place. Upon hearing this news, Yi Chen did not show excessive surprise and calmly replied, I know. Permit was completely surprised by Yi Chen's reaction, but then he thought, of course. Zhu must have already told you. Ha? Huh? Yi Zhu? She didn't call me. Permit was puzzled, huh? How is that possible? I told her first, and she was so excited to tell me that she wanted to call you. Because of what Yi Zhu had said, he didn't call Yi Chen. The reason for this call was to report the excitement of surpassing Kuang Jiu and wanting to share the news as soon as possible. Oh, Yi Chen was just puzzled for a moment and didn't think much of it, maybe something else suddenly came up. After a few words with permit, Yi Chen hung up the phone. Just as he had shown, in fact, he didn't have much of a reaction in his heart to this movie taking first place. After all, this script was a national-level explosive hit. Just like its title, it had taken the crown of the ratings by storm as soon as it appeared. No other drama could surpass it. Although he knew it was a hit, Yi Chen still wanted to know how people in this world viewed it. So he opened Weibo. Without a doubt, Weibo's hot search list had been dominated. The text is all about this drama. Clicking randomly, it's all about flattery. Who is the only jasmine in the black and white paths, and who doesn't know? Who are you, watching the same drama as me with the same level? I really feel that there is too little plot that can be told in one hour. I always feel that there are many plots that have not been told. You in front of me are not alone, I also feel that there are many foreshadowings in this movie. Who is the ultimate boss behind the scenes? I have liked Yi Chun for so many years, and I have watched so many of his dramas. It's not excessive to force him to make this movie into a TV series. One person writes to Yi Chen to expand the script. Make it into a TV series. Add me. Add me 10,086. Yi Chen roughly glanced at it, almost all of these words, he was already thinking of closing Weibo. However, at this moment, four familiar words appeared in front of him. King of comedy. When Yi Chen first saw these four words, his and Yi Zhu's journey of the heart was the same, thinking it was just a coincidence and didn't put it in his heart. But for some reason, he had a strange feeling again, this is very important. So he clicked on it. After Yi Chen finished watching the entire movie, he squinted his eyes. Is Crazy Wine also a time traveler like himself? No. No. If Crazy Wine is also a time traveler, he should have known when he took out the first script. Even this script. He would know. But the reason for the problem is that Crazy Wine had no reaction to his own script, but he could still produce a script that was the same as his own world. Could it be that in addition to himself, there is another time traveler in this world, and then he and Crazy Wine are in the same camp? Yi Chen took out his phone and quickly sent a message. Check Crazy Wine and the people he has recently been in contact with. Yi Zhu and Yi Mei were gathered together, urgently discussing. Yi Mei's expression was very ugly, Crazy Wine cannot possibly be a reborn like us. I suspect that this script of his was given to him by Yi Zhu. Yi Zhu was stunned, fourth sister? Yes. Very likely. Yi Lan also remembered, she must be doing this to retaliate against Yi Chen. Yi Zhu was really angry, does she really know what she's doing? Yi Chen has helped us so much, how can she continue to treat him like this? She has been spoiled. Yi Mei clenched her fists, she can do such things without any surprise. But isn't she going too far like this? What should we do? Should we tell Yi Chen about this? Yi Zhu really didn't know what to do. How should we tell Yi Chen? Yi Mei immediately denied Yi Zhu's words, we don't even know if he has written this script now. Should we just leave it at that? It's impossible to just leave it at that. A flash of light passed through Yi Mei's eyes, it's obvious that she is now trying to confront us. I must find her. The three sisters quickly discussed and made a plan. Yi Zhu still maintained her composure, pretending not to know anything. Yi Mei and Yi Lan were busy investigating where Yi Zhu was hiding. While they were acting, on Yi Chen's side, Lei Xiao handed over the collected information to Yi Chen. Boss, this is all the information about Crazy Wine. Yi Chen looked through all the information and didn't see anything unusual about this person. However, at this moment, a name entered his eyes. Yi Ju? Lei Xiao nodded, yes. She is the fourth daughter of the Yi family. She has been in contact with Crazy Wine recently. It seems to be only once. Yi Chen tapped his finger on the table. Investigate. Lei Xiao quickly took the order. Yi Chen looked at these three words and fell into contemplation. He has always known that the Yi family has four daughters, three of whom he knows, but the last one, the youngest daughter, is nowhere to be found. 
and the three Yi may never mentioned her, as if this person did not exist. Yi Chen had a strong feeling that a Yi Ju was the key. When he and Yi Mei began their secret investigation, the variety show competition also came to its final day. Yi Chen arrived at the recording location at the time agreed upon by the program group. Although the final results were to be officially announced at the end of the program recording, anyone who saw the current front desk playback volume could see that Yi Chen was sure to win. So when Yi Chen arrived at the studio, he immediately received many congratulations. Yi Chen also saw Yi Zhu, whom he had not seen for several days. If it were in the past, Yi Zhu would run over as soon as she saw Yi Chen, with a smile on her face, pulling him to chat. But this time, Yi Chen felt very clearly that Yi Zhu did indeed notice him first, but did not run over immediately. Instead, there was a slight avoidance in her eyes. This reaction was very intriguing. Thinking about the information he had found, Yi Chen became even more curious about these four sisters. Were they deliberately getting close to him, or was there something else? As Yi Chen pondered in his heart, on the other hand, Yi Zhu was cheering herself on. She had no reason to avoid Yi Chen. It was Yi Zhu, not her, who did something bad to Yi Chen. Calm down. After setting up her own psychological expectations, Yi Zhu dared to walk up to Yi Chen. Yi Chen. Good afternoon. Hmm. Good afternoon. Yi Chen. Have you seen the data for our movie? Our movie's data has already exceeded 3 billion views. At this point, the joy on Yi Zhu's face was undeniable, and the initial entanglement in her heart disappeared with this excitement. I have seen it, Yi Chen said calmly. What's 3 billion? This is a nationwide hit, directly occupying 60% of the viewership market. All the main characters in this drama have become popular, and even the supporting roles have benefited a lot. So, Yi Chen had already expected this data. Looking at Yi Chen's calm demeanor, the admiration in Yi Zhu's heart turned into substance from her eyes. This was Yi Chen. This was her brother. He should indeed stand at the top of the world. The director of the program group also came over from somewhere, with a joyful smile on his face. Teacher Yi, the script you wrote is really wonderful. I couldn't help but watch it several times. But I think there are many things in this script that have not been explained, or places that can be further elaborated. He couldn't help but immediately express his thoughts. He spoke while paying attention to Yi Chen's expression, and after he finished speaking, he finally tentatively expressed the purpose of his visit. I don't know if Teacher Yi plans to continue writing this script. I even think it could be expanded into a TV series. God knows how excited the director was at this moment. His sharp eyes immediately saw the huge potential return hidden behind this play. It was very obvious that there were many hidden or unrecorded plotlines in this play. If Yi Chen really had the idea of expanding it into a TV series, he had to quickly invest in it. Yi Chen, I. Yi Chen had just said a word when a staff member ran over with a somewhat panicked expression, interrupting what he was about to say. It's over, director. Kuwaitio called and said he wants to withdraw from the competition.